movie that was six hours long, or at least it felt like it, the, with <laughs> all of these characters in it, and my favorite person to see on screen is a pen. Mm hmm Wow. Yeah. Um, they really did a great job writing. There was literally yeah. no reason for us oh, not to get did. started. Everyone knows all you guys, so... Should we do all the right. thing where we all give an overview, or should we go right into it? What do you reckon? Uh, overviews, we generally do the whole, hey, what'd you think? And, you know, like, 50 words or less. Gary just said, too you late, know? already forgot the movie. No! We have like an hour or so <laughs> left <laughs> before <laughs> everyone forgets this ever happened. Movie. We've nearly <laughs> there. A dragon and a, it's a baby. You know how hard it is to keep this movie in my brain, Mauler? Do you know I the know. strain? Well, people it watched takes. it in cinema, got in their cars, started driving, they were like, man, uh, Shazam, you know, did he do Red light, green. Did that come out There's the cars. Is it... Wait, did I see a movie today? Like, what? <laughs> what? Where what's am happening? I? Why am I in this bus in the middle of the night going home? I don't know what's, what, what is happening. Scared. Where is everyone? Well, I watched the movie last night, and ever since then I've had, I've, I've put little quirks in my ears so that the, I don't forget the movie, so the yeah, memories yeah, don't, don't fall like, out, leak out yeah. during the night. Yeah. So I, I, I should be good. Muller wears his ass. Listen, if you if you watch the stream that he did, he explained he literally just couldn't. He couldn't watch the movie. He just couldn't. Couldn't bring himself to do it. So, wow. Uh, it's, you know, it's a tough one to watch this one. Um, but as has been said by plenty, as far as I know, that it's okay. It's okay. That's what I've heard. Yeah, you keep. See, I told myself that when I thought about it a day later. It's like I think that was okay. And then I started to think about it more. It's like, oh no, that movie is garbage. <laughs> I'm, uh, I will say, I'm a little bit baffled. I'm surprised that you would have thought it was uh, just sort of yeah, okay. Well, should we do our blurbs then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Define the order, Fringy, go. Uh, right to left. Right, meme, you're up. That's fun. Yeah, the, this, <laughs> this film, it's like, I don't... It, I, I came out of the theater like it was lukewarm and as it's gone along it's kind of cooled into like i don't i just don't have any feelings whatsoever i'm the neutral planet in the sense that i just have no ability to feel anything um for this it's film one of those kinds beyond of movies, yeah. yeah it's uh it, it's so hard to even I, I just remember there was a lot of things in it that I was really raising my eyebrow at, and I knew as I was as as I left the theater, I knew they're gonna fall apart. And um, but but the thing is, in order for them to fall apart, I need to remember what happened, and I'm <laughs> struggling at the moment. My brain knows it watched this film and remembers some of the bits that some of the ideas it liked and some of the moments that it liked. But it doesn't really remember that much about it, so that's that's how I experienced this film. It seems to be a film of amnesia, um, and of uh, just um, it it doesn't leave an impression really. It's just kind of you know. All right. <laughs> Which <laughs> next up would be Rags? Oh my goodness! What what a worthless dog shit movie. <laughs> um, uh, I hated it. Pretty much all the way through, um, there was nothing of any value in here. There was um, there there was a moment in this movie where I was just sort of amazed that these are the kinds of scripts that get many many millions of dollars thrown at them, and they they like they like film, they hire actors, they uh, they edit, and they do post production, and they have CGI, and they have all this stuff. Like, they, this is a full-fledged movie, and all of that money and time and effort got poured into this script, and it, and it made me kind of sad. This movie oh. sucks. <laughs> it's right. way worse than the first Shazam. And the first Shazam's bad, but <laughs> this one is, like, a whole new level of bad. Metal. Uh, yeah, for me, it was the same with meme in the beginning. Uh, I was like, oh, I watched a movie. Oh, the end credit scenes when it was always like, oh, I don't care. I need to get my bus so I don't have to wait an hour to get home. So I think there were some. I'm it probably doesn't matter anyway because that all that movie doesn't count to anything anyway because we're doing the reboot soon, right? Uh, yeah. Unless they keep Hopefully, that. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I still don't exactly know how yeah, that. Yeah, with the box office numbers of this film. 
<laughs> uh, they're probably not going to keep it now. <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, they just kind of went home. Then we had to do some other stuff. There was 3 a.m. I had to sleep. Then I had a whole day of work. And then, then I started thinking about the movie again. I was like, oh, that was bad. That was bad. That was bad. Had a pen in it. That was fun. Mm. That was a fun pen that was in there. Didn't talk, so that was very good. Uh, the movie's completely tonally fucked. I, I don't know what the... <laughs> Movie is like, oh, I'm so sad, and it's like, no, I'm gonna do stupid quote unquote jokes, and it's like, okay, oh no, this person died. We're gonna forget about that. I think legally they can be considered jokes. I uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, we're gonna focus on these two shazams, but we forget about the other one. They don't matter. Uh, f family. <laughs> What's so powerful about it? There, there you go. <laughs> All right, I guess that's up to me. Uh, I have been graced with seeing this film, I think, three times at this point. It would be safe to put it that way, just because that's what I end why? up I end up doing that. But you'll know why when we go through this. Yeah, I know everything about this film. I'm going to be able <laughs> oh, to no. fucking delete all that information once this stream is complete and everything's recorded. <laughs> Hooray! Um, I, uh, upon first viewing, was getting more and more frustrated just watching it in the cinema. I'm so sad to see such lame fucking writing. Uh, mm hmm tactics throughout this film so many uh shit excuses to get away with doing all kinds of things that uh, people want to do and the uh sort of approach with almost every payoff is that it's either incredibly poorly supported or it's subverted seconds later because uh they're just trying to drain every last piece of emotional value out of this ip before it crashes and burns forever <laughs> um so yeah you know i don't think it's very good um upon Digging deeper and deeper. You know, some people say, like, oh, you can nitpick apart any film if you dig deeper. Some films improve. This is not one of those. Not even <laughs> close. What? I thought you were going to tell real us bad. it's going to be amazing. And you know what? So Sometimes we bad. end up saying, oh, you know, at least the at least the CG and the performances and the soundtrack are all real good. Didn't really mm. like the soundtrack, and some of the performances were incredibly distracting to the point where I was like, wow, you got away with that? Okay. Magic fire! Die! <laughs> this, <laughs> this is a lot. We'll go through it. But uh, yeah, uh, really bad. Really, really stinky bad. Stringy, stinky. what do you think? Yeah, Shazam! Fury of the Gods is pretty terrible. Um, I think it's almost going to sort of skirt by on, on the perception of being lame. Like that it's a lame, boring movie that nobody really is going to care about in a week. But it's terrible. It, it pretty much suffers from like all of the, the writing problems that you can have. Uh, it, it is like, yeah, it, it's a pretty, it's really bad. Um, yeah, those are my thoughts. All right, next. <laughs> all right, Cap, to close it out. It's, it's a dumb movie. It's not good at all. It's quite bad, in fact. But I didn't hate it as much as you guys did. I thought there were a couple of things where I'm like, ah, uh, maybe that, that was okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm sure that the more I think about it, it will fall apart even further. But yep. I didn't hate yes. it as much as some recent superhero films like Ant-Man and such, though. I guess it might have been more disappointing than Ant-Man Quantumania because I didn't come away from Ant-Man thinking there was even the possibility of a good movie in there. Whereas this felt like there was some opportunities they had that they totally wasted, um, especially the ending. That really left us out. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can talk about that. <laughs> we'll get there. We can, we can I, that. That's the worst part of the movie for me because there's something that they almost do that would have won me over a lot. I wouldn't have thought it was good, but it would have won me over quite a bit. And then they undid it. You'd have the said they had part. testicles, but then you had to take that yeah. away. Yeah, they did yeah. not have testicles in this movie. No testicles don't like, to be don't found. Like taking away testicles. Oh, no, no, no. no one yes. likes doing it. Sometimes it has to be done. It's not a good movie, and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think when Fringy said that people will stop talking about this in a week, as I think you're being I might generous. have been overstating it, I yeah. Think that nobody, <laughs> like four days from now, now. people will be <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta uh, hurry. It could be the next few minutes, like I said. Yeah. Like Chad just started to start. What, what, what are you talking about? Wait, when did that come out? Yeah. <laughs> I think I like saw someone avocado. say that we were uh, <laughs> that we were just upset because Dwayne Johnson wasn't in it. Black Adam is better than this film. Oh, that Black that Adam is absolutely better than with, this film. Uh, but well, does anyone here think this film was better than Black Adam? I haven't seen Black Adam. Is it? 
Oh, I don't mean I'm not black Adam enough <laughs> to say, honestly. Um, I, Pierce I, Brosnan I and uh, the Falcon so, guy alone. I, I was yes. talking to Shad no. about it on uh, yeah. as his stream, right? And Shad was like, "No, Wrath of the Gods is a Fury." So you know. Fury of the Gods is better. And then I said, dude, oh, like I don't like anything in Fury of the Gods as much as I like Dr. Fate. And he literally went, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dr. Fate. The man was alright, too. But yeah, Dr. Fate was carrying that movie pretty hard. I think that just the just the idea, even though it was really terribly executed, the concept of Black Adam's like character past, that's something... You yeah, know, uh, like that's I think, something. Yeah. I had more to say in terms of him having a coherent like story than most of everything in Phase Four, like him as Black Adam as a character, which is kind of mind blowing. So, you know, it gets. A oh, and I mean, and I guess in terms of comparing it to this film, this film feels right out of like Phase Four of the MCU. Yes, it does. Well, it would fit mm -hmm. in snugly. Yeah, it would yeah. fit in very well. Yeah, uh, if you put Marvel Studios Shazam: Fear of the Gods on it, I think it'd just be like, oh yeah, it's just another fucking terrible Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. Well, and can you believe it? Um, we're finally seeing repercussions. I put it in the title. Uh, we'll probably talk about it peppered through, maybe the more at the beginning, more at mm -hmm. the end. Who knows? But uh, DC, the state of it, and the state of superheroes at the box office is starting to get very interesting. Well, yes, Ant Man oh, and yes. the Lost Quantumania is probably going to lose money. This film, damn, like who knows what this one's going to look like? Well, I think Ant Man and the Lost Quantumania may not break five hundred million, which is less than the first Ant Man made, which was over a deck, nearly a decade ago, on a lower budget. Well, so, so in that was and, shocking, surprising in terms of how it's all going. Shazam's doing way worse. Shazam oh, yeah. is opening a lot lower, and it's another case of it costs more money to make. So it's like, it's like barely thirty million or something. Thirty million domestic opening weekend, which yeah. is you, not good for a hundred million dollar like production. Been paying attention to what the director's been saying these past leading up weeks. You've known this film was doomed. He knew too. Uh yes, he yeah he even seems to have known. Oh, I missed yeah. that. What's he, what's he been saying? Oh, I think he went on Reddit and basically said, like, someone was saying, oh, yeah, damn, like, the numbers, hey, and I think he basically said something along the lines of, yeah, I, I kind of knew that this was happening, but I got paid. Like, that was oh, kind damn. of the, uh, yeah, that was, was basically Not to mention him begging on Twitter for people to go and watch this film. Like, Ugh. Uh, and then there was the tweet as well where, like, because they revealed that Wonder Woman was going to be in it in, like, a commercial that was playing on television. And he's just like, oh, yeah, damn, like, big spoilers out there for the film. Um, I, like, if you don't want to see spoilers, like, don't go on, like, forums or watch television, I guess, or something like that. <laughs> um, well, so I was saying on, um, I can't remember if this was open bar or not, but I was saying, like, why the fuck wasn't she in the marketing? And the answer right. was, well, you know, uh, they, do you really think that was an accidental leak? And it's like, well, no, just, just market it with her at that point. Why? Yeah. Like, why do sneaky leaky? Like, just just mark it. Go, go, go. And, but I mean, and... what is that even worth? You well, know, so being remember they did it with Spider Man, okay? When they were like, look, the rhino. He's going to fight the rhino. Look how cool that <laughs> is. And then <laughs> we saw every. You could have just. I'm surprised they didn't take that cheap shot of being like, Wonder Woman's in this movie. Come see it. Come on. Come see it. Please, for the love of You'll God. Love her. Please <laughs> 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 keep her alive. Let God. us keep the lights on. Good God. Uh... So, yeah, I don't know. Um, but in any case, we should probably get on with talking about the the film, the story. Yeah, we need to. This will take a while. It will. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Why? And I you should have said no! Myself, <laughs> Self, Rags, and Friggy did did a good. We re-familiarized re ourselves with the first Shazam before seeing this one. And my God, I they do the not... First time. They wish the first Shazam didn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> in this film. <laughs> so yeah, it do. gets in the way of the story several times. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. oh shit, yeah, that's the rule we set before. Fuck. Like, well, now it's a different rule. Shut up. And it's like, oh, okay. Um, we'll get to them examples as well. But I'm just saying, and yes, we, I don't know if it's controversial anymore or not, but we all thought it was terrible, uh, the first one too. It's really yes, bad. It, it ain't as bad as this film, no, no way. But as bad as yeah. this one. Yeah, that's the only positive that the first Shazam has, is that it's not as bad as its sequel. But um, I'm afraid EFAB was was EFAB going when the first Shazam came out? Or did we just not yeah, but we wouldn't have. Yeah, it's weird how we things could. roll out because it's like wh I think some people are like why are you even covering this? And it's like I actually find this interesting in terms of the um, this is a big sort of checkpoint in terms of the downfall of superheroes at the box office. This one's a yeah. big one. This it's and Ant Man, and yes. it will be very interesting to see what it looks like for both Marvel and DC for the rest of the year, and especially how it looks 
uh, compared to other films that are coming out this year. So, um, we open with a wonderful uh, Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu approaching a museum. In, and, and it's funny, because they walk up... I mean, it's, it's, you don't even see them first. You see that the staff from the first film in two pieces is in a display case, and a guy is, like, talking about it in Greece. That yep. alone is already just like, fucking what? And, and I think a lot so, of people yeah, are like, cause... well, what? What's the problem? And it's like, did you see the first movie? <laughs> like... Well, why is that staff the, in Greece? The explanation that he provides is that they found it in like rubbish, like they found it at a dump. Well, like so it was to on be, a place just to a dump. give everyone a refresher, they fought the big bad guy who had that staff in the first film in some like fair in uh, Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, and he snapped the thing in half by by breaking it with over his knee and dropped it to the floor. And so they're like, "How did it end up in Greece?" And he's like, "Well, that's where I dropped it, so that's where its journey started. That is the line. That is it." That's where I dropped it? Cool. Yeah, how did it get to Greece? Well, I dropped it in Philadelphia, so that's where the journey started. Okay, so we're uh, on the right planet. <laughs> you managed to nail the planet. I mean, cosmically speaking, we're almost home. Yeah. So, I, I guess... <laughs> is, I don't know. This is, this is, I'm not convinced, okay? This is the first <laughs> of countless examples of just, wow, you didn't give a shit. You just... Why did it... Why no, did it need to be in Greece? I don't know. Why did they it could have stolen in... it from Philadelphia yeah. or some museum yeah, in America. Been her, her Greek gods. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's a, that's Definitely. Hard. I could tell by looking at them that these are Greek gods. <laughs> yeah, apparently it broke three trash compactors. That's what they say as well. What? Mm -hmm. So, like, basically, rubbish people that's picked a... it up, threw it in trash compactors. Well, it broke we don't the know. Calm down, Mahler. We don't know anything hey, about Hey, I can I'm, infer I'm plenty, not... okay? They were probably they fine people. About, there was a big battle at this fair. You would imagine that police and stuff showed up, and somehow the magic stuff ended up just in the, the trash. dump. <laughs> yeah. like, this also means that, I guess, Mark Strong, when he talked to the police, or any of the Shazamites, none of them, Shazamites. like, discussed... Mentioned. None of them mentioned this magic staff with his oh, wizard... Oh, they have a line for that, right? And... Don't worry, yeah. I'll oh, explain okay. it. Uh, yeah, they have a they line say, for that. what right. the fuck, explain. Shazam? You left... The staff there, and he says, "No, we all left the staff there," which is true. Oh, you all left that is stuff. True. There. That is true. But so, my yeah, God, that is yeah, true. My God, wow. yet, a, yet it, another fantastic example of if you if the riots if we suggested this to each other as part of the story, the other people would be like, oh, "Funny, what was the actual thing? What what are we actually writing? That's not that's not anything. What are you doing? It's like yeah. Yeah, it's all right. It sounds kind of funny, and we'll move right along. Like, oh, okay. So, so yeah." Does that Sorry, really quick. Does this mean that they put it in two separate trash compactors and it broke both? And he's like, you know what? Third time's the charm. Third time, let's try. Throw it one more. <laughs> That'll do it, I'm sure. Bring out, then... bring out our best trash compactor for this <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> Only our finest of trash compactors. Wow, well, the called, just really gone up. Bat, they called Batman for a special, special His version. Bat compactor. Bat compactor, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just so funny to see it there in that way. You're just like that. None of this should have happened. And it's like, shut up. You got a new story to tell. You're like, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll just move right along. Um, so you have these two gods that have entered the room. You're like, oh shit, they are. I mean, oh wow, you, you can. Guys. I think it's funnier to know this ahead of time. They are the daughters of Atlas. You're like, oh, that mm -hmm. sounds pretty cool as a title, I guess. And uh, one of them has the power of elements, which sounds like just all powers then or something. But it just means yeah, that like she like ice. She can make ice. She oh. can make fire. She could blow wind. Maybe she could use electric, like lightning. What do you, say you know, that? we just see her use telekinesis. That's about it. Oh, that's not and an then, element. Oh, and, and melt some steel. <laughs> yeah, she. Oh, that's that's heat. Kind of. That's like fire. That's elemental. Did you remember I when she, um, she pierces like a big line to make a platform around them? It's like, what's what's that exactly? It's just like I don't know. It's, that's uh, the element it, of uh, the element of cutting wood, cutting concrete, I guess. pizza cutter with yeah. my finger. So yeah, uh, she's got the uh, shit tons of power, and the other one is Lucy because that's Helen Mirren. The other one's Lucy Liu, and she has the power of chaos. Greek god thinking, Lucy Liu. Oh, I I'm not calling that? them by whatever their names are. I'm calling them by their actresses. Okay. What is <laughs> what is her character's name? Is it Lucy Liu is Calypso? Helen Mirren is shit, Athena or something. I don't know. Athena? No, it's not Athena. Athena. Uh, I can't remember, remember her name. Her, 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 <laughs> the other one is Anthea. I only remember what? that because of the stupid. Maybe Anne her name's Helen. We'll call, like I said, I'm calling them Helen and Lucy. That's okay. a Greek name. Helen and Lucy. Um, Lucy is the god of chaos, thing. and you're thinking to yourselves like, "Ooh, what are the powers?" And it's like one power. 
One power? Okay, what's what's the power? You can go up to people and tell them to do a thing and they'll do it with like mind control. That That's can be used it. for yeah. chaos. I mean it's I guess. just it's just not what comes to your mind first with the god of yeah. chaos. You're like, okay. Well the third chick's powers seem more like chaos than yeah. like rearranging the world. <laughs> that seems kind of chaotic. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got I've got thoughts on her powers, but we'll get there. Oh, I'm yeah. sure we all yes, do. We all do. <laughs> that that power is uh, like, where's the image of those fuckers. I have one. There they are. <laughs> Beautiful. So, yeah. Uh, Lucy Lou, that's the only power she has when she doesn't have the staff. And I was just like, that's so lame. I mean, it's a really good power. Like, it's really useful and strong. But mm -hmm. how does that make you the god of chaos? What does that have to do with anything? It, it does all kind of chaos. You can say, Jeez. do chaos. And they all shit themselves. Oh, <laughs> That's okay, what I would do with that power. Because she's going to be the bad one. That's why. Yeah. Well, like in that opening scene, it's the closest it gets to being chaos because it, at least when she whispers into the ear, the other people start whispering into other people's ears and it's kind of a, this pile up. That's the closest it gets. And it, I don't think they do that. I think again. that was the she most interesting kind of just... thing she does with the power throughout the whole film. Yeah. yeah. Right at the beginning. she um, the, the, the security guard goes to stop him and then she whispers in his ear and then he like goes rabid and jumps on someone and whispers in their ear and they, that it's like a zombie infection but with that oh yeah that style. never happens again yeah never yeah i again. thought that would be like the, <laughs> i thought the that would be like the plot was they had to oh no there's a bunch of crazy people and we got to stop them but that just ends and instead we do something else as we'll discover later which is definitely way cooler but like but, um, that yeah. on its own is a way more interesting movie, like a, a virus oh, yeah. that spread via oh, yeah. speech, and it well, and, you know, and our heroes all. can't you can't kill the people because they're under a spell, yes. right? You have to stop the spell caster so the spell breaks. Really classic shit, you know. Really basic. Oh, we, we can't use our powers to kill them. We have to come up with ways to wrangle them or to capture them or something. But you know, we don't want them to talk in our ears, so we better get some cotton balls or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it works. Yeah. So something really happens. Uh, something really funny happens that I just uh, we're in uh, Greece, by the way, everyone. This yes. is in Greece. We're, we're, this all <laughs> Man, happened. I forgot that wasn't the country in Greece guys, until you guys said it. This is Greece. It's like oh, there are okay. things that you just won't pick up while watching the film, <laughs> and I think they rely on that. <laughs> like, yeah, it's so dumb because it just don't need to say it's in Greece. Just make it in America. Philly. We fly. <laughs> Greek gods. I mean, like the, good agrees. the first scene of the movie is them flying over the Parthenon where the Acropolis is. Yeah. And I, and I just got like flashbacks from the Snyder Cut. I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, we're back. This it is a classic Actually, location so, um, from the Snyder Cut. When I first saw this, I was like, ooh, I wonder if they will be dropping in Diana into this. Uh, at least peppered in through the story. Like she'll, it'll open with her discovering some disturbance, and then she's trapped in something and you know because i was like it's going to be difficult to account wonder woman's in this film but she obviously isn't going to be able to be a big part well, of it because she'll annihilate is, bad guys <laughs> it was probably never a possibility because she's too expensive oh yeah very expensive like she wasn't well, even set with everyone else uh no she was oh uh, didn't a photo just come out of her uh like, yeah but the director bubbles. said that she was there and that they oh, okay. her. oh in that case i was there too well so the the stunt double might have been for that dream <laughs> sequence uh i think he said yeah it was yeah that, kind um, of sense. that they used her for the dream sequence oh what a too. waste of money but anyway this split staff is in a glass case and Helen Mirren walks up to it and inside she goes... a glass case inside yes. a museum outside of the acropolis where the parthenon is and she goes to grab it, like any normal person would, and she hits her hand on the pain, and she's like, eh, eh, eh. And she tries again, and again, and again, and again. <laughs> and first... I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, So at first, I was thinking they didn't understand the concept of glass. Yeah. Like, they didn't know, they thought it was like yeah. a force field or something. <laughs> it was, oh my god, it's like ants. It's like the movie Ants, when there's a sandwich in the plastic bag, and the ant wants to <laughs> get it, but he thinks there's a force field around the sandwich. <laughs> This is a really clever reference to the film what Ants is this hard with a Z. Air? This hard air. Something kind of unreal, as far as I was concerned. I didn't realize. And then uh, her and Lucy Lou have to work together to tip the glass pane case over, and it smashes on the floor then. They don't break it or cast any kind of spell. It's literally just a cover that has apparently got no like link to the Adhesive? case. Sort of, yeah, it's, it just it can lift up, and they do that. And then they're like, yeah, we got it. It's like, okay. Oh, <laughs> that's, really? that's the coolest thing you think of, I guess. Fine. Um, and they pick up a piece each, 
I guess, and it like it it does something to him, and I was like, is that supposed to be a signal that it's giving them powers? I think so. So did they have yeah. powers before then, or were they? No, I think I, I mean, think the idea them. was because it's broken. Uh, no, because it's because the step. No, wait, hang on. Because they make any sense. Oh, from no, right? oh, hang on, I'm okay. trying to. I'm trying to I just, arrange. Just try to, it's they. They have their powers stolen from them, right? Got a lot of mechanics yeah, to but, talk but through here. But that was because <sighs> the stuff exists, right? That that all sealed them in. That was. Yeah, I, I don't know if you want me to. Should we do the law dump now so people can understand what the hell is happening? I I guess. So let's do it. When they touched it, they. Got you have back. the gods in the god realm doing god things, and then humanity, and the gods kind of think humanity is shit, whatever, beat them up, slave them, whatever. And then one day, Atlas is like, man, you know, some of these gods shouldn't have powers, and some of them should have more powers, so I'm going to make a big old staff that can do that specifically. And then, un unfortunately, the humans did an uprising, and some human wizards, that's how they call it, steal... The uh the staff and they steal all the gods' powers, and I guess killed them, uh or a lot of them, and then locked the remaining gods in their realm in a big old sphere. Um, are mm. so how does this affect the continuity of like the stuff we learned in Wonder Woman, like of like I, Zeus uh, and... I think that they are banking on you <laughs> not remembering any yeah, of that. The fact that it, this staff apparently has Zeus's power in it, it's like wait. Zeus, uh, the Zeus that the, Ares killed yeah. in Wonder Woman, like that's right. Zeus that made Wonder Woman with lightning or whatever. He used all of his powers to create Wonder Woman or whatever. Yeah, and and someone just said, didn't Ares kill all the gods? Just like I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't. I don't as far as I know, that's so good. Point. Because the thing is, like Wonder Woman is in here, and she recognizes this place is important to us. So it's like, so you do share continuity, right? They're like. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we sure do. Man, now that you mentioned hey, this, man, it just makes me Harry's realize. The wizards. It just makes me realize I've seen most of these movies and I remember fuck all about them. They're all so forgettable. Why. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen I haven't seen Ares team up with wizards since that Harry Potter film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the werewolf Harry. Harry. Yeah. There we go. And I guess the the next part in terms of the relevance of the stuff is that when they broke it in Shazam, that was like the thing that broke the barrier that allowed these two to get in to like Earth, yeah. so that they could go get the stuff. So how long has that staff been a barrier? For a long time, long enough that the fucking wizard should have mentioned it. And when it the got mended, should have mentioned a lot of things. When when that when the staff gets mended at a lot later in the film, <clears> it <throat> doesn't seem to work in that same way anymore. I guess. It'd be so great if someone was like, "Why didn't the wizard say anything?" And one of the writers just like, "Because we made that up." <laughs> wow, well, I hadn't thought of that in the first movie. That we lost all of our sense. notes, and also we forgot the previous films we made, just like everyone else. A wizard did it. Because it was that I've already lost in this plot. I know, I know. I'm so glad that you are. We're in we're in Greece, by the way. We're still in the first the museum. <laughs> just trying to give all the backstory by the to make Acropolis this make some sense. Parthenon is. The thing is, they need to repower up this staff to allow it to do its thing. That's going to be their next quest. So how do they get powers from it? How do they I get powers know. from the staff? Yeah, because well, they yeah, seem to get powered up by it. Yeah, it's they not get a little bit of juice. It, it doesn't it work. Broke. It a little bit of well, the whole yeah, point was that so. it got yeah. broke in the first mm -hmm. one, but and, and that like affected something. The barrier. It, it broke the barrier between their worlds, Rags. Come on. Yeah, keep because up. the because so there that's how a... it works. But yeah, the wizard there... never told never told like Billy Wait, about oh, any God. of that. Remember, because remember, yes. the wizard didn't tell Billy basically anything in the anything. first film. No, <laughs> and he shits on him for that. Like he was all like the wizard shits on everything. Billy for that. <laughs> Even though he never told him any of this, mm -hmm. so, Wait, yeah. so, they, so I guess what, the, I'm, what I'm trying no, to highlight what... is the wizard staff breaking seems to break it, breaking the spell cast with the very staff to hold the barrier. The barrier breaks. Like, okay, I understand all that. Those two don't have powers, but they draw their powers back from the staff when it's yeah, broken it's like... before they fix it. Question mark. So it doesn't make any sense. Was hidden but... in there? Question. It had a little bit of juice left. So right? how did they get here without powers? <laughs> Uh, it fell. The barrier like broke, Earth. so they walked. I guess. But there's they no. It's Earth. a giant space island <laughs> where they live. No, I, I know. Yeah. I know. 
I don't even I don't know how they got to Earth. Period. I yeah, remember no, the I don't only either. other way that the only way that we see people getting to that realm later is through those magic doors in the place that they don't have access to. Oh god, that's even yeah. stupider in terms of writing. But yeah, it couldn't have been that. They say that they that they didn't do that. So yeah, they just walked here somehow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. see what I mean? Like Good the game. whole thing is absolutely crumbled, and we're like two seconds in. <laughs> we just don't know anything about anything, like space they, uh... and time and continuity and the stakes or anything that's happening. We have no clue what's going on. Like, They're nothing matters. Incredibly fast and loose with the magic. They don't want to deal with it at all. Yeah. So uh, well, you said that they'd rely on us not ooh. remembering ooh. the first Shazam. I think that they rely on you not remembering previous scenes in this very yep. film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. That's fair. Um. So yeah, the mind control thing is spreading around the whole room. Everyone's screaming and running, and I just, like I said, it's kind of a neat power, but I don't know if it has anything to do with. Well, yeah, and it also seems to lead to, lead to a bit of a, a bit of a dead end in terms of like a scene that's playing out because then they turn everybody into stone. Well, before yeah. that, we have a uh, guy yeah, run at her with uh, a baton, and I thought it was really funny. He does a little flippy flippy flap with it before he attacks her, like a yeah. flourish with his baton. While people are screaming yeah. and dying, presumably. It's just like, what are you doing, man? He knows <laughs> he's why like, he's <laughs> here. He's here to, oh man, he's been waiting. He's been practicing with this baton He's like an old home. woman I could hit. Yes. <laughs> Woo. Like, oh yeah. Finally, I can be a security guard. And uh, so he runs up to I, him. And then my my see... father was a security guard before me. And his father before him. And now I'm going to prove myself. And honor the family name by beating up this woman <laughs> with this baton, just like I've practiced. And he doesn't even get to do it, because it she Helmer and grabs him with telekinesis. It's definitely a, like, this is her power sort of moment. It's like, okay. she's got It's pretty amazing, too. She can, she, she's got the zero-point energy power that Syndrome has. Mm -hmm. You just go, Wing, and you're just stuck, and you can't do anything. Um, yeah, remember, she can just freeze people. She can just put people on pause. That's a, It's pretty that's good. A, yeah, it's a power that she has. Remember this for later, potentially. And yeah, some other guy then runs up to it like, please just let me go. And then she goes, ah, blah, 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 blah. And like a statue of Atlas turns to sand or dust, whatever. And, and, it, and it goes on everybody and turns everyone in the room to stone. That's like yep. a elemental power, kind of. I'm and pretty sure that guy, was, uh, that guy was from Peacemaker, I think. Really? The guy working in that music. I recognize him. For, and I'm... Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's in that show. So, so I guess that's that not... character just dead now? Yeah, I guess. I guess that's okay. some continuity though, right, at least. <laughs> hey, this is a universe where, like, characters interact with other characters. There's <laughs> not going to be any point in this film where you're like, hmm, where's Superman or Wonder we'll, Woman? We'll ask that a couple times. <laughs> um, so she kills them all? Yes, she kills them all. Uh, and she even knocks yep. over one of the statues, it crumbles, and then Lucy Liu starts to introduce just how bad she's going to be in this film. She says... Turns out museums are fun. Let's have more oh. of it. <laughs> and I was just like, oh. <coughs> this is uh, actually the dialogue in this film begins. Yeah, I will say she's not got great dialogue to deliver. Some of the lines you're gonna hear in future are so fucking terrible from her character. But she, she was not given a shit. Helen uh, mm -mm, was fine. I, I even at times I was kind of like, eh. yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, she's so good that phoning yeah. it in is still pretty solid. Yeah, <laughs> Lucy Liu cannot phone it in. <laughs> she, she has to give it a bit more no. of a shot, okay? Um, so yeah, th and this is the thing. I almost want to give this to the to the chat to see what they think, right? Instead of what all of us were thinking in the cinema. See, see if they share the same thing, right? But you have um, Helen Mirren's like, the champions of this realm outnumber us. And Lucy Liu's like, human champions are still humans. We are gods. Again, great dialogue. Mm. Wow. And so uh, Helen Mirren then tightens up on her and she says, Do not underestimate the judgment of the wizard. To protect the power of the gods, he would have chosen with meticulous precision the strongest, most keenly intelligent champions this realm has ever witnessed. Now, you're watching a movie. You can have like, expectations on editing or delivery of jokes. What do you think happens next when she says these champions are going to be amazing? Uh, we cut to the champions being shitty. Oh, ho, ho, ho. It seems, yeah, everyone's already said, Q Joe, cut to blah, blah, blah. You cut to Shazam literally saying, I'm an idiot. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> thus is the beginning of the first draft jokes that are all throughout this film. Yeah, that's the idea of the joke that you want, and then you, like, make that a joke. You know? Particularly with a joke like that, you go, oh, yeah, but this has been done, like, a billion times, so yeah. let's yeah. find, like, a different kind of twist on it. 
But no, it's the first, most obvious, most basic version of that joke, of which that is the vast majority of the jokes in this film. Yeah. When, when, she, um, when, she, when she said that, was we, oh, we're going to cut to the Yeah, of course, footage. we're going to cut to him saying, yeah, like, <laughs> it's pretty much doing that. It might even be worse than that, because he wasn't even doing something stupid. He just said he's stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, it might have even been funnier if it was him doing something really dumb, like, as a superhero, you know? Like, something yeah, kind because of reckless. Didn't he do, silly. like, the whole charging people's batteries yeah yeah exactly like stuff. it could be something like, really funny like breaking two by fours or something off of his head something dumb and reckless but yeah. no it's just the first draft version of that joke nobody laughed in my cinema there weren't many people there but nobody laughed i didn't laugh once in this film didn't even go eh, or hmm, and you know kind of smile not a single joke i smiled i think twice i think there was one i smiled at but i no, it's not very good for two-hour comedy. No. no. <laughs> Especially when yeah. you have a, a film like this that takes so many shots on goal and they just keep bouncing off the, like, yeah. bouncing off the backboard, bouncing off the room. I, I mean, I had a laugh like when, I, when I realized there was actually only four, four people in, in my cinema when the movie started. I don't think well. it's super wise to open up introduce him in the movie just by reminding me or like making me question why he was picked in the first place again well especially that is the first movie problem. Why you mean. that is the first yeah. movie's problem but they reignite that issue in this one and then they commit oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. double down so it's, this it's uh, as well. to to help people out the problem that's being highlighted is that kid billy is way more mature than zachary levi shazam guy like yeah. they're two different people they feel like two totally different people Right. Yeah, which the point was supposed to be, what if an adult had the like mind of a child? How does that? What, what does that mean? Especially if they're like super powered. And then this, for some reason, this film and even the previous one is worse in this film. Is Zachary Levi is more childish than his child counterpart? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There was like multiple scenes where I was like, why is this in the in the in the, uh, in the human form in the adult form? Like, why is this not in the child? This is kind of weird. Um, yeah, there are a lot of opportunities where they could have, you know, they could have done something with these characters, like explored, you know, what it means for a teenager or a child to like spend all their time as the adult version and like how they prefer that. And you could do some character stuff there, but they waste any opportunity for exploration there. And also the, the movie just incessantly reminds you that like he probably shouldn't have been picked as Shazam. No, absolutely he... not. There's no <laughs> reason really to pick him. And to give a comparison no. to this dialogue, it's it's even it's not just the performances it's in the writing as well, right? You have um, uh, the he's he's nearly eighteen, Billy, and he and he says just this is one part of the movie where he says um, you know the wizard's in my dreams now, and he's trying to get me a message. I'm gonna call an emergency meeting after school. That's for the superheroes, like okay. And then immediately after that, we get Shazam in the meeting, and he's like, "Look, look, look, fam! I know it sounds crazy, and and obviously, I don't know exactly what this all means, but but he he was he he was super aggro, he was super loud, trying to warn us, and I, I think about the realms and stuff. It's just like, what the? F you don't yeah, even what happened? About. You're like different person. Yeah, he you're not even stupider. close. It's like <laughs> entirely, like you said, entirely different characters. I, I don't know why they played it this way. It doesn't. It's just like Billy gets taken over by Shazam rather than he is Shazam. <laughs> yeah, which, uh, well, which misses out on very... it misses out on so much of the potency of the whole fucking premise. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And a lot of people saying that's not yeah. how Shazam's supposed to be. I, I'm not familiar with the comic version, but I, would I hope it's know. a lot better yeah. than this shit. I should hope so. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'll but... give it to you. It totally is. Definitely. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah, I believe oh, you. This... This is this is the issue, right? Because like for the longest time, like the whole idea is, oh yeah, Billy Batson, he's this wholesome, wholesome kid who turn who because he's so pure of heart and so like just a good person, and only a child could be this good. Um, that's why the wizard chose him. And then in 2011, they rebooted everything and ruined him, and went, nah, he's actually like a, an asshole, but the wizard like was dying, so. He gave him the powers because fuck it. And that's oh, how he gets it. Great. And that's the version they adapted. Congratulations, you played yourself. Yay. Oh. <laughs> we could probably move on with the plot. Uh, Fine. Yeah, the, the whole I'm an idiot thing. He is currently talking to a, a pediatrician. 
and he's saying, there's already a superhero with a red bolt who goes faster than me. Aquaman is literally huge, and he's manly. Batman is just so cool, and I'm just me. Like, okay. I just want to wheel out those references to those other DC characters, Well, it doesn't guess, help, so. because we're like, okay, so where are all those guys going to be in this whole movie? You can't, like, actually reference them, too. At least you could pretend to ignore them. You yeah, someone like give a shit. Shazam is, uh... I think uh, people like, oh, but they, he's referencing other characters who exist in that universe, yeah, that, like, never show up. Yep. That just It's not fair. Never... You can't do that. You're not allowed You're a to do snake. That. You're slimy. I'm You're a slimy mention, snake. As everyone's pointing out, it's like, man, that must have been difficult to write, isn't it? Because Shazam is, like, he's basically Superman, and he's complaining. Yeah. Yeah, he's got. He's very powerful. He has all the powers. He's one of those lame ass heroes who's just like amazingly strong and they can fly and shoot lightning and he's super fast. Like, you suck. This well, is not interesting. You're just the best. You the interesting have all part the is supposed to be that it's a kid controlling all of that. You're supposed to yeah. make something mm -hmm. of that, but they don't. No. No. And, you know, challenges that could be difficult mentally would be fun, but we don't get that in this either. Oh, there's yeah, definitely mental that's... challenges. <laughs> and as someone just said, yeah, he doesn't even have the weakness Superman has. Like, no, nope. and yet he's like, oh, I'm just not as cool as all of them. It's like, right. Okay. Um, and they're really the subtle best. with the dialogue, aren't they? Just really getting the, the <laughs> motivation through implication, never spelling it out, like, explicitly or overtly, you know, just, just, just really make, allowing us to infer really what he's going through. Well, it, doesn't even, it doesn't even seem to be that he's grappling with the insane responsibility. It's just like, I'm so dumb compared to them. Oh. Well, you, they you say know, you have imposter syndrome. It's like, oh, God. And then yeah, <laughs> you were saying about the dialogue. It's like, so what are you going to do with the people who don't remember the plot of the first movie? Not everyone is a huge Shazam fan like me, Fringy, and Rags. Who Not anyone is just one. Shazam fan. <laughs> <laughs> And so it's like, how do we fix that? You know, a lot of movies try to remind you of particular events, especially if they're going to be important going forward. And so the guy's like, uh, you know, hey, have, have you ever experienced any trauma in your life? And he goes, well, I never met my dad. I was abandoned by my mom. I ran away from 11 homes. I got into a lot of fights. I was abducted by a wizard who gave me superpowers and the dude just died in front of my face. A doctor conjured seven demons and held my whole family hostage till we had to rip out one of his eyeballs and then everyone got superpowers, but now everyone wants to do their own thing and I'm the only one that's trying to keep everyone together. But, All right. Wow. Well, now that we're caught up, Shazam caught up. 2 can commence. Um... That's so lame to me. I'm just like, wow. You just try to describe as quickly as possible the first movie because you can't be asked to, like, in just put it into the movie in any kind of natural way. You're just like, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. And now we're doing this one. You're like, right. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> and that's not the worst character exposition in this film. That's the bad part. Oh, that's the very sad part about this is that this is still not we haven't reached the bottom yet we haven't reached at least not as far as i'm concerned there is a moment that's coming up um in in the rock of eternity that uh i'm excited for but we will get there that we will get like, there uh, that sounds like a christian rock music like what the what the cd would be called rock of eternity yeah. and it's just like lame <laughs> christian rock music you're not wrong well, that's all christian you're rock music wrong. but you know correct mm. you going to um, go see rock of eternity no no one is <laughs> 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 so the the guy says so you were rejected by your parents then the system and now the city and i thought that was really weird because i was like didn't he just say the system got him into his new family yeah yeah and then rejected anything, by your parents rejected like the system he yeah, rejected yeah. it because uh, the rejected by the parents i was like fair enough but then he was a troublemaker who just couldn't settle down in any area at all and then yeah, he found the family he wanted and and now the city, he's like, what? This, the, the city doesn't reject me, I never said that. And then he holds up a newspaper that says, city rejects Shazam, or, or heroes, whatever. And, um... Yeah, it's like, like oh. That's the Tribune, right. nobody reads the Tribune. And then the guy looks at it and says, I, I do. I thought it was okay. I was, I yeah. Newspaper, you know? Like, he literally would be the one that reads it. Yeah. Um, so, that that's like a slight moment of just... There's someone in the script there. I think it was partly due to the guy's delivery, too. Uh, who is in The Boys, that character, or at least that actor. I've seen him around in a couple of... In any case, yeah, the city is apparently rejecting them as superheroes. That's going to come up. Again. Um, 
once it, well maybe? kind I don't of know if yeah, once they, they sort of there. reference the idea that it's so they sort of reference the idea that these superheroes are kind of causing trouble but that's as far as it goes they even they even blame the upcoming bridge sequence on them destroying somehow, the bridge yeah. but yeah. that doesn't yet yeah, somehow but it doesn't have any consequences whatsoever you would think that if the city actually thought that these heroes were causing bridges to collapse, there'd be some consequences to that. No. But no, mm -hmm. no, no. Nope. Nah. It's just this thing that they almost threw in. They have they have a big old bucket of ideas, right? They just they're just they're taking an idea out and they're just throwing it in the movie, but <clears> they, they don't almost, do anything with it. It almost feels like residue or like the remnants of a previous draft of the yeah. script, where they're going to focus more on that. It does because they're going to gets dropped yeah. as a thread um so we cut to kids playing like some call of duty clone and i thought it was so cringe that uh oh Billy yeah says, it's like it's like a mobile ad or something <laughs> so yeah it looks like that shit turns into a <laughs> turns into a commercial <laughs> for something else so the, the the billy then is complaining about how he doesn't want to have to do this semi-regularly and apparently the reason they do it is for training right but the way he describes it is do we always have to play war games? And I was just yes. like, man, could you imagine anyone referring to any FPS as like, like when you're like, oh, you guys want to play COD or, you know, fucking a shooter. You don't go, oh, we got to play some war games. Like, that, that sounds so boomery. <laughs> <laughs> game about the war. The whole thing thing was war games, so boomery. Because the first thing we see him do is come up and these people are clearly labeled hostages and he just blows them up and goes, oh man, I'm so bad at this. Yeah. <laughs> it's he like he's an old man trapped inside. <laughs> he's the reverse of Shazam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then he says, hey, it's for practice for our other job. Military strategy. Multiple team members, each with a special skill set unleashed against an unknown enemy. I was just sitting there thinking, like, no, nah, that's true. What do you mean? Yeah, why Why would a kid even think that? <laughs> like, each with a special skill set, so something they've retconned since the first movie is they all have all powers. Not individually just... one power each. Why didn't they just have them, like, playing video games with each other like kids do? Yeah, you could just do that. Why did you have to frame this as this, like, why are we doing this? It's like, well, be because we're, we're kids and we play and video games fun. together? Like, that, you... <laughs> But why why would we have to explain why we're doing this? <laughs> I was probably worth mentioning. Most... First film said that um in fact this post was kind of useful. Uh Freddie got flight. Uh Freddy I got her name. She got speed, he got strength. What did what did Mary get? Mini know. skirt. Something. Oh. And then uh, the guy below her, he got electric blasts. Like they all basically got pieces of Shazam's power. But by the time you hit the second movie, they've all got all powers. It's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. fine. I That's guess. something I was confused about actually, because I was like, didn't they get like all different powers, but they just all use the same ones now? I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, I was just thinking. I think I gaslit myself when I saw it. I was just like, oh, I must just be misremembering that last film. It's, that's fine. It's okay. I think my brain was protecting me from thinking too hard, uh, lest it explode. I think they literally were like, this won't be as fun if they all have one power each. So, nah. Also, we not. can't be asked to write it that way because that's yeah, harder. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is harder. You have to go, well, if they all can't fly, how are we going to make sure they can all be everywhere we want them to but be? But does it make you wonder times? if, just like in an original script or first draft, when he says each with a special skill set, it's like, that's not true. Like, yeah. It may have been true before, but it's not true now. No. Nope. It was barely true before. Oh, yeah. Um, and then unleashed against an unknown enemy. The vast majority, and I mean 99.9% .9 of things that they do, are all things that they know what's happening when they go in. Because they mm -hmm. get told through, like, police reports or news like reports and stuff. If, say, for example, oh, there's a car pileup and people are struggling to get out. Not exactly oh, an no. unknown enemy. No. <laughs> Unless they're talking about, like, the wizard man that they fought or the gods they're going to fight in this one, which is like, oh, those that's two situations over two years. I really don't think yeah, that... I... <laughs> I assume that these last years, it, canonically, how much time is between the two movies? Two years. Two. Okay. So for two years, they've just been doing normal Earth crimes, you know, bank I robberies. Guess so, yeah. And no disasters. government has yeah. wanted to do anything about anything. They're just carrying on. All right. They didn't want to go to Kandak when all that was going down, even no. though there was a familiar lightning bolt showing up there. 
Well, no, and they haven't been contacted by Waller at all either. She contacts them at the end of this film. Kind of weird. Oh, is that oh, so one of the after credit scenes? It is indeed. That I, that I didn't bother to stay for. <laughs> what? That's like the whole reason we go to these movies now. Yeah, but I had to yeah, man. grab my bus. So. Ow. Oh, sorry. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he says in response to him talking about all the military strategy, teamwork, memberships, special skills and stuff, his, uh, Billy says, we don't need guns, though. We don't need guns, though. And it's like, oh. it doesn't have anything to do with what he just said, but okay. And there's a lot of that in this film, too. Characters just say stuff. Where it's like, wait, why did you? Yeah, this is one of those terrible films where people just don't like talk as nope. if they were human beings communicating. Yet again, it's becoming one of my least favorite tropes is how characters are written to not have conversations like humans would have conversations. Yeah. So that is a why happen end credit other. scene when you're restarting the franchise. Um, out of the two, one of them is pointless, like actually in universe pointless. They knew it was pointless. And the other one is promoting Peacemaker. So... I oh. guess season two. Well, that's why. <laughs> they because... can use it to promote uh, James Gunn's more stuff. Because everyone's going to sit through the credits hoping that they'll be there. So might as well put something there. Yep. Because you've conditioned them at this point. Um, so I can't believe when I, when I was getting my notes ready that this is a thing. But she's, the little girl's making a diorama of Genghis Khan and a bunch of unicorns killing him. And the dad is like, what is this? Why are you doing this? And then she's like, it's like revised history. And I think Freddy or someone else says, well, unicorns aren't real. And like, after you see the film and you come back to that scene, you're like, oh. Oh, that was your setup? You're right. Fucking how, hell. Yeah. How cool. How could we possibly thought that was a setup? I, I, thought that was just I, I actually think the writers would be it's like, just a hey, weird, see, dumb wasn't, joke. wasn't that cool? And you're like, no. And she's like, look how quirky this little girl is. It's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty quirky. Little girl likes that. unicorns. That's a setup for how there's going to be unicorns later, guys. <laughs> like, I'm what? in disbelief that that was a setup. I really am. Oh. Well, that was his. That was his character arc. Is that he's like unicorns aren't real, and then later he's like, "Well, maybe, maybe." Why would you say that? Wrong. What do you mean? No, um, something happened in the first film that was bizarrely funny, where they all do an escape. I can't remember why, but basically they all teleport to um a like a titty bar type place, and they burst out of the door straight away, and they're all just like, "Whoa, you know what the fuck happened?" Because they're all kids, of course. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Rags, because we, we watched and we were just like, wait, what? We you did. had them all like panicking about where they're going to go next and what's happening next. And then um, uh, Pedro just says, eh, it's not really for not me. Not my thing. Yeah, it's like, not my thing, not really for like, me. Like the cameras, the whole film like almost stops to let him say that. And then we carry on again. It's like, what? And it's like, oh, was that, was that them trying to be like, he's gay? Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, what, the what fat that? ones, the, the morbidly obese kids, gay. It needs, it's very important that we understand this. The the <laughs> movie really wants us to know that this is the case. Well, so like, kind of weird. What I want to point out is just like it's such an awkward moment in the first film, and it has nothing to do with anything at all, and it comes across Disney style, so to speak, of like, you see, there's a gay look. Yeah, we're, we're good. We're good guys. You're but happy, don't worry, right? we'll get it again. This and you're is what like, you want all right. <laughs> um, and in this film, they do the exact same fucking thing. There's two scenes. First one, I think, is funnier, but they're both pretty bad. The the mum is hanging out with Pedro, and she's trying to get him into just stuff, hanging out with him. And she's watching baseball with him, and you see someone doing something on there. And she's like, you know, she's like, woo, yeah, fucking A, go, whatever team. Good job, and, and you he's hit the like, ball, He's run. like, ha, oh, yeah. And then she goes, see, I told you this is worth giving a chance. And he goes, yeah, I'm really starting to see the appeal. And his eyes drift down to the book he's looking at, or the magazine. And there's just a shirtless guy on, on the picture, <laughs> yeah. the page. And it's like, what? How do <laughs> like, I know how to write gays so accurately? <laughs> what? You I, know how gays can't just, like, survive without ogling shirtless dudes in their daily lives? You see, mother, you shouldn't be trying to get him into baseball. He's gay. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what? that the gays, <laughs> the gays infamously hate baseball. It's just so funny as well because of how overt it is. Like, yes, I am very much into this. And then just looks at his naked guy. <laughs> You're like, okay. Uh, yeah, all right, fine. He's gay. That's, that's, this, they really don't do much of anything else with that character, which was quite, kind of sucks. But uh, it would be annoying as fuck to just like that. That's your scenes. You're like, all right. 
Uh, yeah, well, it's kind of like well, the first movie where they just don't really do anything with them. Only one always, of the kids um, really gets any amount of Billy time and Freddy. Really. They're the main characters. Everyone else is just around. Yeah, yeah, but the film insists that they're like a family. Yes, it and does. There's like a thing going on, and they really love each other. Just I'm like, yeah, really we know. Her. And like, it does feel a little bit like the the mag. Like, if you must have this gag in there, it feels like the magazine is a little bit redundant when you have a bunch of sweaty guys running around a a a, a pitch all day. Like, I feel like you could have streamlined that gag a little bit. If you needed to have the oh he's gay gag in there, he probably could have been ogling the baseball players. Uh, that 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 was probably something you could have done. I don't that know you why. didn't need. They almost present yeah, yeah these gay pretty and cool baseball. After all, Mom. They almost present gay and baseball as like opposites. Which, why would True. you? <laughs> no, baseball is very gay. <laughs> baseball is the straightest of sports because <laughs> uh, it it makes as, as much it, if you wanted to like reveal the straightness of a character how weird would it be if like you know hey son do you enjoy the baseball he's like yeah sure sure and he's looking at porn well like, i thought you were gay okay <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah they uh freddie's listening to a police radio and it says um possible 299 in progress multiple reports of cracking on roadways and suspension cables fraying they're referring to an enormous. It's the it's the Ben Franklin Bridge. I don't know if that's like a real bridge in Philadelphia or not. I assume it might be. I think it is. Sounds real. I don't know. Why not? Um, bridge, and so bridge not real. Yeah, they're just reporting that there's cracking on the roadways of the bridge and the cables are fraying. Like, damn, Who that sounds disastrous. The... You should probably yeah, lock off the bridge until you figure out what the fuck is going on. We just reports. We don't want to cause panic. Uh huh. <laughs> Especially not to all the these beach. people on the bridge. <laughs> Um, there was this there was this thing, and it wasn't the movie, it was Rags that made me laugh, okay? So you got, they're all leaving to go do this superhero thing, and they go, bye mom, bye mom, bye mom, bye mom, and then Billy says, bye Rosa, and she's like, oh, because he's not saying mom. <laughs> then Rags just goes, hey, fuck the dad, I guess, who's <laughs> standing right, right. there. Like, <laughs> That's right there, they don't give a fuck, they're all saying goodbye to mom, it's like he's invisible, he's not even there. <laughs> and by the way, like, the why dad did you write it like that? the chill character yeah. that we kind of like always just tries to get by even though some weird shit happens with the parents later but yeah um it, it's so weird that the film like just it, it's like isn't it sad that he doesn't call her mom it's like didn't call the dad anything like oh, okay <laughs> yeah at least None she got called at least she, she got acknowledged as existing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's um, a start and and by the way there is an arc to be done between billy and the mum, and we've just had i think i want to say 39 percent of it is now done yep that's it so yeah, not bad. Right. Good start. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> like... subtle arc they're setting up here. It's extremely subtle. You might think that it doesn't exist, but you'd be wrong. It definitely does. And then they do their cool, super awesome, really great walk through the middle of like suburbia and just go Shazam and they all like Shazam up. And I, I remember thinking to myself, like, fuck, if any journalist worth their salt was actually like trying to pay attention to the details, these kids would have been found out ages ago. Not even like mm. remotely difficult. Yeah. I mean, Especially when their journalist has been struck by lightning several times. Mm. Can we talk about that? Well, and how stupid that is. <clears throat> well, what do you want to say about it? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, that apparently, even though they all know how this works, they keep saying Shazam while in the house. Lightning strikes their house and causes damage to the house that they don't even own that they rent. And then, meanwhile, the parents are like, "Yeah, I don't know why, but lightning keeps striking the house." It's like, mm -hmm. guys. Do Just go your outside and do it. Go outside. Oh, no, though, it gets particularly awkward when, like, the older sister looks the same as both the superhero and herself. Like, surely it's over. <laughs> you would think so. Like, how do you know? Oh, yeah. Know there's, that this there is, your, is that. This oh, is yeah. Your that's something that's really she hard to, like, same. accept because you're just like, what? How is anyone having trouble with that? Like, in fact, in the film, I'm pretty sure that Shazam says Mary, obviously. It's like, oh, is it obvious? It's kind of weird that nobody's managed to connect the dots on that one, that you look identical. Oh, sorry. So what you're referring to is when they reveal it, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. He says, he, like, he I'm Billy, and that's object. Freddy, and this, and he goes, that's Mary, obviously. Like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> but not obviously enough for them to notice. The will to notice is kind of yeah. ridiculous, but, you know. Yeah, Especially sorry. if they just start their power just in the neighborhood. Like, someone just needs to look out the window. It's like, did those kids just turn into superheroes? What's going on? It's constant lightning, and then people it's, flying yeah. away from that area. It's like, hmm. Yep. And also I people yelling at Japan very loudly as well. They're just cool. big fans. 
you know kids are you know, like kids are. Just... Shazam, Shazam once and then that's it well, back inside. <laughs> something would have been nice is imagine one of the ki ki kids was just like you know what I don't think I'm gonna go back to being a kid fuck that yes you could do something with that you could have done something is the yes Shazam you could yeah, have done something then you go better go watch another movie it'd be like everyone else turns back and you're just like um I actually like being tall strong fast and uh, <laughs> I would say wise, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> writers Solomon knew they couldn't the do bubble. that, so and then yeah. it's just like, well, no, you got to go back to being a kid. It's like, mm, no, I don't. Do I have to? No, no I I actually I'm actually going to go travel the world. See ya. <laughs> like, this will be yeah. really fun, yeah. actually. So yeah, but never addressing that shit because that would be interesting. Uh, so yeah, the situation is the Franklin Bridge, the the all the suspension cables are actually breaking apart. And all of the, I guess, the, the, the bridge itself, all the concrete is just smashing apart. And there was this big car crash in the middle of the bridge into, I guess, something very important that holds it together. I can't remember which part of it it was. But uh, everyone's looking at it like, oh god, I think I think things are getting better. And it turns oh into goodness. Final Destination 5. Oh, it, it does. does, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, unfortunately, nowhere near as much fun deaths. But that character who was the pediatrician, he was in Final Destination 5. Oh, he's I was the one who got wow. killed by Buddha. Oh, oh shit, right. The acupuncture yeah. one, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone um. should make an edit that combines the two together. <laughs> Why? Yeah, everyone watching this <laughs> later on. They'll be Why edited on post. Uh, because, you know. So then, um, I kind of want to talk about music first, okay? So the scenario is... Everyone's screaming and running away, but there's plenty of dumbasses in the cars who just sit and stare. I'll I'll give it to them that they try to portray the woman as just stunned with shock, I guess. Like, all right, yeah, there's people in the world. Um, but she's got the radio on, and it's playing um, I Need a Hero, famously uh, the song from Shrek 2. Shrek so, 2, yes. So everyone knows yeah. That, okay. um, it plays for, and I, and I counted because I was curious, it plays for 20 seconds. And then we cut it out to go to like pure dread music because her car is just over a crack and it's it's falling into the water below, which will likely kill it. It's like, <gasps> so it's like, dun, 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 dun. and it's just like, yeah, okay. And you know, the first thought I had was like, wow, twenty seconds of I need a hero and it's gone. A bit strange, but okay. And then uh, we cut to about twenty-two seconds of I would say tragic music, like they bring in choir and it, basically the sense that oh, she's dead. It's over. It's all over. And then you hard cut again to the blaring I need a hero as uh, Shazam grabs the <laughs> yeah. car. And I was just like, wow, that felt odd. I guess that's a choice. Like, it's it's hard to say exactly what you're supposed to do with music, but it just distracted the hell out of me. I was like... It's very strange, yeah. It's like they didn't know how to... They wanted the song, they paid for it, and they wanted to get their money's worth out of it, but they didn't quite know how. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, they just tried to get as much as they could in between their own music. Yeah, well, let's compare this to Shrek Two, where they incorporate <laughs> the Shrek theme into "I Need a Hero" and kind of right. um, create their own version from it and make it more thematically relevant. While this one is kind of just shoved it in there with a crowbar and a plunger. Well, you know get what? Get it? They're heroes. I they remember need a hero. that sequence of Shrek Two being hype. Being yeah, very it's it was really cool. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. the sacrifice the giant horse, gingerbread man in. makes. That's right. No! <laughs> <laughs> then he sings at the end. And then, uh, yeah, he does. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, think to think if we have a new Shrek starring Puss in Boots, we'll be like, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's go. fucking go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, then uh, you have uh, Freddy arriving. He says, no need to panic. Captain Every Power is here. And he, uh, and, and I did mention this, but I was going to just. Cars, not familiar enough with them to know. But he grabs two cars <laughs> and pulls them fully up from falling off into a crack just by their bumpers. Seems um, like the bumpers yeah, are probably like, not. Yeah, bumpers yeah. probably yeah. not gonna hold. No. No. Oh, prum, prum, and he's like, or it's oh, just shit. all the white, you know, all of the force right localized into your hand, like yeah. on that point of the car. But it'd be this, it, yeah. It's the same the as in the first movie crumple. when Shazam caught the uh, bus, like on the pane of glass that was shattering with like the front of his hands. Yeah, he was holding up the entire bus by putting on his hands on the glass. cracks. Oh, that was the yeah. windshield. Yeah, that was dumb as right. Fuck, yeah. So same thing here, but whatever. It's a superhero movie. Yeah, whatever. Do you mean just whatever superhero movie we, we see this all the time? 
<laughs> it's, yeah, like it's not even worth fighting about that one. Just, yeah, <laughs> well, no, it's, it, it's just stated as like, yeah, it's one of those ones, guys. Moving on. <laughs> like, yeah. It's one of those ones. Um, so a lot of people, like hundreds of being saved with super speed. In fact, we find out it's 166 because she mentions it. Um, I guess we're not going to bother addressing Whiplash. We're just going to be like, no, no, fuck you. no. That was my no. first thought. It's like, oh, you're all dead. Okay, never mind. It's fine. Yeah, that's what another superhero movie regular thing. It just happens all the time. Yeah. What was the film where somebody actually put their hand on the back of someone's head to do the super speed thing? Because I'm, I, I know what you're thinking past. about. Wait, what did you say? Was There's it Days of Future past. past? Was it that, or was it There's something a else? Whiplash, a gag, um, because it was Quicksilver and Magneto. Okay, yeah, maybe it was. Why yeah. didn't everyone learn from that? <laughs> like, yeah. Even then, you're going to encounter issues when you go to fucking light speed. Oh, sure, but, like, that's at least accounting for it a little bit. But then, the thing is, is with super speed, the big question you'll be asking throughout the whole film is, why don't you guys use that more often? And then, mm -hmm. you'll be like, well, as long as they never use it, maybe we'll put it in the back of our minds. Like, nope, they use it to save the day No, twice. they use it there. Yeah, they use it a lot. It happens a bunch. But then they keep forgetting to use it at moments yeah. where it would be, like, really critical and essential. Day, yeah. And it would save, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, we're we're at the I'm low variable right. shit right now. We're back to things making a little bit more sense in terms of just uh, yeah, low that's variables, dumb, that's dumb. collapsing bridge. That's what I'm saying. Compared to where we're gonna go, yeah, because it's gonna get difficult yeah. for everyone to follow along and chat at that point. Um, so yeah, they're doing all that, and uh, then you have this moment where uh, I think if they, I can't remember if they what, they had like a hierarchy. I think they consider Mary the smart one out of everyone. I guess yeah. that was part of the fact that she got Solomon, the Wisdom of Solomon, when they split to seven in the first movie, but like I said, everyone has everything now, so it doesn't really matter. In any case, mm. um, the other dude, the... Oh, I fucking forget all their names. The one below Mary in this poster, he's um, he's come up with an idea. What if the, the frayed and broken apart uh, suspension cables, what if you melt the, the top and bottom of it where it broke and then smoosh it back so it reconnects? No. Goes about as well as you'd expect. Well, so, so the first thing I thought was see it is like, well, if you don't freeze it, which you guys don't have freeze breath or anything, then it's just gonna pour apart. You know when you like melt two things and then put them together, you can pull them apart real easy because it's still melty. That's just Well, it's like it yeah. and, and plus all of the the cables are breaking. You can't connect just one back up and expect it will hold the bridge. That's what I mean. Like it, it it has to hold up the weight of a bridge, and it has to do more than it normally did because there's so many other cables that are broken. And that's and the thing. Weaker. You have, uh, it won't work in principle, and then the whole problem the bridge is currently having is that they're all snapping anyway, meaning reconnecting one is fucking not going to do anything. You have Ooh. all that put together, and then he notices, like, some other things are happening, some other people in trouble, and just flies off, and the camera remains on the cable he just sealed, and it just breaks. It's like, yep. Okay? It's like, what if... <laughs> I, I thought that's going to be addressed in some degree. It's like, oh man, we're actually not doing so good. Like, I actually had no idea what to do. It's like, no, it just breaks and then it's never talked about again. They saved them all, I guess. It's like, some people okay. saying you can't weld cables together like that. It's like, I don't even, like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the fuck's going on in this scene. No. Um, yeah, and then the whole bridge begins to fall, but he grabs one broken cable on the bottom and lifts it all the way back up to where it's supposed to be. It doesn't seal them, he just holds it there, and apparently that keeps the entire bridge up. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> like, the bridge is about to, like, fall into the water, but he holds up one cable. It's like, okay, good. Why isn't it breaking at any other point? It's like, shut up. <laughs> shut shut up. About it. Um, and, and they do a very funny meme. Uh, Shazam is like, we have to keep this bridge from collapsing. Hard cut to news report. The Ben Franklin Bridge has collapsed. First draft. <laughs> First draft joke. Uh... We need to do this. Oh, we didn't. Hard cut. Uh-huh. What's weird is, uh, Freddy's talking to them about how he's not a huge fan of the Philadelphia fiascos, is the name they've been given right now. And um, as he's talking, it cuts to the dad watching on TV, and he's like, have you ever noticed... And he stops, and he goes, I need to check on the kids. And the kids walk in, and they're just like, hey, dad, or whatever, and it's like, what did he notice? Tell me. You never find out. I'm guessing <laughs> it's, it's a good question now. Whenever the Philadelphia fiascos are on the news, that's just right after the kids all have to leave for some reason. What's the thing? Or if you whatever, had that going for two years, you would have been able to... 
The parents should have found out by now. The kids are terrible at keeping this shit a secret. Anyway. Yeah, they should. Well, they were, they were bad at keeping it a secret in the first film. There's several instances where you just have Freddy talking to Shazam, like, out in the open, yeah. with people visibly recording it on their phones. Have yeah, you ever asked and, about um... That? No, no, they don't. No. I, I feel like the film doesn't even remember that that was the case. Bell even remembered that that was the case in the first film. They remember he met Superman, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. What do the parents think about that? That, like, he actually met Superman at school. Wow, you met that psychopath who genocided nice his own people? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> did, you, did you bump Glad into him after you a walk past the Batman toys? <laughs> Batman, the guy who branded people who got executed in prison because he branded them and also kills a bunch of people. I don't think I approve of this role model, dear. He's <laughs> kind of insane. Yeah. He dresses up like a bat. <laughs> I had, to, I had to step away briefly. Did we talk about how inappropriate their behavior during the bridge scene is? Well, those really happy how... and chill and goofy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that people are afraid for their lives and they're um, like cracking jokes and doing. Oh my god! Of course, she kidnaps kittens. So the thing is, it's so funny because yeah. this is just in line with all the other shitty superhero movies where I would normally complain. But the thing this film gets as a shield every once in a while is the fact that they're children, or at least yes. some of them are children. Well, that's what I told myself, and in hindsight, I gave the movie entirely too much credit. I thought that maybe this is something that we, you know, set up at the beginning, is that they're not actually very uh, mature about this, and then maybe they'd have to learn to be later, but they don't. Yeah, well, no, you're right. This film um, struggles more, though, because they're all older. Like, Mary's an adult, Billy's mm -hmm. 17, so they're not, like, that young. Mm -hmm. And Freddy's probably, like, si I think Freddy is, like, 16 or something. They're not that young. Or at least, uh, oh, has sorry, the actually, most excused. Uh, I think uh, Billy is like very close to 18 and Freddy's a month younger than him, right? So, he, yeah, exactly. So, and then Mary's like a half few years older than both of them, very so. dearly. Yeah, got three you on the team. And this is the thing Billy Shazam, he comes across like a fucking eight year old sometimes, mm -hmm. yet when he's not, when he's just Billy, he's actually surprisingly mature, actually. Like, he's, he's pretty pretty on top of it and, like, wants to resolve problems and sort of grapple with the things that he needs to deal with. I mean, it was pretty well exemplified by that shot, like, in the trailer where it's, like, after the scene that's meant to be, like, a really heartfelt scene later in the film. And then when he turns back into, sh like, Shazam, it's Zachary Levi doing, like, a stupid face. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get why they're so different. Yeah. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon going to the wrong body. I you, Fringy. That kind of power, it changes a boy. Mm. So, uh, you find out they have a lair uh, in the form of the, the, the Rock of Eternity, which they do mention in the first film is going to happen. And it's got like loads of decorations and, and bullshit all over the walls and stuff they've done over the two years, which to me, I was just like, yeah. They've uh, even like yeah. put silly clothes on all the seven deadly sins, which amazing to see that they were there considering the, the sort of stakes of them from the first film. Are completely mm. forgotten in this one. Uh, if you remember yep. right, you need the strength of like the wizard to keep them uh, sealed, and then the wizard is gone, and so it's just Shazam, and then uh, he, the, that guy, like broke them out somehow. I can't remember how he did it in the first film. Was it with the staff? Um, um, it was with the eye, wasn't it? He, yeah, he uses the 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 eye power. He comes back and gets the eye power. And, and, that that yeah. and that breaks them out. Yeah, that breaks them out. Yeah, he probably should have that behind like yeah. glass or something. Somebody in chat has pointed out how do they have cable in the Rock of Eternity? That's a good point. So apparently they were they have the know how to like rig up cable television in this different realm yeah, or something connected through. <laughs> no, there's, there's, yeah, a yeah, very, yeah. there's a very very long extension cord leading out one of the doors, and they've hooked it up illegally to some poor man's setup, and that's how they're <laughs> doing it. And Someone well, somewhere actually, in the world is just having their cable drop out every five minutes because of this tampering. I don't know about the cable, but they actually have a shot where they show that there's like a gas generator, which first of all, those things are incredibly show, loud, yeah. and it's just kind of like spewing, you know, the fumes stank it that. all up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they they at least thought oh, maybe we should try to explain the electricity. Then that's what this explain, film needs like, as an explanation. Film. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it the, is interdimensional uh, cable. That sphere that released the seven sins. Then is that there in the place, or is it gone? What's the dealio with that? I uh, assume we moved past right? that. Yeah, it's just well, crazy to the, me that if anyone was to grab it, exist, right? yeah. they get the power of the seven deadly sins, and then they can I don't know do things. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was a thing. It's also a probably a little bit. It's a little bit weird that you would be so chill and casual with like the stone figures of the things that nearly killed you. Like, might be interesting if one of them actually had a little bit of a trauma relating to that whole incident. Or if any one of them had any trauma at all relating to the crazy perilous stuff that they've got going on. Mm -hmm. But nah, they're all no. like incredibly chill about this dangerous life that they're leading. So, uh, you see on the TV, Philly fiasco destroy bridge. Mm-hmm. How? Why on earth do they think they destroyed it? I don't know. It was clearly <laughs> being destroyed before. There were newscasts and everything. That's how they learned about it. There were it. reports. Yes, well, exactly. If, if they saved 166 people, could you imagine the public outcry? Like, what the fuck? They did not destroy the bridge. They saved everyone's yeah, lives. Yeah, the bridge was already yeah. destroyed anyway. Yeah. All the people would come out, yeah, they saved me from the thing. They didn't destroy the bridge. What, what, that, they were there because the bridge was breaking. I, what are you doing? I hate to go this the direction, state of but journalism is that not in just, this city? It's not just slander at that point, like, blaming that on a news yeah. report? I think Pretty it much? is. Yes. Actually. Probably. And if it's in print, it's libel. Especially because I'm sure the bridge... The, do we get any other explanation for why the bridge collapses other than it just is a shit It just bridge, looks like there was some kind of car accident and broke something so badly. Way, those things do not go down as easily or as commonly as no. that at all. <laughs> they, uh... It just looks like yeah. something crashed into it a little, a, a little bit or a little hard, whatever. And it's just like, yeah, this is going to break everything. So. Oh. Pretty big ask movie to get me to yeah. think that this one car crash, which doesn't even look that really that bad, yeah, was able yeah. to take down the whole I think bridge. A lot of films seem to think that like it's like a paper mache or something that like this massive suspension bridge is like yeah, yeah I mean, it's just, just one ready to thing away from, like, ready collapse. to go at a moment. It's not like bridges are actually incredibly sturdy. Yeah, you'd have to remove a a lot of these cables for it to actually collapsed away well, i mean these sure. sorts of things are designed with like tons of redundancies oh you, yeah, you have to <laughs> imagine they wouldn't but whatever it's for our action set piece look the bridge and then haha -ha, funny joke they're pretty irresponsible or something i guess yeah sure whatever. Well, irresponsible how they saved all these people he says like when seeing it he goes we saved countless lives and then she goes 162 it's countable I was like, I just shut still, up. That's yeah, this that's is just like people who are alive now, thanks to you, yeah. who may yeah, not have been. This is just something that a cat you. says. Exactly. Like, I was yeah. going to say, yeah. like, yeah. he's oh, reacting right. to being told they destroyed the bridge. That's the important part. But she's just like, um, actually, it is countable. It's like, actually, what? it is, of course it is fucking very, countable. It is very much an um, actually sort of statement. Like, how yeah. about, how actually, about we don't do it? Maybe it isn't countable. Maybe he's referring to all the future lives that have been saved because all of those 162 people are now alive. Huh? How about yeah, that? That's right. And yeah, the impact like that. And the immeasurable impact that their loss would have meant to their families or whatever. Yeah, checkmate. Yeah. Why don't you read that in your book? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at me, yeah. I can read. What was she reading? Whatever. Was she reading, like, a chemistry book? Organic chemistry is what she said. Ah, uh, see, she's smart. She's reading the chemistry book. <laughs> Well, the reason yeah. they haven't read that is that she is going to reveal soon that she wants to go to college, right? She can mm. count. Which is interesting yeah. because we do nothing in terms of, like, figuring out what Billy wants to do with his life as an adult, which is fast approaching. I think that the point is that he doesn't have any plans. Like, that he needs to. It's, it's almost like he hasn't even thought at all. Like, there's no ideas that, to entertain at all. Which seems odd because, I mean, he does go to school, right? And he does, like, study and have classes uh, he attends. Theoretically. But, like... His schooling is just irrelevant to him. It was irrelevant in the first film, but it's it's even more so here. So, uh, you got, where's Eugene? And he says, where he always is, mapping doors. But turns out, Eugene has been going through each of the mystery doors in the mystery door room to just mark what they are and where they go. And I was just thinking to myself, like, there's got to be insane worlds in there with all kinds of crazy atmospheres and mm -hmm. just, uh, rules, realities, all kinds of different things. I was just like, is it safe for this little kid to just be going in and out of them? And probably when, not. Uh, when Shazam comes in there, he gets blown out of one of them and he says, don't go in that one, it's actual nightmare fuel. And it's like... What, what would have happened there, if he went in oh, there and then okay. didn't come out, though? Yeah. Like, what does that look like? And it's oh, like, hey, it's where's over. that guy? <laughs> Should probably go yeah, in yeah. twos or something. Or, you know, yeah. don't close the door or, and have, like, know, some like kind of contingency of... installed that you can some amount of supervision drag back that... out. The older ones should accompany the younger ones if they're, like, planning on going on some, like, adventure. 
Yeah, this is like one of those things you don't do alone. Yeah. The door is kind of weird how, uh, how irresponsible they are. Oh, anyway, it cuts to uh, Shazam. The reason he wanted to know is he's trying to collect them all up because he's like, all right, big day, big bridge. <laughs> Mary, pay attention, please. It's just like, uh, Shazam as a character played by Zachary Levi just annoys me, I guess. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it, 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 I just can't, it doesn't, I never believe it. It always comes across as he's, uh, he's like trying to entertain children sort of thing. Mm hmm. So she says, organic chem is my meditation. And he said, said nobody with friends. She says, I'd have friends if I went to college. Okay. Like, they don't have right. friends other, in <laughs> you other places. You can't make friends otherwise. You can't make friends anywhere else. Um, we all went to college together, by the way, chat. Uh, and then, okay. Uh, I think Eugene says, <laughs> "Top crowd." I see. <laughs> I I just like that you say that you can't make friends anywhere else. As a Tinder spam bot shows up in the chat, <laughs> he can I'll be, be friends friend. with you. <laughs> Play the bot. Uh, yeah, so Yuji just says, I gotta test this slime for toxicity. I'm starting to tingle. So when he came out of the Nightmare Fuel place, he just got covered in slime and decided to just sit down and talk with everybody instead of, you know, having a shower or anything. Kind of weird. Yeah, because that's yeah. what we would do. That, that, that's Unwise. what people would do. So that's a, yeah, that's weird. And then um, Pedro says, oh, uh, Philly's game uh, just came on, so I'm gonna go uh, watch baseball. I'm gonna go ogle the shortstop, if you know what I mean. I mean, the... That's what I don't get about that line. I was like, does he actually like baseball? Or does he use baseball as his excuse to go do gay things? <laughs> <laughs> Which, what does that even mean? I'm going to go do gay things. And then, because um, I forget the names of these characters, the, the youngest one, little girl, she says, um, I should probably return this kitten. Yeah, you should. Maybe yeah, you should probably should. Pet. So that's cool. Catnapping's bad. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I can somebody's cat. Yeah, like she just took geez. the cat. It's kittens, no less. Yeah, he just took. What the you cat. figure because there's like three of them that they wouldn't miss one of them. <laughs> just yeah, it's just uh, what do you what else can you say about it? It's just like man, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, anyway. but isn't it really funny though? Yeah, see, gotcha, checkmate. So then we get a really weird conversation, just like the rest of this movie, where people don't talk to each other properly. He's like, um, "Oh, here we go." He's only got Mary left, and he says, oh, "If you have, if you say you have to work," and she says, "I have to work," and he goes, "What you? Why do you even have a job? Wonder Woman doesn't have a job." Uh, she she does. She's like, like an I mean, archaeologist, right? Well, I an guess he doesn't know that, but he, like, I mean, he doesn't she know does that. And assumes that she doesn't, and it's just like that's strange, but okay. I mean, but. Also, it's not a very meaningful thing to say, like, one no. woman is a god, like, this is just a person, you know? She has a real last life, she's not, because yeah. Wonder Woman is Wonder Woman, so you can at least say that that is her primary identity. This lady know, had a whole life before she became well, a Shazam right? person. Wonder Woman is basically immortal, she lives for, like, thousands of years, mm -hmm. whereas it's not the case for her. But then you get some, because Freddy earlier said he wanted to go fly solo for a bit, right? And so then you have this line. Uh, Mary says, just stop, uh, Billy. You're holding on too tight. Just because Freddy wants to go fly solo for 10 minutes doesn't mean he's going to leave now, you Mala, like... But now, Mala, your Discord's cutting out there. No, it wasn't me. Your Discord's Hello? cutting out, Rags. Yeah. Oh, see. there we go again. Bye, Rags. It was nice knowing you. Hello? <laughs> is he going to talk over us this whole time? <laughs> yes, <laughs> he is. This, this, is, this has happened many times. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you don't wait for him to go, boo-doo. I'm assuming it'll happen at some point, right? Hello, okay, is this like I've been working? yeeted into another dimension? <laughs> We're all talking, Rex. Oh, there you oh, go. There there <laughs> He'll be back. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, hey, what? Whoa, whoa, okay. How are we doing, Ragsy? There. Hello. All right, Singapore. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Singapore oh. is a oh. new tropical oh. area oh. as part of the new DLC. <laughs> All I heard was Singapore as part of the new DLC, which good. That's what Mario I heard. Too. Kart 8, <laughs> yeah, Mario Kart 8 has the new DLC, and it's got uh, like Singapore as one of the courses because they got uh, the uh, tour maps. Like Mario Kart Tour is where they're in real like world cities, so they've got like Berlin, Sydney, all sorts. But they've also added a new 
one called Yoshi's Island. It's a new, totally original new map for Mario Kart 8, and it's really cool. It's very quaint. This has been a very good pass. This, Rags, uh, you there yet? Four. <laughs> I am yeah. here. Yeah, are you, yeah. Right. Are you back? Okay, cool. Uh, am, well, anyways, yeah. uh, getting off of the really fun and awesome Mario Kart 8, back to the really terrible Shazam movie. Yes, you were talking so about the conversation between yeah. the, about the job thing, and her response is stop. Like basically, that he feels a little bit too controlling, which is one thing you could say. But instead, they have her say, "You're holding on too tight." Just because Freddy wants to fly solo for ten minutes doesn't mean he's going to leave you like your mum did. Thanks for explaining Jesus one Christ, of the uh, yeah. themes oh, of the gets film. Better. I legit Mary, was like, you. what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like, well, damn. it just comes out of nowhere, but it's like, oh, that's that's about 25-30% of what you're going to get for that as like a theme in this film. Just that one like line of dialogue. Phrased like, rather harshly, I would he's, say. He's fucked up. He's basically like, yeah. if anything, his big fault right now is he wants to spend loads of time with you. Fuck him, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. not what a very piece of shit. nice thing to say. Her response, dialogue, you're insecure you because your mom left you. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> the movie yeah. tries to make it a thing that he's controlling, but you don't really get that vibe. You seem like he's like, oh, come on, guys, let's all, you know, work together. He just wants to hang out yeah. with him, but they don't want her. No. Um, so, yeah. I just, he is kind of annoying. Beyond surprising, it's, but, yeah, you know, none of the characters actually accept that line for what it is. We instead just keep moving. And, um... He says, all that me going to college means I'm abandoning the family. And he goes, oh, college again. And she says, you turn 18 in five months. So that's how old he is then. Um, mm -hmm. And there you go. says, they're not going to kick me out. They didn't kick you out. And she says, Victor and Rosa are saints because you're about to age out of the foster system just like I did. And, you know, I'm still there. And he's like, yeah, I know it works. And she goes, do you? Victor and Rosa can only barely pay rent. And the state no longer sends checks to feed or house me, and soon they won't for you. And I was just thinking to myself, like, holy fuck. Victor and Rosa are, like, taking care of all these kids, and they don't get support from the government once they hit a certain age. And she, he's got, like, the testicles right now at age 17 to be like, you don't need a job. Like, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you, you, you really I, do. I'm pretty sure that Billy is, is uh, smart enough to understand the notion of, like, th that you need income to pay bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, those two no, apparently paid for everything. And uh, what we find out as well is that they buy the house later on in this ep episode. That's how I see this shit. Full episodes of this <laughs> giant <laughs> <Yes>. show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, you know, that, that's a reality. She's trying to explain why she has a job. And then she says, I don't care if Wonder Woman has a job. I want to contribute. Everyone on Earth, we have to get a job or leave home. Nothing lasts forever. And I remember thinking about, like, I wonder if the film agrees or disagrees with that sentiment. I'm not even sure. Yeah, yeah is this going to play question. into, like, a theme later on about something? Or it's is actually, it not? I kind of liked his saying, I want to contribute regardless. I was like, that's good. Yeah. 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 It'd be nice that's if you nice. weren't so mean to... Yeah. <laughs> the, whole <part> is <laughs> yeah. the problem is, I don't like, even think she realized... An orphan. The writer didn't realize that was me. The writer was probably just like, yeah, that that's was normal. You're insecure about your mom. Right. Rip. Like, oh. You were insecure about the mom who yeah, abandoned projection. you. Yeah, no. abandoned you when you were like five years old. Yeah, you were insecure about <laughs> Just that. Just get over loser. it, you little shit. Yeah, well, it gives painted it, the entire... It... Oh, sorry? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, well, it, it painted the entire scene for me because as soon as she said like, oh, she's not gonna, he's not going to abandon you like your mom, and then she starts talking about how Oh well, you, you know uh, they can barely pay rent, and you know you're about to turn eighteen. It, it was coming. I just remember in that scene, it was coming off like, are you trying to like, so, are you trying to like, um, stoke the psychological flames that you clearly already see are there? Are you, just, are you, are you a you secret trying... demon? <laughs> yeah, are you trying to give him a panic attack right now? Are you trying to? I, I don't know. It was it read as like. I, I I can see every insecurity you have, and I'm going to play directly into them. And I think it is because of that initial mum line. It was it was uh, it left a bad taste. It really yeah. did. It's just, it makes you feel clumsy. like they like she doesn't doesn't actually like Billy like at all. It's like you're just being yeah. annoying this whole time. We don't actually I don't want you around. Basically, you lazy shit. Well, and if he Five was more, months, more baby. If he was more of an actual adult, or even close to the age he's supposed to be, he would have fucking caught on and been like, hey, like, back off. Like, what the hell was that? But no, he's like, huh? yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Wonder Woman doesn't have a job, Lamau. It's like, oh, God. It just comes across like the writer was worried you'd forget that that's sort of part of his character, so he had to make it explicit when that should just be the subtext. Yeah. yeah. She could have just left it at, like, he's just because he wants to fly solo doesn't mean he's going to abandon you, period. That could have been it, and we would have, you know, inferred the rest, but I think the writer was worried we forgot. <laughs> Even though they brought it up earlier in this movie, didn't they? In the in the yep, they did. The dietrist office little... or whatever it was. Yep, pediatrician, whatever. Yeah, he's saying nothing lasts forever. That's going to come up a few times here and there as well. And he says it's called the Rock of Eternity, so some things last forever. Oh, good one. <laughs> da, 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 da. I, I eternity. I know what that word means. So. This is the part of the movie that I think everyone is like, what? Especially if you haven't seen like the trailers where he, he pops in it, but you hear someone in a prison cell where the uh, Helen Mirren and the other... Uh, well, there's only the two of them right now, actually. My, it was my photo of them. Continuity, so you understand what the fuck's happening. Back yeah, to their plot line. Follow this. They walk up to a prison cell, there's someone in there who says, just leave me to die, and she says, we come bearing gifts. And he gets up, and it's the wizard from the first movie. It's the wizard. Oh my god, how are you here? You how might are, have how thought, are you alive? You might have thought he disintegrated, but have I got news for you. Why we learned all that? about this from a certain Star Wars movie, okay? The disintegration <laughs> don't mean shit. No one's ever really gone. He is not Somehow dead. the wizard lives. And uh, I may as well skip to it now, because it's just so funny. He, uh, one of the characters at one point in this film is like, wait, Aren't you supposed to be dead? Like, I, I think everyone thought you were dead. He goes, no, I just went to a different realm. Oh, that's how disintegration right. works. Okay. And, uh, yeah, well, didn't that, explain that's that just, at all that's to That's not anyone. a big deal at all. Yeah, because you could just go from realm to realm. So It's not even a somehow that, he returned. They have retconned it so that he didn't die at all. He just teleported, but in a way that turned him to ash. Yeah, <laughs> like... apparently when he disintegrated, it's like, oh, I just disintegrated in, like, that realm, but I'm here in this... <laughs> Prison, I just like I the guess. thing that he sees is like that's how I travel. I just go to ash, and <laughs> <laughs> it just looks really yeah. scary to yeah. everyone. Else. <laughs> totally fine. Don't worry about it. It's like oh, okay, and he's like this realm was sealed off from magic, and then Hel Mirren, like, oh, I don't know, man. I think it's the dialogue. It could be the performance. I don't know, but she says yes. After you ripped it from our father's very core, from every god in the realm, from me. Do you not remember what you took from me? What my particular power was? The power <laughs> of elements! I was just like, oh god, oh, kill me, just kill like, me. I can't take this. Oh, <laughs> is this... oh, why would you write it okay, like that? Movie. Okay, movie. Hey, this is what we're doing. All right. Leave me alone. Why are you doing this to me? Why can't you just be normal? A normal god. Why can't normal you be god. a normal god, not a cringe god? And does he make sense like, was of cringe? Why, do I, why don't I remind you what you did to me so that people know what you did to me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. How will they know unless I tell you now? Here oh. are my power. It is the most exposition discussion ever. They don't sound at all like they're saying things they're actually interested in. The wizard responds to all of that bullshit with, No, I cast a barrier. To, to prevent your kind from getting to the human realm. The only way that would be possible is if, and then Lucy Lou goes, someone broke this, and she holds a fucking stack. It's like, dun, stop! Dun, dun. Why did you write this so bad? It's like she was excited to finally drop this on him. It's like, oh, he's going to ask he's any moment now. Yeah, he's, he's about to ask, ask any about moment. it. Here I go, here's my moment. And, uh, he's like, oh, I got it. Are you? He's like, how? Oh, where is the champion? And then, <laughs> and then you just think like why did you tell shazam that, that staff yeah. is incredibly important to the point where the whole of earth will be no destroyed if it breaks. should you break it yeah. yeah man i'm sure glad we don't have any other of these items lying around that we don't know about oh lucky sure there's only the one in shazam three no 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 <laughs> that's not gonna happen uh, uh, wrath of the titans mm -hmm. or whatever it's just no way it, it, there was no way anyway like how much money do you think this film would have to make for them to make a third one do, 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 not kind of look too much budget. for them to get. I was thinking, like, would oh, have to no. would a billion even be enough? Because of the DC James Gunn stuff, he'd be like, eh, it's good, it's really good, but no, we're moving on. If it made two billion, he'd be like, okay, yeah, we gotta make another one. Like, that, that wait, yes. Yeah. 
So, so is the is the metric mm. that it has to make two point five times its production budget to break even? Well, um, I'm I'm the... not interested in that. I'm just thinking, how much do you think it would have to make for people like James Gunn and the others in charge to think, yes, we'll make a third one? A shit tillion dollars. It would be a lot. Yeah, it would have to be a whole bunch, and even then, a billion is just that's already pushing it. I think if it was a billion, they'd be like, well, we'll use the benefits of that to generate our new stories. I, I don't think a billion would be enough for them to be like, oh yes. The IP of Shazam on its own is enough to continue, you know? I don't know, maybe. Wait, what? So, uh, Free, here's a question. question. How much do you think this movie would have to make for James Gunn et al. to conclude that we should make a Shazam 3? Oh, uh, um... The problem is that I don't know that there's, like... I almost wonder if there's no real amount of money that a film could make that's even remotely reasonable that would sort of offset the amount of damage that seems to just sort of uh, pervade, like, the DC brand. Because this is going to be, like, the fourth one in a row that has not, like, done very well at the box office. Birds of Prey didn't do very well. The Suicide yeah. Squad didn't do very well, but that was simultaneous release. Um, Wonder Woman 1984 was not received very well at all. That That film is just broadly considered a clown movie, and of course this one's not doing very well either. And I imagine even looking forward, I don't know how much money Flash makes. I don't even know if, like, the Flash making a billion dollars would be enough for them to go, oh, let's, uh, let's scrap our plans and then, you know, keep making these things. I'm not sure. Maybe if it made, like, a billion dollars. I don't think a billion um, would be enough, but I think two billion would be, so I'm not sure where the line would be. Two billion would probably be enough. Because if it was two yeah. billion, it would be one of the highest grossing films, like, of all time. Yeah, and then they'd be like, holy but, shit, people like Shazam. <laughs> I guess they'll keep him. Course, yeah. we, live in, we, live in, we live in the real world rather than make-believe fantasy land, and this film might not even make, like, $200 million. I can't. That'd um, be so fucking funny well, if it doesn't, though. It would be. Well, I mean, it's the same as uh, if, you know, Ant-Man doesn't crack $500 million, which it looks like it won't. Um, and then, again, looking forward at the rest of the year, how well does The Flash do? You see, you hear the thing that Tom Cruise apparently asked to watch and loved it? <laughs> What, yes. a, what a weird headline to read. Tom Cruise specifically <laughs> wanted to see The Flash, watched it, liked it. Oh, uh, well, no. Like what, the, that was a real tweet? I thought it was a meme tweet that no, I saw. No, no, no. I think that no, was from The Hollywood real. Reporter that uh, he asked to see it, and he loved it so much he called up the director to basically say that he loved it. But why? I need to know what are the superhero movies Tom Cruise likes. To know <laughs> what we're dealing with, you know? Imagine he said, <laughs> yeah. like, the only other one I like is uh, Harley Quinn's Birds of Prey. You're like... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, he's he's standing by the mummy and stuff like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Nah, that's, that, that shit was gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't I don't know how much money it would it would need to make a hell of a lot more than it's going to. Yes. But yeah. Apparently, the only person that can repair the two pieces of the staff are the wizard. He has to hold the two parts and shout Shazam. So they get him to do that with telekinesis and the the mind chaos thing. Like dun dun dun. Um, but before they leave, he grabs a hold of the staff so hard, like, digs his nail into it so that he gets, oh! a, pretty, gets a pretty hard splinter. Oh, oh. You okay? Yep, I just uh, remember what happens with that splinter. It, it, uh, goes somewhere I don't like. No, it's not somewhere a great place to have I... a splinter. No. It's ouchy. Uh, it's a relatable ouchy. <laughs> yeah. So you may be thinking, well, what's he gonna be able to do with that? They're just gonna kill him now, right? They've got him, they've got everything they need out of him. No. They don't kill him. And so it's on you as the audience member at that point, I would say, to try and think and infer why they might not kill him. And I think some people might say, well, they might need him in future for anything that happens with the staff, or maybe they want to ask him questions about stuff in future. Or You know, it's just one of those prisoners maybe you hang on to, especially because he can't do anything from within that cell. And it's like, maybe, mm -hmm. but then that gets thrown out the window because the next interaction they have with him is they're going to kill him. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, I guess nothing. that mind control isn't permanent. No, that's a good point. No, I feel like it's it not. Just be permanent. It wears <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah because I guess it's a different kind of thing. But why wouldn't you just yeah. get full control over him? Yeah, that's a great point. Why? Well, he's a wizard, so he can. Uh, yeah, that's the only no. thing that, like, you know. So do you agree with he's... him because he's a wizard? <clears throat> yeah, like, I guess he's a little bit. He's got some stronger brain than the average guy, I guess. Yeah, his brain's well, about as you're... strong as Freddy's. So temporary on Freddy unless... as well. <laughs> that made you were faster with the joke. Oh, you're right. It is only temporary <laughs> on Freddy. I think it's just a different power, been... and she's just an idiot. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, yeah. Like... yeah. That seems the most likely. She doesn't answer. have a mastery of her powers that much. Ah. 
So um, then we have awkward high school scene where uh, Freddy bumps into random girl and they have very awkward and stilted banter to try and generate like a relationship super fast because again we've already done like a third of their whole interactions. Go go go. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the bullies turn up and they're like, "Hey, new girl, if you need anything, we're oh, your guys." Cool. Like, uh, they what would you say they're doing in that moment, guys? Generally speaking, assault. Okay. <laughs> no, not not, not, wait, not wait, to Billy. Like, to yeah, or... this is a, this is actually leading somewhere. Wait, what do you think they're doing in relation to the girl? They're just trying to like I don't know, sh schmooze her up a bit. I yeah. would say they kind of yeah, I guess to, do it. They'd be in a bit horny. Yeah, they're like, hey, hey, yeah, you know, we, we cool, hot new girl. We we we're the guys. You probably simping. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. This is Who later described. Compels them. This is later described as they were planning to like beat her up. Wait, what? what? So to make Wait, sense of this, happen? this is when yeah, they please. talk to her again and she says, you know, Freddy, you're like a hero. You stopped them. You you, you knew that what they were going to do to me and you still like stood up for me. I thought she so, said you, that they uh, that uh, he knew what they were going to do to him for saying that and he still did it. She, I could have sworn, uh, maybe, maybe I misheard it, but the... I think I'm pretty sure that she was basically saying you knew that by making fun of them that they were going to like beat you up, but you still did anyway. Well, so part of what she mentions is like he was protective of her, but yeah, I don't think that makes any sense. Right. No. I, mean, no I, I, don't think, I, I still don't think it's like working, but I'm pretty sure that's what she said. Well, my point is just that so he wasn't protecting her from shit. Like he was just yes, exactly. in, that, in that scene, he's just being yeah. an asshole to them because to be fair, they're asshole yes. to him. Well, of course they are jerks, but yeah, she doesn't know. They that are yet. jerks, well, but they hadn't actually know, but... done anything yet, and he decides. So they just say, "Hey, how's it going, new girl? Uh, we're yeah, maybe, here, and we're your guys." Maybe no. to help and you then understand what decides... Morgana is, she she says yeah. she was going to kill them. Oh, uh, later on she does. Yeah, which no, is no, insane. Then. What? That is true. Wait, doesn't she? She that. says it way. No, she says it later in the film. No, she says it in that same scene that she was going to kill him and that Freddy protected her or whatever, so she didn't need to. Like basically, I... she said, "Just give me a sec." She says, um, "You did all that, but you didn't need to because I was going to rearrange their organs anyway." Uh, that was later in the film. I that thought that was later that... in the film. Yeah. No, that's that's once they it's past and the dragon part. What? Same scene. I where, where do you think pretty, this happened? I... The scene when they're talking on the rooftop or something? No, uh, no, 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 no. This is after the dragon. The dragon. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got because you. Because the whole idea is like, he's like, oh, you saved us. And she's like, you saved me from... Yeah, that was it. I was right. She said, you saved me from bullies. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the conversation that they had right after I... he had confronted the bullies. No, I literally like said it's way later in the film when she's talking about the cont okay. contextualizing what happened with the bullies. And she did say... Uh, you're the one that protected me from the bullies, which yes, is like not even the reason why I'm true. getting it confused is because the line you said was the <laughs> one that they'd had at the school, where she said you knew that they were gonna like you know beat you up and you did it anyway. That was at the school. This yeah, is why I'm I, confused. I, I heard the same thing, so I got confused as well. Yeah, I was fair. this whole time. I was the talking point about I'm the getting at is that scene, this is mutual. This. The okay. problem is that you said that line from that scene, which is where I got confused. What I'm trying um, to highlight is this well, what is What I'm trying to highlight confusion. is that she was criticizing him for being too protective of people who were going to beat her up with what was going to happen. That's my whole point. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. But still, mutual confusion here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you you were partially responsible for this. Well, but I was right. She does contextualize it as they were going to bully her. No, I know that she... I know... Okay, sure. I wasn't and talking about any scene, specific lines, point. just the, the, the notion I, that they you, were going to hurt you. did you literally you. read out the very specific line and then No, I didn't read any, I, I don't have was... any of these written down. That's why I was guessing. Uh, oh, I, okay. All I know, that's why I just got uh, remembered, is the reason that the bullying line comes up is because she says, I protected you from bullies in this realm, you protected me from bullies in your realm. Which doesn't make any sense, they weren't bullying her. No, I know they weren't bullying her. I agree yeah, with that. Isn't but still, I'm, fudged references, I'm, confusion all bullying. around. It's cool. Oh my goodness. Moving on. No, no, same scene. So my, my big criticism okay, of that sure. is that uh, she planned to rearrange their organs, which will kill you, I would imagine. There's not going to be much ways you can do that, which would still save your life. She's going to fuck them really hard. Um, yeah. 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 All because they said, if you need anything, we're here. Here. You fuckers, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, now, you might you be like, yeah, back. but they're mean bullies. They've beaten him up before. It's like, I don't fucking know that that means they should be executed. 
Yeah. Well, it's they, pretty. Um, no. We might be jumping the gun, but I do not like how much this film tries to bail this character out for like moral culpability for a lot of the things that she does. It reminds me of uh, what's her name from Black Widow? Helena. 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 Yeah, Helena. Oh, the the mum, right? Yeah, she just nobody yeah. ever addresses the thing, the big elephant in the room. How much of a horrible person you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll move on. Yeah. And it's kind of weird as well, because later in the film, she's like, oh no, bad things happening to people. It's like, apparently you would totally chill with doing that to kids. Like, <laughs> like I don't understand. Yelena is the new Black Widow. I'm talking about the mum. Whatever her name was. I forget what her name was. Yeah. Someone in chat <laughs> uh, I know. Eventually. <laughs> the movie one. does not, does not do remember a Black Widow. Jane or something. I don't know. For some reason, I was going with Hel Mel 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 Melina? Melina. Melina, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember now, because it's like Mortal Kombat. That's what, what I kept thinking when I was editing. Oh, there you go. Okay. Well, you think of a horrible, monstrous creature? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's actually what, really what you, suitable. Hey, what, what you, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I was mixing up with Katana. But never mind. Well, that makes sense, because she's a botched clone of Katana, right? When alone, yeah. Uh, with, with Tarkatan DNA. See, I know my Mortal Kombat slightly. Mortal Kombat 2, hopefully without the OC, Johnny Cage, main character, and bringing back Kano. Yeah, and I would even so go as far as just, just having back, and they're like, when are you dead? And he's just like, shut up. And then they just Well, no, they, on. they gave him the laser eye, all right? That's the excuse to give him the actual prosthetic laser eye. Yeah. And then yes, bring in, oh, wait, it. Cabal's dead. They killed him. Damn. That, um, yeah, that was such a bad Death means nothing too. in Mortal Kombat bringing... <laughs> They alluded not... to this idea that they could, like, return or something? Well, they did with, uh, because Bihan, original Sub-Zero, they'll probably bring him back as noob Cybot, and then put in, uh, like, sort of mainline, regular, long-standing, uh, Sub-Zero. That was, like, the best part of the movie, was Scorpion versus Sub-Zero, and then they had to put their OC character into the fight as well. Yep. Nobody wanted him there. I just wanted to see Scorpion and Sub-Zero fight. But, and, yeah. Did you I hear like, the... a list of oh, the generic the Action Man characters? Because there's so many of them. Yeah, there are a lot of them. Unfortunately, Chris Pratt's got, like, a few of those pinned down yes, just he for does. himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> and did you hear that um, they're not certain if Scorpion's going to return for Mortal Kombat 2? Really? They're not going to yeah. put back Scorp Scorpion is the icon of the franchise. How do you not have Scorpion back for Mortal Kombat 2? The same way you have an OC as the main character in Mortal Kombat 1. With incompetence. You know, that is definitely like, that was before they were ready to fully embrace video games. If they had made yeah. Mortal Kombat, like if that entered production today, there wouldn't have been that OC character. It would have been just the video oh, game characters. Not. And they wouldn't Isn't have it tried crazy that that's a thought, though? That they thought, you know what, people, we're, we're going to bank on this movie selling because it's Mortal Kombat. However, we're not confident enough in that. So instead, the better move is to have the protagonist be this lame, oh, super the generic why, uh, OC. That's the reason that's why Sonic like. the Hedgehog was like a crazy monstrosity thing instead of just being Sonic the Hedgehog. It's because even though they know the name, it's like, yeah, but we can't have like a blue hedgehog, like, running around, like, that'd be silly. We need to make him look like he's kind of plausible <laughs> as, like, a creature. We need to make him look like a monster. Yeah, well, hey. Yeah, like exactly. a failed genetic experiment. With People human love teeth. that. 95% <sighs> of Melina is hot. That's fair. Definitely can't get that, that is true. That, you remember in MKX where they gave her a human lips over her teeth just so they could do that one scene? No, but that sounds yeah, gross. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's what right. Now? And then in Mortal Kombat 11, they were like, no, just give her the full Tarkat and like crazy looking sort of mouth. Yeah. So, so for, for those not aware, so in Mortal Kombat 10, oh, well, or you don't MK... need to talk about it. You don't need to like go into It's gross. Okay, okay, I don't. I will not go into it if if the panel does not want to go into it. I mean, it frankly no, seems really opposed to it, so yeah. if this we, bugs him, we, so we don't have to, you know, talk about it. It does bug me. Yeah, it bugs me a lot, actually, that thing. So I, I see what you did it. there. Yeah. It yeah, bugs you. Right. Wink, yeah, wink. Yeah. Anyway, back to this <laughs> stupid movie. So, uh, when they say that we can do anything, he says, yeah, narcissistic personality disorder, chlamydia, they've got it all. I thought it was like, eh. Okay, line. Nah. Trying to fight against bullies. 
Where are you going? Yeah, Rex? see, I had forgotten that they were the yeah. bullies from the first movie, so I thought, like, well, that was really rude. They're they the didn't really do anything yet. They're the comical, crazy bullies that pick on crippled children. Yes, yeah, yeah. which is why I, I, you know the line they park like, their yeah. big pickup truck in front on the curb of the school. Oh, uh, yeah, that's there, right. And... Even though it's probably gonna get towed immediately like, towed and they'll yeah, get chewed out for that. it yeah so i i just thought wow like they just said hey new girl like like you should be friends with us and he's like haha you have chlamydia and you're a narcissist so i was like see that's, that's why kind of as a shazam super fan i saw the first one again so i knew how well constructed this story beat was and you were suffering sitting there not knowing especially <laughs> especially if they're gonna have her being ready to like destroy them and kill them with their magic powers you know but uh I, I feel like they could have made them more shitty in this i think scene. they thought it was a funny joke like haha funny funny she's kind of like not familiar with you know the customs of like society or something is that what they were doing i think it was meant to be like kind of almost a fish out of water thing that she's like an ancient god so she's not aware that rearranging some of these organs because they were kind of like a pompous jerk was like that that might be a little bit excessive well she did say like oh. i wouldn't have needed you to do anything because i was going to rearrange with your organs meaning she knew it would at least stop them i assume she knows that yeah. would kill them though i mean you would well humans. considering that she knows that Surely, later in the yeah. film that like the monsters just being out there and attacking people is in peril like is endangering their lives like she she's not like an idiot right she understands like Oh, yeah, but I didn't have that interpretation totally. anyway. I didn't think that's what they were trying to tell us. I thought that he was literally it talking was about killing them. Book. Hence, hence my like concerns yeah. about her as a character. <laughs> like, right. And she doesn't actually know at that point that they're really terrible bullies. They just kind of rather aggressively said hi to her. That's really true. All they did. Um, and that's the thing. Someone will be like, "But they," and it's like, "No, that is after." But we can talk about it now. They punch him in the in the good old belly, and then they. I was going to say break, but. They bend Bended. his uh, yeah. his crutch so that it's you know, like not usable. And it's just like, holy fuck, you guys. Like It's just like the first movie where you're just like, man, this aggressive beating up of a crippled kid is just like, oof, that would, that would earn you so much like disdain yeah, in like school. A, I don't know how anybody People would hate would, you. Everybody would hate them. You're picking on well, a the, crippled kid. The 40-year-old, 50-year-old man who wrote this, he thinks that, like, everyone wants to pick on the crippled kid. Like, if someone's crippled, that means that everyone in the school will hate them instead of them, like, actually getting a lot of well, like sort of social really... credit for that, in a way. Oh, yeah. Like, everyone's like, going to look out for him. What you generally observe passage. is that the kind of people who get bullied, it's often people with, like, uh, mental, like, dis uh, like, you know, autism or something. They usually get bullied at school, not crippled people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and as someone mentioned, chat, their disability. <laughs> anybody recording that on their phones and then it goes up to the internet, the, the, how serious people take this shit would be that the person recording it would get in trouble too. Like, you'd be yeah, like, right. like, why the fuck didn't you do anything? And it's just like, oh shit. Like, people don't like this shit. So it's just annoying to see that that's happening. And then it's like, oh, a teacher just saw it all, or a principal. I don't think. Do we ever find out his job, teacher? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think so. We'll, we'll go with that. He's anyway. like the cool teacher. Yeah, the teachers. He, the teacher comes in. and He sees this happening, and they all go, "Oh shit!" Oh, you know, and they move the. They were going to put him in a trash can. They move that back, and then he's like, nah, and then just like, "Oh, you know, everything's fine. Don't don't you worry about it." And they like leave, and then Freddie like, I, I don't know if he high fives him or something. He's like, "Oh, thanks so much." It's like, "Hello, teacher. You just saw him get beaten, and then they broke. Yep. his, like very yeah, significant like, support. Do something." And it's just like, "Nah, I did something. I broke it up. It's fine." It, yeah, because that lets them go. It's like destroyed his property. You know, like it, it might might require a little bit more. Like, Can I at least get a detention, please. For breaking his a stern crush, talking you know? to yeah anything yeah, like, anything nah he did it it's fine it's like okay maybe then. the maybe the principal's in on it maybe he's Thanks, like cool teacher I hope that you don't die later in this movie that would be unfortunate because <laughs> that's our that only thing yeah. with him where he's being a cool dude apparently wait does he die <laughs> <laughs> did you watch the, did you watch the I, movie I don't yeah, remember but, that you know, don't worry it's not that long away a, that theoretical scene yeah. It's very sad for. Oh, you're happen. right. No, I remember. Okay. Yep. You're right. That maybe happened. We'll maybe we'll find out whether that happened in a minute or two. So they have more banter, <clears> and then the bullies just throw a football at his head, and he falls to the ground. And it looks like 
kind of painful, but then it just like camera just sits on him. And he's like, ah, oh, I met a girl. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I don't yeah. think we see the bullies again. Never ends. No, no that's it for the bullies. bullies. They've done their job. So then the wizards yeah, they don't they, even uh, they don't even do no like a for that. They don't, they don't even do like a weird like payoff where they get like I don't know where demon shits on them or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're a. Uh... So we're something like you expect kind of like in the first movie yeah like uh, like well, shazam Freddy looked it up them, the truck and dropped it in the, yeah, in the, just yeah. the come up and yeah that's what i'm saying is the, you'd uh, expect uh, them to maybe brutal. pop up in the third act screaming as a minotaur is about to kill them and then they get saved you know that sort of thing nope yeah. something and, yeah but then freddie bends his leg backwards like yeah yeah see how it feels no that's that's oh, the zack snyder version it's too dark yeah zack snyder <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the wizard gets the splinter out of his finger and uses it to cast mm. a spell. And this is the thing, right? Let's just pretend that all he can do with the splinter is contact one person. I don't know what else he could do with it. Seriously, up to the writer. But we know he can contact mm. someone to talk to. And you might be thinking, well, Shazam, right? That's the one he's got to talk to. That's the one he needs to talk to. He's like, yeah, 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 that sounds like a good idea. But do you know who he, he asks to speak to? Is, go find me the one who did this. And what he's referring to is breaking the staff. So that could I be guessed, a couple people. Right. Yeah, because what, what if he didn't know that it was uh, Mark Strong, that he had broken it for some reason? Yeah. And then he's like, he contacts, contacts him in prison, him like, in hey, prison. Mark Strong, what are you doing? And he's just like, Because, especially, <laughs> especially given what we see later in the film, uh, contact Mark Wonder Strong Woman. Mark Strong would know who he is. Just go to Wonder Woman, let her know what's up. Yeah. Or just anyone that can be told and warned about the future of Earth, as opposed to the person who broke the staff. Like, okay. <laughs> really dumb, but fine. Go to um, the Justice League. He looks what about some evil society. guy who did it? Yeah, the... like Mark Strong. Oh, yep, sorry. Um, anyway, yeah, he gets in contact with Shazam. It's nice and lucky. Uh, he's, he's having a dream currently about hanging out with Wonder Woman. And that's the scene where you don't see her face at all. It's, uh... I thought they were going to make a joke, because I knew she was in the movie, where he would be like, you know, it's... It, it's the, I thought it would be like that lame joke where he's like, it's like a dream where you can never quite see the thing you're trying to look at, and the camera just pans up and she's actually there. And you'd be like, haha, is he? Because you actually mm -hmm. have it. But no, not in that yeah. scene, because they probably didn't have it when they were filming that one. Uh, I, I doubt it. And so, yeah, you only see her from the back until uh, she turns into the wizard, but... Only in the face and the beard, everything else is Wonder Woman. What yeah, do you guys think it of just that? has the wizard. What do I think of it? That's um... hilarious. Oh, uh. Uh, if the, so, the goal here of the wizard is to tell Shazam that there are evil daughters of Athena and they're coming to get him, and they're, the barrier between the realms has been broken and the bad stuff's going to happen. It's very, very, very important. This is a very high stakes. Um, message mm -hmm. and the way that it is conveyed is yeah just to be clear it's in a dream right it, he does this in a dream he doesn't do it in the real world or anything like that in a dream shazam is dreaming about dating wonder woman and so he inserts himself into that dream by making wonder woman's face become his face and voice so that he can then talk to shazam in this dream yeah, that's what if he were just, yeah, because uh, yeah. that's every, every time when I, every time when I have a dream after it's like, oh man, maybe this means something, and it's not like <laughs> this has an impact on oh, my actual life. Well, yeah. just mentioned, is, yeah. I fucking forget <laughs> my dreams really quick uh, when I wake exactly, up. Exactly, I have to too. choose to like write them down or remember them very deliberately for them to stay, or they just uh, yeah. So yeah, Shazam could have just go going like, or Billy rather. Uh, oh, that was a weird dream. Anyway, moving on. Mm -hmm. said, well, so before we go to that, I was just saying, as, as was kind of implied, there's like the strategy, of course, should have been that he actually sits down as himself, as the wizard, and talks to him very seriously. So it's like, you need to right. listen to me. Instead of being like, oh, I'm Wonder Woman, and you're a dick. I guess are we meant to chalk that up as like an accident, like that wasn't meant to happen. Like, how much control does he have over yeah. Billy's dreams? I don't know. Don't, uh, I think it's, he just it's really wanted to be to Wonder grasp, Woman. Like, a, oh, he has to do it this way. It's like, yeah. right. It has to be in Wonder Woman's face, okay. I don't know. <laughs> but I guess we don't get do any rules to break all that one, so. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, he's he says, you fool of a champion, I bring a warning. The daughters of Atlas are coming for you. They're coming to unmake your world and torture mankind into the pit of endless agony. Okay. So basically, so far, nothing useful. Nope. And then he says, um, oh, wow, I should write this down. And he says, and quiet. Yeah. Says, no. You don't know what you've done. I regret ever choosing you. Because of you, the barrier of the worlds has been brought down, and they will be hunting the ones you love. Again, nothing I useful. Think, I think that the wizard, you need to take a little bit more personal responsibility for not yeah. telling him <laughs> yeah. anything. <laughs> But also, yeah. tell him Three, something he can actually use. Life. All of this is just yeah. fucking ranting. Yeah, like, I, I get you're upset, but, like, you know, now is the time to convey some useful information to Billy well, if you want him to actually save the world. That's where you're in luck, Fringy. So he says, the one thing you absolutely must not let happen is... And then he gets electrocuted and cut off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how inconvenient. Movie. What, a, oh. what a movie thing. That's writing. Because, yep. because the reason we do that is to set up that there's something else to find out, and we don't know what it is. How how interesting. Ooh. Hmm, that's mystery. I yeah. like me some mystery. Man, Good thing he didn't waste a... all the time by talking about how much he hates him first. Yeah, that would be oh, that was that would be awkward. It's so annoying because when uh... it's just like that line we talked about earlier, and <laughs> some of the other ones where when you have the camera like zooming on him, and he's like, "One thing you absolutely must not let happen is," you're like, "Yeah, he's gonna get cut off." Yeah, that's all this you do. Is the movie yeah. thing. Yep. Yeah, this script yeah. is so thoroughly generic. <laughs> you know yes. everything that's going to happen mm -hmm. before it happens. Not because it's well written, but because it's so tropey and it's so I don't know. Cliche. It's, it's just so and it's generic funny and cliche, yeah. Some of those tropes are like the mo the time it's most coherent. Just him doing that and getting hit, you're like, well, that was a stretch in terms of timing, but I guess it's not a hole, so I guess it could happen. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it could happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the it paint might by help. numbers parts. They they they're harder to fuck up. I think it might help make sense of the script to know that one of the writers wrote Fast and the Furious three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, and eight. <laughs> yeah, that explains oh, the that explains the Fast and Furious reference in the film. It explains the theme about family. Oh <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> You guys get the trailer? God. The world that ends with Fast mm. 10. The end of the road begins. <laughs> that is a funny... It's, <laughs> it's, 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 pretty, begins. It's, it's funny, that's yes. a trope in and of itself. The end begins. Wasn't that the tagline for God of War 3? It was, yeah. Well, the end yeah. begins oh, is the name of right. the, one of the most famous songs, right? It's, uh, it's, it's a good meme, the end begins. It's like, ah, the end, it begins. That's crazy. Uh, but I see the word end and begin next to each other, and my brain goes, whoa. Well, it's, it, I don't <laughs> think, it's not just that, it's next to Ted, the end begins. It's yeah, just like, yeah, fucking yeah. hell. The 10th movie finally is the beginning of the end. get to the end after yeah. 10 movies. And I think it's, it's infinitely funny well. that they went, yeah. The yeah, Fast and the Furious, Too Fast, Too Furious, the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, and we've got all the way to now Fast. That's just the name of the well, movie. Well, there was well, Fast because, Five. There was, yeah. Well, because Fast, there was the reboot, which was four. That was just Fast and Furious. So they got rid of the Fast and 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 then the the. Dropped the, the and. cleaner. They had yeah. the and in the and the, but they got rid of the the. And then it was Fast Five. And then what was it? Was it like Furious? It was Fast, Fast and, and Furious, Furious Six. six. And then Furious, Furious Seven. seven. Oh my yep. god. The and fate then, of the Furious is eight. Yep. That's right. And we're gonna have an annual release. I, uh, I think it was Fast, Fast and Furious Nine, was it, or was it Fast? 9? I don't even. And then I it was Fast X. Yeah, that's funny that's as pretty... fuck. And then of course Fast you can't forget drug. about Fast and Furious Presents. No, it was F Nine. F Nine. Oh, it was Sorry, it was actually F Nine. It was <laughs> Fast F9. and Furious F9. Presents Hobbs and Shaw. I yeah, love F9. how inconsistent the naming is. That's it's hilarious. Called, it's called. Oh, and also, it's called F9 The Fast Saga. Oh, like, oh, oh. oh. hell yeah. <laughs> and then what? And, fast uh, X is just Fast X. And what's the last one going to be X, called? Yeah. The End of the Fast <laughs> of the Furious? Yeah. The like, Fate of the Fast of the Furious 5. But no, I thought that just be like, like fast fast No, you have to combo them all up. Done. And then put Tokyo oh, Drift right, in the end. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> the the Fast and the Furious Tokyo, 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 Furious, Tokyo, 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 Tokyo Drift, Drift 5 Furious. Oh. <laughs> Fate <laughs> of the F9 X11. Do it. Presented oh. by. And then do it again. <laughs> That's right. Fast um, and Furious. Yeah, the Fast Saga. The Fast Saga. They went into space in the last movie. Can you believe it? 
incredible. I, I, yes. You know what? I can actually, yeah. <laughs> it's only a matter of time, I thought. Uh, Freddy, I think the yeah. Spanish version mm. of Fast and Furious was Los Bandoleros. Good. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. yeah uh, you know. Freddy wakes up. Uh, no, sorry. When Billy wakes up, of course, he says, like, whoa, what was that? And his um his little globe in his room explodes. Does anyone know why that happened? Uh, See, I, watch I watch was very confused. To because the I, I thought... were, were afoot. Well, I thought I he's about to get attacked. Like, they, like the, they come in close. It's like, oh, they're coming for Shazam now. He's going to have to fight now. But then the scene just ends. My rate of that was, ah, see, it wasn't just a dream. Electricity. That's like Shazam related. What are those called? I think you're right. Those, those uh, little electric balls. Oh, oh I know what they're called. A Tesla something, isn't it? Or <clears throat> um, uh, electric ball. <laughs> Static electricity ball. Electric ball. ball. Are they called like What's are plasma they just ball? Just... Plasma ball. Plasma ball. Okay. They're called well, plasma balls. Um, plasma globe. I guess I'll have to go okay. with the um, that interpretation that Fring and Cap had because I, I I got nothing for it. I I I've, I I just don't. Yeah. I can't crack it. It's like he wakes up, he sees it go. It's like okay. And it and it, yeah. sh and it just throws glass everywhere, and there's no problems. We're all okay. One other interpretation really possible think... is that it's happening because someone shazammed. Um, maybe, and, the, and then the explanation. Would, uh... Well, but the thing is, like Freddy, maybe, but he's nowhere near the house at that point. So, no. yeah, but then they he must have a really high usage for these plasma balls. I was about to say he must replace them every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, like oh fuck again. He gets given them by the city. Yeah, not not sure about uh, that exactly, but we'll go with most likely. I guess. Um, then we cut to Freddy, who's just in an alleyway, and he's looking through, I guess, uh, crime, current crime that's happening. And you hear him going, nope, over it. Yeah, this, he has it. his crime app open. Well, I don't know what, I, I'm, I'm willing to give him that, I guess, whatever he's tapped into, he's got a way of, might be the police, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, something yeah, that, something like that, yeah. The, 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 hmm. uh, so I was listening to him, he's, he says, nope, over it, done it, check fraud, are you kidding me? Ooh, armored car heist. And then he... Shazams and he flies and he's going woo hoo hoo and then it cuts to him at school having a really shitty school lunch. Like, see the see the difference. And I was just thinking, like, I don't want to do what you're doing, film. I want to do the fact that he just scrolled over something and said "done it." Like he's doing yeah. this for the fun of it. He's not doing it to help people. That's exactly. way more interesting to actually address. And the and the film doesn't ever talk oh, about no. that sort of thing. No, oh, absolutely just... not. Nothing to do with this movie. The idea that it's like, oh, it's just, someone's sitting robbed. Yeah, but yeah, those rob robbers have it all the time. Lame, done it too many times. Fuck you, lady. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's so, oh well. Um, and so the girl turns up again and she's like, can you show me where you met the superheroes? And it's like, yeah, that's not us at all. This, this lady who's never appeared before and she's hell bent on getting every last piece of information you have about the superhero. I just, I got the distinct impression she was evil at this point. Uh, I was just waiting for the other shoe to drop. But the thing is, it drops pretty mm. fast because this movie is broken up, I think, into four acts, is how I would put it. It and, seems um, that way. Her being revealed to be evil is act two, I think. Beginning of act two? I don't know. It's really hard to sort of nail with. I these think it's the beginning are. of act two, but it almost seems like it's not. It almost seems like the beginning of act three because it's such a dramatic escalation. Yeah. Uh, You're not wrong. But there's still most of the movie left. At that and, point. And Freddy says, uh, sorry, I have an overbearing brother. And then she goes, oh, I have a sister who's like that. She always has to know where I am. She thinks she knows better than me. Nice to not have someone breathing down your neck. Because I'm not a kid anymore. And that's where I was like, yep, so she's related to those, those Easy, crazy yeah, people. Yeah, she's evil. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, we were even thinking before that in yeah. the in the first hallway sequence. It's like, why, why is this this new random girl shows up and she takes this interest to this is this guy, this Freddy guy, when Freddy doesn't seem to have any positive qualities whatsoever to be attracted <laughs> to, really? Um, and I'm like, like, okay, that's... I don't... I, I think, Mahler, you'd ask... You didn't know if this was bad writing or if she was evil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was, it's one of the two. I, assume, <laughs> one of the I two. assumed bad writing. You should always assume bad That's probably writing. a safe bet in this movie, yes. Safe um, bet yeah, is bad I, writing. I, I kind of underestimated the movie because I thought like, well, there's no, I had the brief thought that maybe that she's related to them somehow, but I'm like, nah, that's too stupid. They wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Uh, 
So uh, then Billy turns up and he drags Freddy off to talk to him about this dream. And he says it's the wizard desperately trying to contact him. And uh, it was really strange because I think everybody would have just come to conclude, like we mentioned earlier, that surely you wouldn't think much of that beyond it being a dream. The wizard is dead. And what did he say in the yeah. dream? That you're not good enough and that something called the Sisters of Atlas are coming. That sounds pretty absurd. And maybe something you read in some school, you know, thing. I don't know. Um, uh, and nobody ever even entertains this. The uh, Freddy immediately says, like, wait, the wizard, but he died. It's like, it was a dream. He's not alive because he's in a dream. It's a dream. Yeah, Wonder Woman's like, kid. <laughs> and, cool. and, then, and then you're like, oh, how did he see him? It's like, yeah, he was Wonder Woman's face. Like, you know... That might have just been a dream. <laughs> Something that just mm -hmm. happens. Uh, but no, no, we treat it all as real, and we move forward as it real. Yeah. And it's like, okay, good. Um, yeah, he says he's gonna Sorry. organize everybody to, um, well, figure this out. And uh, they say the daughters guard the mythic tree of life, which grows golden apples that contain the seeds of life, which give birth to their realm that's protected by a dragon. I all right. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Well, okay. I'm glad we've all got that. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Pedro says, "I know someone that might be able to help." And uh, yeah, we get introduced to possibly the most useful thing on Earth, casually because yeah, they're talking about this. He um he opens <laughs> up a secret door behind. I think it's Gluttony. It's the statue of Gluttony. I I'm think so. Sure. Yeah. He hits mm -hmm. like a a blue button mm -hmm. on the Gluttony statue. And then it slides back and swings away, and then like a whole new section of their lair just opens up. Yep. And uh, he takes and him into a room. He. Oh god. Takes him into a room filled with magical flying books, a huge library, and they go to the center table. They see there's a little pen, and he's writing something, and he introduces it as Steve the Pen, and he knows everything. Oh. Wow. He never told them wow. that is here. Nope. Because obviously, so, a yeah. man that literally no. knows the answers to all things wouldn't be that useful. There's an entire massive section of the cave, and boy, it's like massive. This underground library area with a uh, with an omniscient pen that writes things down whenever you talk to it as it, its way to answer you is to write things down. It yep, knows yep. everything. And he has never told anybody else that this entire part of the cave exists. Now you might think, like, oh, well, that's, of course he found it, because he's mapping out the cave, right? You're like, nope, that's the other character that was mapping out the entire cave. He didn't find it. This guy did for some reason. And he yeah. didn't tell anyone I think anyone he even pointed no it out, doesn't he? He's like, are you kidding me? I'm mapping out this whole thing, and I didn't find this. Uh, something yep. like that. I think, I think and, I remember something like that. And just like the film does several times, they lampshade it, and then there's no answer. Nope. Uh, it's it's like the I mean movie about... feels like, oh, we already give this, gave this guy all the mapping out of the doors. Let's give this guy the hidden big-ass library with Steve in it. It's like, so the they way. all have something. It's like, okay. Someone in chat said, pretty smart pen. Yeah. Pretty smart pen. Pretty smart pen. <laughs> pretty pen smart GPT. Pen. The um, smartest pen, you might say. And this is the thing. If David Sandberg wrote like a how to write or I guess because he's directing, but like I just I can already imagine the tip in there being like if you ever notice it's kind of a flaw that's kind of getting in the way, just a good way to sort of move past it is to have a character point it out, and then you know the audience laugh with you, and they kind of forget that it's a problem. I could totally As see them to saying that. actually fixing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, what does it mean to fix a problem with a script? There's no such thing, even though it's a sort of thought process like that kind of acknowledges as much. Well, it's the kind of shit when we have throwaway lines from Ryan Johnson or JJ to try and correct up the script. I'm like, you just did it there. Why? Why'd you do it there and you never do it anywhere else? Is it because it's easier there than it was in these other places and so you just gave up? Is that it? Tell me the answer. It's almost worse. It it shows that you're aware it. of these things. But you couldn't but... be asked to fix it. Yeah. 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 In their minds, do worst. they think, um, do they imagine that, oh, this one is the one the audiences will really need to know? So we'll, we'll, we'll explain this one because or else our audiences, they'll be confused. They won't know what's going on. So we need to explain this one. This is the one we need to explain. Yeah, like what does yeah. it mean for an audience member to be confused as to what's happening in a story? You know, like, what does that mean? Oh, it probably means that something is incongruent, right? Hmm. 
I don't know. Hmm. Might be worth giving that a bit of thought. <laughs> no, the only thing I could think of that could possibly answer the question of why he didn't tell them is because he's getting the pen to write him a book report, crime and punishment uh, thing. But the thing is, that's thrown out the window because Dude, he presents it to them and he's proud of it. It's, it's, only, it's, when, a joke. it's only when Mary it, says, so like, funny. oh, Pedro, and he's like, what? So South Park just did an episode about Chat GPT where like a plot yeah. thread was the the boys using the the app to write like school reports for them. <laughs> <laughs> this is proto Chat GPT. He's Steve the Pen, the yeah. original version of that. Steve GPT. It is kind of crazy though that he wouldn't tell them about this labyrinth of knowledge, like this absolute wealth of knowledge, just because he didn't want people to know that he was what using the thing to to cheat at school, but then well, he brags about it anyway. Of what use would it really be, uh, for you, considering how they end up using Steve? They go, they Steve, use, uh, yeah. we're looking for information about but the it... Daughters of Atlas, can you help us? And Steve writes, I think, six book titles, and so they go, aha, we'll take one each. Instead of just asking them what, what's in those books. Yeah. You, like, <laughs> just what, <laughs> tell us. what information do they want? Do they want to know what the Daughters of Atlas want? Ask Steve that. They want to know where exactly. they came from? Ask Steve that. Do they want to know what powers they have? Ask Steve that. Why are you going to go read books that'll have ma vast majority of them useless information? Not because well, it's useless yeah, information in general, but because oh, it's useless no, right now. There's a matter of mm -hmm. time. It takes a while to read a book, especially yeah. if that book is dense with information. You don't have a lot of time. So, you know, you need to you, you need to use Steve like Blinkist. Get those summaries yeah, of those yeah. books. You know, like, get the summary. Steve, <laughs> this Shazam Fear of the Gods is brought to you by Blinkist. Oh, good God. Oh, and someone you just said, Steve, what language well, are those books in? I mean, was... I mean, I guess they didn't have time because it was brought to you by another brand. All the books in the yeah, library are books... in English, by the way. Man, oh, yeah, right. of course, but it wouldn't yeah, be like what's what's Greek, the mythology Greek ones? gods. It's yeah. not written in Greek. I guess yeah. Steve wrote all of them. Question mark? I don't know. Like, in English before. In English, yeah. <laughs> Just he, in he, he knew everything. He knew <laughs> he that one the day these these kids, these magical superhero kids, would need these pages written in a language they understand. He knew. What a and I assume there's no throwaway line about there being some translation spell on the library or something. What a, it would be funny if I don't know if funny. Maybe it'd be something if they told Steve to write something and he started writing it in like greek or latin or some old <laughs> language and then they said well can you can you write it in english please and then he balls up the paper throws it away and starts again like that'd be something yeah yeah be something that would be something not much oh. but something what's uh... what what am i thinking of so there's a um there there's some i don't know if it's a cartoon or something but the characters in this cartoon or something come across the source of all knowledge they like a person a wizard or whatever that knows the answers to everything and they start asking him like really stupid questions like you know well, for my entire life if you took all my shits and they were like bricks and the it made a wall five feet tall <laughs> how long would the wall go and, and they just have a bunch of weird pooping <laughs> questions like that about how much poop have i ever pooped and stuff <laughs> like i don't know maybe someone knows what i'm talking about i have no idea what it is but that that's a thing and it i was sounds just, familiar um yeah, robot I have no idea what that is. Something. Maybe someone will. Uh, people chicken. said robot chicken. Yeah. Oh yeah, it might I be. I blame yeah. that's robot chicken gag. <laughs> they're, they're just the stupidest questions, just out of curiosity. Yeah, you probably would ask stupid questions I first. Would. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. how many pounds of poop have I ever pooped? I mean, what do you think? You I you're like, damn. I mean, look what people use chat everything for the first time they use it. You'd be like, yeah, so Bigfoot, what happened with that? What's the truth? <laughs> the pen said, like, uh, all right. a thing. He's like, it's all bullshit. You're like, I knew it. Locked S monster. He's like, oh, that's is... true. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ancient because aliens. This is the thing that the, kids would ask, right? These are yeah. kids yeah. who have access to this 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 pen that gives all the answers to everything, and they don't have like any gags about that. They don't have any jokes. They don't use this to remind you, yeah, these are kids, and this is the kind of things that kids would ask. They just don't. No, what if this guy was boogers? Are... It's the thing, it's like, the kids, are, <laughs> the kids will selectively <laughs> act like kids when it's useful to the plot, but a lot of the opportunities to to have them act like kids in, in situations that could be interesting or funny are, are just foregone. Yeah, they don't nope. take advantage of that. So, um, so, we cut to them on the roof of the 
school, uh, Fre- Freddy and girl. Um, and Theo. I don't know that yet. Or are you just calling her girl? Well, Anne, Anne, right? Yeah, yeah. not Anne. But that's okay. Not going well, we're about to get it anyway. Or this list. is where you hang out with, uh, she says this is where you hang out with your superhero friend, huh? Do you even know those guys? Or you, she's like, is it a Canadian girlfriend type situation? Basically, are you lying about know them? So it's like, yeah, she keeps on prying and he's like, um, yep. Oh, you know, I can I can show you. I can bring Captain Every Power here right now. And he goes behind the corner and then pins into him, brings him here. And then, like, he, uh, he says, I think she says, I've never met someone like Freddy. He's genuine, warm, and funny. And it's just like, woman, you've had, like, one conversation. You've been alive that. for mm-hmm. 6,000 years. Yeah. I don't believe you. She's attracted to a minor. She's 6,000 years old. Well, and, and they've known each other for like five seconds. It's not even remotely yeah. like built at all. And then uh, she says, "How did you two meet?" And he goes, "Comic Con." And then she goes, "What's Comic Con?" And he's like, "What?" And we cut. Ah! Mm-hmm. Didn't laugh. Why is that? Uh, I know what that is. Hey, yeah, you guys know mm-hmm. Comic Con. Well, I'm, I'm packing. I, I packed up the laugh. I'll use it later. Ah, for something good. <laughs> um. So, after reading all of the books, because they cut back, and now they've got some knowledge, they didn't just ask Steve, of course, uh, they start reading out, and they say, God's considered human servants, toys to be played with, children to be punished, until the rebellion, where the humans turned on the gods. Like, okay, I guess. This is all all right, then. Yeah. Yeah, I you know. Um, this thing, is just, uh, yeah. We talked about Atlas made a staff that could give and take powers for the gods, and then the staff was stolen by the, the Council of Human Wizards. And what they then stole in total... That's their name. The Council of Human Wizards. It's so <laughs> stupid. That's like, like a Rick and Morty joke. The Council <laughs> of Human Wizards. <laughs> but they're not actually human. They're not like cyborgs or aliens pretending to be humans. So the name is funny. Because they're not what the thing is. So they say... Oh, God. The powers that were stolen in total. The wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, the power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles, and the speed of Mercury, which is what he says when he gives him the power in... Uh... Okay? Um, and then he says, if I may point out one of the powers that might be MIA, and he points to the wisdom of Solomon, and then Shazam says, are you saying I lack the wisdom of Solo Man? Which, uh, oh. The idea that he can't like read the word Solomon, he I can't don't hear get it, it. Apparently, I, yeah, yeah. He heard him. And he's say never it heard out loud. this name before. Well, she said it. I, Rags, you pointed this out. She said it like it, two yeah. seconds before. She said the wisdom of Solomon. Like Mary said it, and then he goes solo bad. <laughs> uh, like how does it's that not happen? even an A? Solomon, yeah. not Solomon. It's like a Digimon, Solomon. He's yeah. the wisest oh. Digimon. So this is this is kind of what I'm getting at. Like. That's just a joke that doesn't work, I'm sorry. There's a couple of layers yeah, to how that mm-hmm. just doesn't work. So you don't get to have... Whatever funny that may have come out of it as a misunderstanding that does make sense is just gone. You don't get to earn that. It's gone. You need to yes. rewrite that one. Sorry. Would have been an easy <sighs> rewrite, too. So then they say, Once the staff contained the power of the gods, the wizards encased the gods in a, their god realm in a sphere, cutting them off from the other realms. Like, okay. And then um, one of them goes, Oh, that's what that was about. And the other's like, huh, what, what? And then he takes them all into the room with the TV and points to a news report of the gods having turned everyone into stone in that museum. And it's like, wait, you knew this had happened? You didn't tell anybody that two people walked into a museum on Earth in Greece and fucking stonified everyone? You don't think that sh- that, that didn't come up in conversation at nope. all? No. Why does everyone keep killing, keeping things from each other until it's relevant to the plot? Oh, because this is really you shitty script. This happened to the they didn't exist, of Mahler. Um, it's really odd, too, because uh, Shazam looks at it and goes, wait, how did the staff end up in Greece? And then as the camera's like panning, you have uh, the one that knew about all this says, by the way, the statues were people. And then they don't address that at all. And he goes, well, I did break it in half and throw it away. Like, he just casually mentions all those statues were people and no one gives a shit and they just move on. No one cares. I don't know why they had him say that if that's all they were going to do with it. Very strange. I was just like, yeah, okay, I got nothing. Moving on, I guess. <laughs> it yeah. almost, I suppose the scene was longer at some point, and then they chopped out some bits for time, but they didn't realize the bits were the things connecting the bits together, so it just falls to pieces. You, th- yeah, you know, I believe it. 
100%. I believe it 100%. I believe that the writer of Fast and Furious 3 <laughs> was the, uh, yeah, it was the, <laughs> oddly enough, he is speeding through this movie, which is probably yeah. not the best. Yeah. Um, also, he doesn't know how bumpers work, which is no. Weird. And they do talk about the, uh, <laughs> the whole uh, staff thing, but we, 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 well, we went over that, so it's fine. And so he says, well, at least now we know what the two sisters look like. And then Pedro is like, three. Three sisters. Because he happened to read in his part of his book that there are three sisters, including Anthea. And then Shazam goes, Anthea. Because he knows the girl that Freddy's talking to in school is called Anne. And so he put, puts together yeah. that that's Anthea. I don't know hmm. how he possibly could have came to that conclusion. This is the guy who can't correct. say Solomon. Yes, and, yeah. <laughs> and he put that together because you know what? Seems just, like he's just needed him to. We just kind of need him to. Yeah, <laughs> it's as simple as Whoa, that. Oh, nice reach, as they would say. Mm -hmm. it, it's the very selective wisdom of Solomon. Yeah. Yes. Um. But then she says, "If Freddy comes here, he's in serious danger." Mm. She says this to you know superhero Freddy, and then um, he says, "Look, look who I am. Look who you're with. What could possibly be dangerous?" And then Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu are back, and they go, us. It's like, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Why are you guys so shittily written? I just don't get it. I mean, the whole thing is, but, you know, it's, it seems special with their dialogue. What was that promo image you had with Wonder Woman with a sword? Oh, it's like a Photoshop. It'll be useful eventually. Oh, okay. I was about to say, if that's an actual image, that's a fucking lie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, you're a liar. Oh, sorry, Shazam, Wonder Woman's blocking. <laughs> um, so I was just thinking, like, logistically, where were these guys the whole time? It's like, do you think they were hiding somewhere in the school waiting for Anthea to bring out one of the heroes? Like, to tempt one out? They were just like, come on. Maybe? I guess that's it, that right? Yeah, because yeah. they can't show us that. It would be fucking hilarious. So they just have to sort of be like, yeah. Um, but wait, aren't they, did, aren't they, they surprised he's a, he's a child? No, well, so... They see the hero. They don't know the child stuff yet. None of them do. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. So why th th I bring that up? Because why then would she even go to that school? Because well, of the she hung out going with to Superman and Shazam at the this end. The thing. A couple people credit. have seen this as a plot hole, but this is just because no one remembers the first film. This is why we rewatched it. Because <laughs> this, oh, we've got to give credit to the film where it's due. Uh, what, Freddy, say it again because you're going to talk to you. Oh, yeah, okay. I haven't said it yet. So Freddy's in, in the oh, first okay. film is uh, friends with Shazam openly. Like, you see him in public, a lot of people have phones, it's, it's oh, very... Oh, okay, mm. okay, okay, And then he starts recording them doing their training montage and putting it on YouTube, getting thousands, tens of thousands of views, I think we see. And then okay. uh, he tells the whole school, hey, I can get the superheroes to visit me in school. And then he does, and even Superman shows up. Well, <laughs> allegedly. it's <laughs> You don't see his face, but they want you to yeah. think it's Superman. And then, in this film, of course, they reference that with he's the Make-A-Wish Thundercrack whatever um so he is the one kid if you wanted to find the heroes he's the one kid who's actually met them and talks to them which is what right. prompts the next criticism which is why the fuck haven't the government either followed him tapped his phones or just talked to him in general none of that has happened because they'd find out of course that he's a hero pretty quickly uh, yeah that's a good question remind me why they're even after earth's heroes like why are they seeking them out they want their powers back they don't they belong to the them power. oh right okay Never mind. Which is, you know, Helen Mirren does explain it, and I think it's fair. It's like, you stole my father's powers, I'm taking them back, bitch. That sort of thing. Right. We'll talk about Lucy Liu when we get there. <laughs> so, we so wait, what powers, does she, what, sorry, what powers does she not have? If the staff is back together, she seems to have a lot of powers. What, do, what powers what does, does Helen Mirren not have? It's not about whether or not she has them, it's that she doesn't want them to have them. Uh, What's interesting, by the way, okay. is that those two so seem to not have speed. Yeah, that's weird. Every they, they they can get it. All they have to do is say Shazam while holding the the staff, and they get it. But they don't. And uh, mm. not having the super speed kind of costs them big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. um, which is weird. It you've been for two years now. They've been doing superhero shenanigans. You'd feel like they'd have a really good grasp on their powers, and you think they'd nah. be really good at it. Nope. You'd think. Oh, they suck at but, dodgeball. Yeah. Well, it's like a dodgeball, oh, even though I'm faster yeah. than both. Speaking of, uh -huh. uh, uh, Freddy's like overconfident. He's like, "What are you gonna do?" And then Lucy Liu punches him, and he flings across the room. And he's like, oh, "Okay, like let's go." And uh, then they fire the staff at him, which takes his powers off him. 
but the thing that annoys me so much is that when you're like a super speedster, is it like don't you experience because with the accuracy they run around in, <laughs> you experience the world in hyper slow motion at your will, right? You, you can't. Um, when you're moving. Moving. We have, we're That's gonna have to headcanon that they do. I was gonna say, there's no way or they, they can, have extremely fast if they're moving time at hyper speed in real time, then they would be flinging into stuff. They wouldn't be able to stop exactly where they need to be, right? Mm hmm. It's, I don't even know if it's worthwhile to try and figure that out. Well, this is a simple one. This gets applies to everything. What, what I'm bringing it up here for is that she fires a fucking laser at him and he just stands there and takes it. And then it takes yeah. it out. So. Yeah, no, it's one of the first of many instances of why don't you use your super speed? Yeah, it's just it's you, really useful and powerful. You should. You well, we've should talked use that for years. Speedsters are tough. When you when you give anyone super yeah. speed, it makes everything so much harder. Yeah, gotta make does. them tire out really quickly, or it has to recharge, or they have to have an energy mm -hmm. source for it, or like it wears them out. You gotta have some sort of sort of a limiter for it. Yeah, or it's fatal to go too fast, sort of thing. Then we does get it, um this just uh, for a second um this this image that you have of the three uh, daughters of Atlantis. It looks like Helen <laughs> Mirren's, um, or Atlant uh, It looks Photoshop, Atlas. doesn't it? The one on the right, yeah, her, her head, her crown doesn't look like it matches, like they just stuck yeah. it on later. <laughs> yeah, it looks like this shot yeah, didn't have the right. crown on it, and then they put it on. I don't know if this is official or not. I think it's just the light doesn't quite seem right, you know? It, it the looks sides like of it look okay, it's, the, it's the middle of the head, it looks really like they don't blend at all. Yeah, it's... Her head doesn't look like the like the crown is way more clear than her face is. You it know? seems like uh, the crown isn't being affected by the backlight. Yeah, the face is really smooth, like inhumanly smooth, like no pores. Inhumanly smooth. Yes, he's the god of pores. <laughs> her name is Epidermia. She is the goddess of skin. Um. So, that guy we mentioned, that teacher, he opens the <laughs> fire exit behind this whole thing happening and goes, what's going on here? Who are you guys? Do you guys have kids here? And you're like, what are you doing, film? Why is he here? What's going to happen now? Why does he just come up to the roof every now and then to see what's going <laughs> yeah. on up there? Yeah. <laughs> then, uh, His office is right below that, and he's like, I heard a laser sound. What's going on up there? Those superheroes again. And she uh, loosely walks up to him, and Freddy's like, No, don't touch him. And then she goes, I won't touch him at all, or something like that. I don't know what the quote is. But uh, she walks up to him, and she goes, <laughs> With the power of chaos. And she just gets him to mind control style, just drop himself off the roof. And, um, yep. yep. And uh, you, you, Anthea just sort of lets that happen. Yep. She, she stop has it. the power to stop this, but she doesn't stop it. Freddy um, has quite a reaction to this. It's well, like, yeah, he's it's like tonally, it's really strange. This is a tonally, this is a kind of a bizarre movie, actually. Oh yeah, and, he's uh, like, he's well, very distraught about that. It's like, whoa. Well, we cut over to Lucy Liu, who says, "I forgot how easily they burst like grapes." What? What? Oh, <laughs> she's Jesus. just evil. Evil. What are we doing? <laughs> I'd be like, David, what is this? What is this point of this scene? If he was like, well, it's to show Lucy Liu is evil. Like, really? That's it? Okay. <laughs> okay. We didn't even know that guy's name. <laughs> like, it was just this... Poor guy. But he got introduced to be, like, guy who you kind of like, maybe. And then it's like, guy whose head just got splattered. It's like, fine. Yeah. Uh, you're expecting because of this movie and its tone that he gets saved. Like that's when the heroes show up and they 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 save him from the air or they yeah, grab him as he's fallen. But it's like no, he nope. just he just uh, dies in front of everyone and all those flirt. kids probably saw it and they're traumatized now. And Freddy's screaming and it's like oh what do, oh that's not good. Yeah. If so they anyway. wanted to do the more serious kind of horror adjacent stuff, I would have really liked it if there were lasting consequences for the characters or anything you know or if it was more consistent if you know like um kind of like the real life is catching up to these kids they're playing a dangerous yeah. game by being superheroes mm -hmm. they're they're, they're exactly. creatures from other realms that they can't you know really compete with or understand much and they're being very flimsy or not flimsy they're being flippant with their powers they are um they're they haven't matured right and this is kind of almost a dark story of them Learning to, you know, growing, growing up, becoming responsible with the powers and all the 
you know, the good and the bad that comes along with it. Um, Coming which of seems thing. appropriate for DC, but I uh, I don't know. They didn't do that. Whatever. No, they didn't. Um, yeah, and then uh, we see the first instance of Anthea's power. Uh, Freddy oh, tries to run okay. away, and she goes and moves the entire like nature of the building itself to move Freddy back around so he can be grabbed by Helen Mirren. It's like, what the hell did you just do? Like, yeah, she literally like clockwork. Uh, I don't know, MC Escher style, just like moved everything all around in the school, but apparently it only affected them. Question mark. I don't know. I don't know about that, because we then see how it gets used, like, a minute later. Well, yeah, because Freddy's like, oh, wait, I don't have to answer your question, because look. And we see Shazam is on the way, because, of course, he pieced yeah. everything together from Anthea, like like any smart person would. And so he's heading yeah. there. And uh, this is actually a clip they released, but Helen Mirren's like, Anthea, clip his wigs. And so yeah. he <laughs> manipulates <laughs> the entire city. Like, to, to he, uh, illustrate it, the buildings are, like, moving around all over the place. The ground is shifting. Yeah. It's like a, it's like I a think some of the like, like 20 or something. Yeah. yeah. It's I think just, some of the buildings even get, like, this, like... Yeah, the buildings... Not distorted, like shuffle but, like, well. switch, yeah. switched up. Shuffle, shuffle is a good word, so yeah. The question yeah. on your mind is, so is this, like, this is happening in reality? And the answer is yes, because Shazam gets hit by a building... And it yep. damages the building and it stops him. So, like, these buildings are moving, presumably with people in them. Yep. And on the street and all over the place. You, 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 you almost think this certainly... is an illusion. Your mind goes to, this is an illusion. You're, you're like yes. an illusionist yeah. person. Yeah, it looks like you fiddle with people's people's minds. It's like, it would be like, it's like in the mirror dimension, except this is happening seemingly in reality. Yeah. How many people mm. do we think are dead because of Anthea? Thousands. Oh, just lost. that. Yeah, thousand seems like it might be a low ball. It's like it's, it's like I said, it's like a category thirty earthquake or something. Happening it's quite a like big block. Seconds. She moves around as well. It's, it's, it's a lot of buildings. City. It's a huge it's, portion of the city, and they're yeah. moving hyper fast to the point where if you were in one of those buildings, oh, you yeah. get splattered. You get yep, splattered yeah. into the wall. Absolutely, yeah, thousand Anthea, percent. Anthea there. Anthea, who I mean, jumping ahead, she's presented as like, ah, nah, you're all right at the end. Like, yeah. I just, no, she is not already. Right. No, she's not. She let that dude fall to his death, and then moved around all these buildings just to stop him. And then it's, it's, it probably would have killed thousands of people in the process. Yeah, my it's brain hard melted. To really when I first explain. Saw that. I feel like it, it's kind of like our our explanation is is good, but it doesn't really do it justice. Just what well, is actually happening? It? If, it's, if it's a clip that's out there, maybe you can show it. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's it's like the buildings come apart like puzzle pieces and start yeah. contorting around and you imagine people have to be getting skewered and crushed and splattered and you imagine once the buildings resettle it would just be there would just be red jam pouring what onto the street the buildings to even resettle were the buildings designed to be able to withstand these kind of forces or is that i just don't magic? know i doubt I it <laughs> i do kind I mean, of love magic, that like but... All the buildings kind of end up where they started, and the movie's like, "Well, then everything's fine, right?" You know, well, they yeah, start. Were they, they all started? end up where they started? Or did she I totally think so. rearrange Philadelphia? Like, totally change the layout of that. So city. she changed it all, and just to have it change back, so she was nice enough to make sure that it all went back to where it was before. That's what it looked like to me, but I could be wrong. Either way, or is it just because they didn't guy... want to commit to having the buildings be all fucked up and everything. I don't like think they wanted to deal that. with it. They thought like, no, oh, they don't this is kind it. of visually interesting, and it's like, yeah, I suppose it is, but like, what is happening? I just imagine the the one guy who was out for vacation. He comes back home, and like his his flat is like three blocks the other way. It's like, what's yeah. what's going on oh, here? Three blocks. He's one of the lucky ones. The other guy's yeah. on the other side <laughs> of the city. And he doesn't have a car. He needs to get to work by walking, and now he can't. So Anthea has destroyed his uh, livelihood right there. His his favorite restaurant doesn't deliver to him anymore because he's too far away. Like, <laughs> oh, <it> sucks. <laughs> it's a real heartbreak here. Yeah, but for every person who got moved further away from their favorite restaurant, think of all the people who got moved further uh, towards the restaurant. The unsung yeah. hero of the film, Anthea. And what about all the people who were crushed to death by their favorite restaurant? Well, you know what? If I was going to get crushed to death, I'm glad it was by my favorite restaurant. <laughs> if it was going to be anything, I'm glad it was the restaurant. If any of you can find the clip, I'm struggling I... not to do the right keywords. But... Let me give it a try. I'm I, don't, a I, I looked like... for it a little bit. I couldn't find it. Um, 
Because uh, I found one that's like, it's only a couple seconds I'm trying to find, because I know it exists. It's like a flip of about 15 seconds at least. I just don't know. Hmm. What, what's the, uh, the, the, the character's name? Anthea? Anthe Anthea. Yeah, Anthea. Uh, let me see. I'm looking. Well, if you guys uh, have a look, see. I can't believe yeah, the movie. I mean, it was just one of those things. So it was like, <laughs> it sounds really, it's really crazy the way that we describe it, but. That's like what happens. Yeah. <laughs> the, the city yeah. like rearranges itself like Rubik's cubes and it shuffles around and the ground spins about. And it's like, you know, it's like if you play Minecraft, you have the chunks, you know, Minecraft has chunks and all the chunks mm -hmm. just start like moving around and shuffling like those puzzles. Um, and then they like rearrange all the blocks inside of them. It, it, it's kind of like that, but it, it, it's oh. actually happening. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, um, for Maybe maybe a comparison to something that's more readily available. So uh, remember what Doctor Strange inexplicably did to the say, busts yeah. in um, in in Multiverse of Madness, how he just pulled it mm -hmm. apart and then put it back together. Imagine that, but every building in the city is being pulled apart and put back together well, um, I mean, with magic as you remind and me, reshuffled. Doctor Strange 1, of course, is only in the Mirrorverse, and then the big reveal is Kaecilius with the power of the whatever, whatever, can do all of that, but in the real world... And then Doctor Strange yes. just fucking does it in the real world. And it's like, hey. Yep. <laughs> like, has he been reading the Cagliostro or whatever the fuck? The, uh, whatever. Anyway, different. I found the, the, clip on, rules. Uh, the, the clip on Good Morning America. So it's got a bunch of, like, watermarks and stuff all over the place. That might uh, help with copyright. At least it's something, right? Huh? All right, let's see. But yeah, by the way, clip his wings. He's got the strength of Hercules. Is uh, is he even going to well, matter yeah, that much to put a building to... on him? Like, uh, through well, him even? Maybe he's like Superman, right? When he got thrown through all those buildings in Man of Steel. It's like the buildings make way and give way in no. the face of him. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's nice. Well, then again, we saw it in the first Shazam, right? He got punched into the building and he didn't go through it. He just sort of hit it. He hit the glass and stopped. It's really sturdy. Except it's the same the, glass that the bus the had. Time, it's very, except uh... the other time, he hit the glass when he jumped over the building in a single bound. He 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 went into the building. Yeah, when he probably shouldn't have. He should have just well, bounced off. That was less force than him getting punched directly into the thing. All right, we play this on background while we. Yeah. You can... Thank you. Good morning, America. Clip his wings and. <laughs> Good morning, America. Uh, yeah, and so oh, then... got built-in copyright shield. Then they say, wait, there's more like, of them. And I, I was just saying, they're like, why didn't they arrive together? Why did Shazam because arrive alone? Shazam is the important main character, so it's yeah. better in terms of, like, I don't know, the way that it works with, like, contracts for actors and trailer footage and stuff. <laughs> you know, even with Which all of our Which is weird, because he was really... I don't think people were ready for He really this. wanted them to stick together earlier, but I guess... Dude, look at it! Like, come on. That's nonsense, guys. Come yeah. On. He killed all of everyone. This is... <laughs> They're all dead. <laughs> They're many, all Many, many thousands of people are dead. You know what it is? It's like bumper cars, but the bumper cars are rearranging each other, and also they're giants. It's just funny because I think a lot of people would be like, it's obviously an illusion. It's like, unfortunately, no. Well, that's, that's what we thought. Physical, that's what your that mind goes to first. on him, though. That's the problem. Affects him physically. Yeah, well, what I thought was happening is that he they were projecting the illusion of this in his mind and that if he crashed into the building, that would be his mind subconsciously directing him well, into the real building. But that's not what it is. Film. Later in the film, yeah. it essentially has teleportation capabilities. It's like yep. teleporting somewhere because you rearrange the world around you. So it's yeah. not an illusion. It moves you to different places. It's Which is definitely huge. a thing that's happening physically. Such a big problem. Yeah, how many people dead there? <laughs> I, I, don't even, I don't even want to begin to figure out. I mean, nothing that maybe Superman or anyone would get involved with. You know, it's still... Well, I mean, what? And then they didn't get involved after the... Because that's what's next. Nope. Great, though. But yeah, uh, Lucy Liu then says, you know, we can take them all. And then uh, Hellbiller's like, no. And I, I, I was like, wait, what's happening? Yes? Right? Surely. What, what? Is that the plan? 
She's like, no, it's not why we're here. We're here for the seed of life. Yield, sister. I was like, no, you're here for the powers you're here too. For the seed of life. <laughs> this, wow, this is some new information, I guess. Well, that's the thing, right? Yeah, I think that's why I was confused about why they were actually here because they kind of switch it up and they're no longer as desperate to relieve them of their, remove their powers from Even them. Even though I thought that was the, them. yeah, the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if the point is really only to get the seed of life to plant the tree, then why bother with the whole like twenty one Jump Street operation in the high school? That's because I think it's a fucking thing they forgot that the motivation simultaneously is to get all the powers back and to get the seed of life. That they mm. want to do. Then yeah, because they say the champions of Earth are the only people who can like stop them. Yeah. Well, and and yeah, so, uh, and she expresses that she feels ownership of those powers. They don't deserve them her property almost because they come from her father or mother yeah you have to have the fact that they want the powers back from them otherwise they wouldn't seek them out because they wouldn't stand in their way if they just didn't even well, know this was happening yeah and this is completely inconsistent all over the movie they need the superheroes because they need them to get to the rock of eternity because they apparently can't go there themselves which yeah. is later really not the case at all uh not even no. close to the case at all so We'll try and unpack this as we go. But yeah, she says, Father would never yield. And then she's like, Father is dead. Know your place, sister, or I will show it to you. Like, <laughs> all right, what the fuck's going on with you guys? Uh, oh, there's tension. <laughs> They're going to turn on each other, guys. And then she says, We do it our way, not theirs. Like, what, what, does what do that you mean? mean? Like, well, racist. Like, fighting? And I mean, it as in, the gods never did that. Mean? Because it is so devoid of like any logical through line. What are you saying? Yeah. It's just one of those scripts where no fucking nothing makes sense. And it's Yeah, I don't know. So... You, you wonder how long did you spend on this script? A week, two weeks? An afternoon. Don't tell me it was <laughs> I just... Like I, maybe they had a script and Anthea used her powers on the script <laughs> and rearranged <laughs> all of the words and the sentences, and so this is just what we have, and now the movie's terrible. Uh Oh god. Literally taking uh, their powers is probably the most peaceful and least damaging way they can conduct their whole plan. Yeah. Simple as that. Um no, I would we gotta go as far as saying way. take all their powers <laughs> and then put a knife to one of their throats and say, Hey Billy, open the door to the Rock of Eternity now. Then he would. Of course he would. Then they go get the seed and they can explain like, Hey, you guys didn't deserve any of this shit anyway. Um, but we've taken it back, we're taking the seed, we're gonna go sort out our realm. Don't bother us again. You could be like, well, we never yeah. bothered you. And you'd be like, just read the fucking books. Don't bother us again. Yep. It would have been actually kind of sympathetic in some sense if that's what they did. <laughs> um. So then Helen Mirren's plan instead is to cast a spell that places a dome on Philadelphia and escapes to its outside <laughs> right as Shazam tries to stop them. <laughs> and it, it, it works as though he's like, he's chasing them while they're going up on a little platform. That's slow, by the way, because there's there's a human on there, so he'd have to survive the the the, the flight. So it's, it's not going that fast. And uh, he's a superhero that has super speed, and he can't catch up. Of course, no, that happens. They're moving too fast, oh, Waller. They're just moving show. way too fast. It's one of those things where he's flying toward them, and he keeps catching up. And then the next time we see it, he's really far back again, catching up. And it's <laughs> like, yeah, uh, okay, classic. So, yeah, they close the dome, and they are on the outside, he's on the inside, and yes, I laughed in the cinema, because I couldn't fucking believe it. They've done the Simpson movie. They've, yep. <laughs> they placed a dome over Philadelphia. Oh, There's right. even a news report that's like, some crazy dome is over Philadelphia Philadelphia right now. is trapped inside of a dome, yeah. And let me well, just say, the rest of, the rest of America thanks you. About it. Well, well, they need to charge it with an elephant now. We'd already kind of reached it, but this is the point where it's like, so you have no excuse now. Wonder Woman, Superman, Aquaman, Flash, everyone needs yep. to get in. There's a huge ass dome. An entire American from... city is trapped in a dome. Yeah, yes. yeah but it, they, is like, yeah, so, it is Philadelphia. Yeah, it is Philadelphia. Yeah, so <laughs> let it go. Um, also, uh, Rags, you pointed this out, but all Freddy had to do was jump off the platform and get saved easily by Shazam, which they've Done in the yep. past with all these characters. If Freddy just rolls off, Shazam will catch him, and that'll well, be that. I guess Helen Mirren would probably actually use her power of like, no, nope, well, we you ain't going that. anywhere. <laughs> use her power of yeah. like something, wind or whatever, which would have sure been interesting. I'm not even sure she's looking at him. Uh, she's like looking out at the dome, so he could probably do the roll. Why does why does um she they they take Freddy 
for the at this point, why are they taking Freddy? It's so that they leverage. can get the names of the leverage. Yeah, it was so just that... leverage. They they basically mm -hmm. are like but they're trapped oh, in you... the dome. Well, so so th I think that's the point that's getting ramped up to. Once you're out of the dome, it seems like you don't actually really need Freddy any. Oh wait, but they do want to find out the names later on. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that makes sense because. Yeah, they'd go through this effort to kidnap Freddy, and I guess they really want the names of these people. So, the, yeah, when we get to the scene where they, you know, well, that was you know gonna try be to ask my the names, they'll really stick with that. You know? Because this plotline, they never really discover the names of the superheroes. They never needed them. But that is something oh, and they also, for. There was just the matter of what they say before, is if you, if you, like, chase after us, we'll kill Freddy. So it's like, oh, I guess if that's something that you're actually willing to do, then yeah, you don't something. care that much about the names, then. Just, oh fuck! I forgot. Yeah. Um, when Shazam's yeah. like banging on the dome, like no, as they float away, uh, Lucy Lou's like, "Let's mm. see how you like being sealed off in a dying world." <laughs> uh, like, all right, like, we're gonna talk oh, about dude. we're gonna talk about Lucy Lou's acting in this movie and how bad it is. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Her acting's <laughs> really <laughs> shit. Her acting's really She's bad. Her purpose. delivery I'm is sure awful. It. It's gotta be. She is like. <laughs> Well, she's trolling. Oh, it's it terrible. Too. It feels like she's trolling. Yeah, the the deliveries are so well, deliberately awful. She thinks she's awful. in a B movie. Yeah, well, she, she is, is in a B but... movie. <laughs> the big old a expensive... bad movie. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh my. Fuck you. Um. Yeah, I just the news report is so funny. The news report literally reads: Philadelphia trapped in strange dome. <laughs> <laughs> strange. Imagine we read that on like fucking Reddit or Twitter or whatever. Just like Philadelphia, by the way, trapped in a strange dome. Um, and yeah, by the way, it follows up with saying it could be the doing or undoing of the Philadelphia fiascos. Could be the doing of the fiascos. Basically, what Obviously. they just said is this may or may not have something to do with those guys. It's like, wow, <laughs> that's great, dude. <laughs> like some top notch reporting. Um, it is CNN. Come on. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. drop. They think, they think that the bridge was collapsed by the fiasco people. So <laughs> they uh, uh they drop Freddy uh in with the wizard in his in the cell. Why? Uh, they only have one cell. There you go. Ah, okay, one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought it was obvious, but okay, I guess yeah, I this is where he says, like, didn't you die? And then he's like, no, I just couldn't. I, I went to a different realm because I couldn't remain in my realm. Master Ugwe. And it's like, unfortunately, <laughs> it's like, I, I ended up right. in this one and was captured. So there you go. I'm alive now. <laughs> what a shit. <laughs> this is what I mean. This script is filled with this it's... bullshit. Where it's like, you think you can get away with that? That's like awful. <laughs> like, what? This is great. Not only... Did he survive, quote unquote? He again went into another dimension. He just happened to end up in yeah. the one dimension where they all hate him to death. Well, because he's human, he's like, so why can't he just right. be on Earth? Why the hell did he end up in the prison cell of their Tibet? Like, what? What happened? Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> you bet. You think he actually just landed in that cell immediately? He just dies yeah. on the earth and then just goes like poof in a cell. It's like, oh, like, damn oh, it. All the thing. Oh, damn. Not here. Not only here, but also in their prison cell. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, Freddy says, so do something, you know, do use one of your magical spells. Turn us into a gas so we can float out of here like a fart. And then it like pans yeah. over to the wizard and he goes, did... oh, I gave my powers to children. It's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he did. You Why did you do an that? Adult who was wise and smart and experienced. You had seven billion people to choose from, and probably half of those are adults, and half of those are men. Well, you just you, <laughs> any of them you could pick. Think of all the good ones that there are. No, I just don't get but, it. Man. Yeah, you like, did this. This is what you did. This is the thing. If if you want to like, pitch like played as a joke, a kid gets great powers and has to do shit with them. It's like, well, you, you go the Spider-Man route, where it's a complete accident. He does the best he can with them, or the Shazam route where it's bestowed upon him by a very wise wizard. You're like, no, no, you need to write something better <laughs> than that. This is like, or no. You, you have, He's pure of heart. You have okay? like the kids, you have like, like the wizard gets into a battle with the evil, evil person and he's going to die and he has to give the powers to someone and the only person who's around is the kid, right? Yeah. And so it's like, I, I got, you're the only one here. I, I'm going to die or turn to dust or whatever. I've got to give you these powers. Yeah. And then maybe he works a little harder to explain what's going on. Um, but yeah, this is... Uh, like he says, don't let the staff be destroyed uh, or it'll destroy Earth. Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe but, say that. It's just really quick. Yeah, if, if the staff breaks, then the world will be destroyed. The barrier to the evil realms will be, you know, lowered. You, know, you can't let this happen. Nice and simple. Well, that'd be nice, but no. Uh, anyway, Don't yeah, so it. he's like, oh, then those children squandered it. And you're like, yeah, I know, right? Sucks. <laughs> like, but anyway, moving on. Um, mm. We get the, the team of heroes trying to figure out what to do. And uh, Shazam's like, if we set up a meeting to negotiate, but then we grab one of them and use that to trade. And if, uh, and then uh, one of the other ones says, like, well, what if they sap our powers from us? And he says, well, we'll dodge. And then uh, Pedro says, but I suck at dodgeball. This is a check uh -huh. on dodgeball. You see, they set up that he, he's not good at dodging. I wonder where that will lead. No dodging needed. You guys are faster than... Well, you have super speed. Yeah, being bad at dodgeball is kind of pretty irrelevant when you're that fast. I, I, I like, uh, it's just, you're right, because that is the right of being like, nah, I've set something ah, up. See, I'm like, setting it up. Oh, you... He doesn't. He just needs it's to no. move really fast, like he's done in the past, and you're fine. You absolute morons. Gotta move fast like he does in the past. Yeah, what well, he's... Yeah. Uh, Gotta catch them all, because he's Danny Fan. <sighs> so, um, then, you're thinking to yourselves, well, they can't talk to the, the gods anyway. They're stuck in the dome now, so what are they going to do? And you're like, ah, well, uh, Dala says, so, Steve the Pen says, this paper is a stack of magical parchment. You write a Ooh. message on the magical paper, and you say the name of the god you'd like to talk to, and then the paper will fold into a paper bird and fly to the god. Wow, that is incredibly convenient to have. Yeah, that's, yeah. Just, have that's exactly what you need right at this wow. moment. Wow, that's great. Godly email. Oh, right. And he's going to wow. be like, I have questions for Yahweh. Can you please ask him? I have questions about what he what, did. Yeah, what if you try to send to a god who isn't real, like all yeah. of them? But like, if, if you Ace. had to say, like, oh, that's how you could find out which one was oh, the you, real you one. say go, and then it just doesn't move. And the pad looks at you like, sorry, dude. <laughs> like, sorry. Like, what? But hey, yeah, Steve, uh, is there something here that we should protect that they shouldn't get their hands on? Because that wizard kind of told me something, but he was cut off. Could you, like, tell me about that? That would be that would be grand. And now you might start thinking, oh, wait, why don't they just, you know, talk to Wonder Woman? And wait for it, because that's exactly what Shazam says. Like, hey, why, why don't we contact Wonder Woman? She's like, she's like a demigod, so it kind of counts. And then nothing happens, and they don't. Yeah. They don't even mention it. Oh. And uh, mm. she's the god that reignites the fucking thing at the end. So, you know, yes, it would have counted. Uh, and you could have brought her in. But you just didn't. Don't know why. We'll never know um, why. Um, wait, it might actually be worse. Aren't they implying that in the end that he actually did send one of these letters? But it just took her that long to get there? Or does she say she didn't get one of the letters? I don't remember. I don't think she mentions it, but you could infer that's why she is there at that time, but that, you're right, does yeah. make it way worse. Yeah, there that means she just didn't get involved until it was safe. And she was like, a dump? Been there, done that. Scary. So, they start writing. Uh, I guess we'll not talk about what they've written until it gets read. So, uh, Freddy and uh... the wizard are brought to the sisters. Um, don't know why it took so long. What were they in the cells for? What were the sisters doing? They came home, sat down, and then they just waited for a bit until they got Freddy and the wizard. Like, what, what's going on? They waited for the other scene to be over. Oh, okay. That's nice of them. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Helen Mirren opens with, are the other champions children like yourself? And then Freddy says, no. No one's stupid enough to grant primordial powers to kids. Which is a really weird line, because you're right there. Yeah, they already saw you. Uh, you know, so, like, okay, as fine. much as he's kind of tongue in cheek, it's just like, yeah, but that doesn't doesn't work. You have the power, you fool. And if you wanted to be like, well, to be fair, uh, he was given it by the other kid. Like, yeah, but that's pretty much the same for all of them. So, you know, like the only one that was given it by a wizard was Billy. But whatever, that's going to change by the end of this movie. Too. And she she says, give us their names. And he goes, okay, well, uh, there's Brett Bri Briar and uh, Bert Briar. Uh, you you writing this down? And then uh, Anthea's like, he's lying. And I just thought to myself, like, man, they're asking him to give the names. And there's, they're not forcing him to, like, with the magical mind control. So he could actually have just gone away with saying, like, okay, promise you won't hurt them. Okay? And then they go, yeah. And then you go, right. And then you can name people who either don't exist or 
maybe people who like could actually deal with them. Like if you said, I, I don't mm -hmm. know, I guess you can't do this, but if you said Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent, it's right? Like, <laughs> yeah, like uh, especially could, Clark honestly. Kent. But yeah, you know, you know, it's like, oh well. Um, but even because it's kind of fucked up, he says Brett Briar and Bert Briar because if they actually went after the bullies, that's who he's naming, and killed them. Like, oh, whoops. right. Oh, yeah. Oof. Whoops. Mm. Whoops to do. No, anyway, the uh, movie were like, see, they got their comeuppance, those bad bullies. They got killed by the gods. <laughs> like, oh, God. So then you, you think, like, wait, you they're dying? why are they uh, fucking around? Why don't they just use the chaos power to get them to do it? And yeah, that's eventually what happens. Lucy Lou says, oh, I'll just use the power. And it's like, why are we wasting they time? They really didn't want to stand up. They yeah. really didn't want to and stand up. They were up. really and comfy. <laughs> And to be clear, they want the names of the other champions that they already saw flying towards them earlier, right? Yes. That's what they're doing here? And we never find out why. They don't do anything with the information because they never get it. It's, I think it might just be bullshit. I, I really don't know. I can't answer these questions. I can answer a lot of questions, but not all of them. <laughs> um, so she's preparing to do the thing, and uh, he's like, oh god, what's she going to do? And the wizard said she has the power of chaos. It enters a man's, uh, it enters a man's mind and shatters it whole. That's but not, not chaos. <laughs> I just don't get it. Yeah, like it's like it's just mind control. Why are you describing it? Yeah. Is, is that your way of trying to make it sound chaotic? Um, sure. So he says, "Well, my mind is already trash, so I'd like to see you try." Nobody has the balls to handle my brain. Why? Why is he so cocky? They wrote that. I That's no a line idea. they wrote. That, that is, is a line. They wrote. Oh. Oof. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, and then he starts like desperately screaming. In a way that I was kind of like, damn, this looks like it's pretty heavy. And then he says, Destiny's Child did it better. Meaning... The yeah, well, I missed the that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And so I was just like, what are we all here? He's like screaming, but then he says like, haha, this band sucks. Okay. And then Helen Mirren's like, he's stronger than he looks. Bugs the hell out of me that for some reason Freddy is the one that could resist the chaos mind control yeah. of a god. It's like, okay. But Why? That's an Why would he be able to do that? No Freddy. reason. Pure of heart or something. Yeah, he's super he boosted have because of point. Shazam powers. Is that their idea, him. maybe? I don't know. No, he, doesn't yeah, all the, he doesn't have him all the, at this point. Yeah, taking away. <laughs> no, I mean, no. like, there's like some kind of mental thing for, like for I don't know. I'm just trying to make something up like the movie does, okay? Come on. No, you're not very good at it, just like the movie. <laughs> Damn it. It's, <laughs> it's a psychological. So I can write a Shazam movie. That's what guys, I heard. Guys, the power that was supposed to go to his legs went to his brain instead. Oh, okay? no. One oh, no. The other legs. It's like when you go blind, your other senses take exactly. over. Exactly. Exactly. Very good meme. <sighs> anyway, um, <laughs> like it's such a wide. But uh, as he's getting there, he starts saying B -b 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 "Billy, Billy," and then it's like, "Oh shit!" You got the first name of the first person, the uh, surname, and then the stupid letter arrives, and she goes, "Wait, or stop." Wait. Or it's like, "Why? Why?" <laughs> yeah. It's you can do both working. at the same time. Yeah, you could read it's, while yeah. he's saying the names. I think you're not even the one who's the doing it. You can just read a letter. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You could just wait to read the letter, too. Yeah, or that. That's some big brain stuff right it's now. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> so uh, she reads it. And she reads it deadpan, Helen Mirren, God style. Um, this, was a, this was a part that uh, Shad said he found quite funny. What did you guys think? I thought I wanted to die. What? What are we? Oh, yeah. What was that funny? Was what it just wasn't? Goes on and on, and it's just a bunch Helen, of gibberish uh, because that Helen stupid Mirren pen is reading the letter was yeah yeah um reading the letter yeah this and it's this it's just it just goes on and on. It's just gibberish because the pen was just writing down what they were saying, and My just issue is that it I takes don't like thirty. You wouldn't entertain it. Yeah, yeah that's, what a... I, that's what I was finally getting to. It's like, there's no way she would even do that. She's like, that's just bullshit. Stop it. Now go back this to This is a chaos potentially magic. funny idea that's sort of housed in an environment that it just can't exist or make sense. When, do you guys remember Night at the Museum 2? Mm -hmm. When the Pharaoh guy, who's the bad guy, um, he, he's the bad dude, right? And so they tell him about the cube of Rubik's and how it's like a, a like this thing that's got a lot of power and everything. And so he's like, ah, yes, what is this cube of Rubik's? 
Like that makes like that makes some sense because he's you know being tricked and he doesn't know about this stuff and he's inquisitive. But but here it, it's like there's an idea here. But the film is like, why why would they send the letter with all of those errors in it? It's like, I don't know, can I believe that they're all that stupid and they wouldn't make sure that the letter was done right? And of course, Helen Mirren, she wouldn't read it out like that. She's too, you know, experienced and wise and sagacious or whatever. And proud, it, it wouldn't I think, work. to read out a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, it just, it, mm. wouldn't, it wouldn't work. But it's one of those, like, like I, I see the joke, but this isn't the place where this joke can work. Not very you, have, you have planted the seed in soil where it cannot flourish. Yeah. And is Stephen yeah. the pen so dumb that he doesn't understand that they're trying to say don't write that part, but he just writes it anyway? I think it's more he, might, he might be following Steve. instructions exactly. Oh, it's yeah, Steve's in the clear. You, you okay, I can take that back. I, it's definitely more on them, but I think it's also on Steve. Why? What did Steve do wrong? Because he knows everything, but he doesn't. But he doesn't know the when they're saying no, don't write that. That he he was told to do it though. Hmm. I and besides, suppose. just because he knows every, if we're gonna go down the road of he know, route of he knows everything, then I don't, I don't, I don't know if that one, like, like intentions and what the letter should say and things like that, because it's a theoretical letter, but. Um, well, yeah, no, I just all, mean like when they like, say no, we're not gonna write that part. He continues to write it anyway. It's such a small point. Well, if they had curious. said, if they had said, Steve, don't write that part down, then was that a crow? <laughs> Did someone just make a crow what? noise? <laughs> what? Who made a crow sound? What? No, that was Did my squeaky just... chair. Okay, I was talking and I thought someone <laughs> was... made a crow. There was like a crow that went... So I didn't no. know if that no, was a crow No, I just need a new chair. Not. That's that's. Okay. It's, uh, it, we can call it the crow chair for now. <laughs> All right, that's fine. That's fine. I don't know what I was chair. talking about, but... I'm, yeah. I'm fine to admit that Steve is in the clear. That's, I, um, I think you cool conceded too that. hard. I'm a little. I've been convinced a little bit by your argument, especially the. Uh, <laughs> the don't well, in that write case, that. I'm still right. <laughs> well, 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 it depends on what they were. What it, I think it depends on the context in which that word was said. Maybe if they said it to the person who was saying it, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, well, I think it's kind of strange. To move to the next thing because I find it hyper cringe. Uh, the letter ends with the uh, saying. I feel good about this. Me too. Anyone else want a Gatorade? Do we have red? He reads that, and it's just oh, like, yeah. uh, end of joke. And then, don't know why they did this, but Lucy Lou angrily charges at Freddy and says, what is this Gatorade? Is it a weapon? Uh, uh. And it's like, look, Lucy, it doesn't even make sense in the context of which she read it. Anyone else want a Gatorade? Do we have red? That doesn't sound at all like they're preparing a weapon. What do you mean? No. That's, that's dumb yeah. shit. And it's like, it's oh, we get dumb. it? Because it's culture difference. And you're like, no, shut up. Stop it. Down. Stop it. Enough. And then she's like, sister, they have suggested a deal, and we will meet, but the humans are not to be trusted. And why are you going? Well, to get herself deliberately caught, right? That's her next plan, so that she can get the seed. <clears throat> but she could have done that at any point Can't anyway. See. Anyway, they leave, they, they, they go, fuck this. They leave the wizard and Freddy to die in the dragon pit. And it's like, you've not done anything with the wizard this whole time after he repaired the staff. Why didn't you kill him? That's what I was kind of referring to. They just decided to kill him now. Mm -hmm. They were Freddy. They could have gotten the names of the heroes if they wanted, but they only got the first name of one of them, and then they killed him. It's like, well, you know, right. I don't get it. None of that makes sense. It feels like we've forgotten their motives again. Fine, all right. Um, mm -hmm. and so they get dropped into the guard, the guardian of the Garden of Atlas's pit, where he paralyzes people with fear and then eats them, I guess, or burns them, or what? Yeah, you know, either something whatever. like that. He takes uh, a long ass time to do it, though. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but before he, he can breathe them, fire. he's about to. He's about to do it. Uh, Axis Lady changes the whole nature of the entire building, I guess, and it, the, you can see that the dragon slams into a wall, and she saves them from mm -hmm. it. And it's just kind of like so. There she goes again, just changing the physics of well, not the physics, the physical world to her whims, and uh, nobody notices in this building except for the people involved. Somehow, That's good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's Imagine how much affordable housing she could single-handedly create 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess if her world's destroyed and they're like the only people in it, there's a lot of affordable housing. Well, yeah, but if she if she hangs out in the regular human world, you could just get a bunch of materials and put them down and she can make some buildings. But um yeah. I don't know if they'd be up to code. He Maybe. says uh Freddie says hero to her just like she did to him earlier in the in the film because of the thing with the bullies. And then that's what she said, and I'm focusing on something else this time. Because to be fair, I didn't actually need your protection. I was gonna rearrange those boys into little organs when you stopped it. And I was just like, why did you put that in there? Was it did you need yeah. to do that? I think I thought it was funny. I think that's it. Yeah. There's like And it's we... a little bit of oh by the way, I didn't need to be saved. That's what I mean. That's the part that I'm, I'm just like, you could have didn't need like like you're trying to appreciate each other for the good things you've both done. And then she's like, to be fair though, I didn't I didn't need you. Yeah. To let you know. It's like Yeah. I didn't need you stink. Just to be clear, I'm a woman and women don't need to be saved by men. I just want to yeah, make that clear. I'll have you know. She gets uh, mopey and shit when she loses her powers, though. She needs heroes then. No, she is not. Oh, no. Uh, like, this would have been more enduring, uh, endearing, sorry, um, though I did endure. Um, uh, this would have been more endearing if Freddy was the one to point out that she didn't need saving and uh, she didn't feel the need to point that out because it was the intention and all that. But because she points it out, it kind of kills what they were trying to go for with this scene, unfortunately. Yeah, just felt a bit off to me. It's like, oh, well, uh, whatever you were building there feels kind of stilted now. Um, mm -hmm. So Shazam meets up with Helen Mirren. Asleep. With the ex expectation of the trade being, uh, he said in the letter that he'd give up his power and all of his family's powers in exchange for Freddy. And so Helen Mirren assumes to agree with that, but of course he's going to spring a trap that involves capturing Helen Mirren. That's his idea. And so their conversation begins with him saying, quiet one she is, because she arrives without him realizing. And then she says in response, I find it the most effective way to slit an enemy's throat. God, she's so cringe. <laughs> <laughs> she's my new Sonic OC. I don't know why we still have these characters. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Like, if you want to make an evil for evil's sake, evil, evil, but fucking The Last Wish just showed you how to do it. Yeah. Go copy corner. them. There you go. Because what the hell is this? Like, wow, you just turned up without making a sound. She's like, I like to slice my enemy's throats with silence. It helps me murder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Um, yeah, then, then he says, you're upset. Wizards took your powers or whatever, but, like, you're taking this pretty personally. He says, if thieves stole your coin at night and fled, you would give chase, would you not? And let's say they dropped the money on the ground and your neighbor picked it up and kept it. Now imagine it's not money, but the lifeblood of your father and the last breath of your mother and the power of all the gods, the magic of the entire realm. And now this magic courses through you, and you have the goal to believe you deserve it. And I was just thinking, man, like, oh, there's a lot in there that we can That's use. Kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plenty. yeah. It's like, a, the analogy is a bit long, but yeah, like that's there. There's a there's a thing to talk about here. There's like a th there's like there's like, like a who, thing. Does, does magic belong to anybody if it can be moved from one person to another? Who who originally has it? There's a conversation on that. There's the whole, like, Atlas is dead, and so all these powers are, belong to several gods that are gone, so who does it pass to? Is it, like, bloodlines, or is it just rights by being a god? Or can it be people who save lives? We've saved loads of lives. And by the way, Helen Mirren seems to have some recognition of lives. Uh, th th this will come up in a second, I'll have a quote for it, but it's, it, just keep it in mind that, like, that's something she does seem to care about. And then she said, like, character-wise, you think you deserve it. We know Billy doesn't, so that's something to talk about as well. We don't talk about any of these things. No. What he says in response is, you're very menacing, and that goes a long way. But today, I wanted to talk about compromise. Like, ha, -ha. Oh, mm -hmm. And then she says, there is no compromise. And he goes, I knew you'd say that. Wisdom of Saruman. Ugh. Uh, Kill me again. Right now, Seriously, this is like my slamming brain. your head against name the out of your desk. goddamn mouth. It's it's so fucking painful. There's no actual conversation. It's just fuckery. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Sam is so stupid. Yeah, yeah. He's so stupid. Unreal. Um. So he says, "Give us back, Freddy. Take down the dome, and we won't have to annihilate you." And then she says, "You play the part of a man, but you don't play it well. Give us the powers. You're no leader. You're a lost boy who likes to make believe he's a warrior." 
kind of like I hey, like that. It's opened up again a chance to have that conversation, right? Like it's almost like we reset again after the goofy. It's like all right now, dude, come mm -hmm, on, come mm -hmm. on. And then do you know what he says? Oh yeah. Well, I've seen all the Fast and Furious movies, lady, and it's all about family. Slam. And oh, then awkward shit. silence, yeah, and then she movie. even looks around and is like, "Oh, what's what's going on? Where's?" And the you know, meme is the family didn't turn up on time. <laughs> but then they do yeah, turn up. And he says, up. "Family, that was the signal, guys. We discussed this, and then they show up again. Another first draft." That joke happens Joked. again later when he's like, he's talking, he wants Helen Mirren to do something and she doesn't do it straight away and he starts repeating and I was just like, please don't do this joke again. No. I'm so tired. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, the, uh, it's like, you, you have that chance again, then you just go hyper goofy mode. And some people are like, did they actually say that? It's like, yes, that's, that's a quote. That's one to one. It's yep, really fucking it annoying and oh, lame. Boy. I think he, he even said, like he says like family three times because they don't show up. It's like yeah. so, you really, really get it. Really if you didn't out, get it, yeah. you get it. And so he's like, "You forgot about my family, didn't you, goddess?" It's like, why would she? Her whole intention here is to collect their powers. Yeah, what do you mean she right forgot there. about them? Yeah. And then she says, "No, you <laughs> forgot about mine." And then Lucy Lou surprise <laughs> zaps um, Pedro, so he's lost his powers now. Remember, he's bad yep. at dodging. But the thing is, it doesn't really work because he didn't even know she was there. Like there was, there was no attempt yep. to dodge. He just got hit. Um, and yeah. yeah, so and this is again like, like a filming thing. Lucy Lou hits one of them. Power's gone. And then we show like him falling over, and going, "Oh no, I've lost my powers." And then we show Helen Mirren, and she kicks out uh, Shazam. He flings across the room. And I guess everybody. And then just we show standing. Mary looking at Pedro, going, "Oh no, Pedro! Like, are you okay?" While the others are looking around, what's Lucy Lou doing? Fire again! They're all it's there. A, uh, it's, yeah. it's a big problem with this film and a lot of its action scenes is that there will just be moments where people are like standing around and they don't really know what to do. It's like they had no direction. They didn't know how to account for them. You've got a lot of people in a scene at any given time and like the camera focuses on one thing that's happening and then it's like everything else is on pause while that's going on. Really annoying. Yeah, it's, it's just not, it's not good. It's an easy win especially. Right there. Egregious example of this later. Let's in go like zap, 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 Donzo. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, so then, uh, two of them, yeah, one of them runs up to attack Lucy Lou. She gets distracted, and then the other one zaps her with electric, and she flings across the room and gets, I presume, knocked out for the next five minutes because you don't see her at all until she gets back out yeah. of there. Which tells me it's like you could have taken the staff that whole time. Yeah. She's gone for like minutes. That staff has the power to just take powers away from people. If you grab it and take her powers off her, you nullify her. That'd be pretty good. That'd be very good. Mm -hmm, oh well. Mm -hmm. Um, and it annoys me by the way. Helen Mirren, like, she grabs the tables in front of him, flings it, and then kicks um Shazam, and he flings across the room. And it's just like, again, you have super speed, my dude. She doesn't. I was just keep surprising you. Why does everything surprise you guys? And if they surprise you, why do you need so long to come back? You just should go like. Ah, zip, and now, then you're back. I would judge this choreography-wise, the fight between Hell Mirren and the three god, uh, well, the three Shazams, but it doesn't. Uh, she wants to get caught, so you can kind of dismiss any dumb thing she does throughout it as that, which she does a lot of dumb shit. But she wants to be caught, so she wants to come across as though she's being knocked out and that they can take her away. Mm. So we'll we'll give them that, right? <laughs> but it gets way worse for, than that. Uh, one of the lines she has, though, that I found curious, which I was referencing earlier, she says, We've taken the power from two of you already, and now two of you must die, and for what? So you can keep playing soldier. So she thinks it's bad that people would die, even humans. Yeah, it seems that way. That is the seems one line like of the whole film yeah. that, I, that I was just like, why don't we get into that? Hello? Ella Mirren's Let's character seems to about actually, this potentially yeah. interesting thing. Yeah. She resents humans for taking the power, but she seems to be against killing them. That's super interesting. Do yeah, something. Just... Mm-hmm. No, oh, we don't. We don't have anything. So yeah, no, next only joke, at least. We assume she pretends to be knocked out and they take him all to the, the Rock of Eternity before Lucy Lou can get to her. Through one of the secret doors. And you're like, okay. And then I think now is the time to talk about it. You're like so they can go to the Rock of Eternity. You're like, yeah. And it's like, and the Rock of Eternity has a series of doors that lead to all places in the world. And you're like, yeah. And it's like, so the dome really isn't doing anything to them. 
Yeah. I guess <laughs> not. Like... Unless they haven't unless they haven't mapped out another place where they could Oh unless wait, no, they the, have. They go the... for the Well yeah, they know about the labyrinth though, but if they I'm trying to think of Yeah. If they've ever been through a door in the film that led to another place on Earth. But there must be one, and they can all search through the millions of doors themselves until they find one. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Mm. I just thought that, that that's just something that casually happens. It's just like, wow, that, mm. that really does cancel out the, the, the pain of the dome. You could even get civilians through that way, right? Like, out of the dome, but... Sure. Yeah, and also, if you can open the entrance in a porta potty surely you can then change where that entrance is to being outside the dome, even if you're not thinking about all the other doors. Well, you could move the porta potty places. Well, it's in the name. Yeah. You open from the, the door, Latin porto, yeah. which means to carry. You get like two hundred <laughs> civilians into the room, close it, and then you have some other Shazam open it outside the dome because they would have gone outside at that point uh, to then yeah. connect it back to the Rock of Eternity's entrance, right? Like, there's so many mechanics that they don't care to even think about. Anyway, so she pretends to be knocked out, and uh, I don't know. I, I was so lost at this point in the film, so I, I thought I'd missed something. They just put it behind metal bars in the Rock of Eternity. Yep. The woman who can literally control everything with telekinesis down to its elements. Like, yeah, a god who can punch Shazam and beat him up and make him fly across places. And like, yep, this just metal cage door. This will be enough. Whatever. Yeah, it's going to be enough. Know. We're just going to all leave and no one's going to stay uh, to watch her. It's, 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 it's be so fine. bizarre. Surely the I don't film know. doesn't. Why did they make us think that all of them thought that she was fine in a just normal cage? Why? I don't know. I don't think they're that stupid. I mean, they are kids, but, like, damn. I just don't get it. There's nothing in the stupid. film that implies that that would ever work at all, and they just believe it will. That's that. And, of course, she breaks out okay. immediately uh, with her powers. <laughs> what? Yeah, maybe two minutes later. I don't yeah. know. Like, I seriously want to know from David directly, like, what's going on, man? <laughs> I don't have anything <laughs> for this one. As an audience member, what am I supposed to think? What did you want me to think? Yeah. Uh, the other things we've kind of able to speculate, but this one I've got nothing. I really have nothing at all. I've got no clue. I, I don't no. know. I guess it's just really shit writing. It's not like um, any of the other examples like uh, Skyfall or um, Dark Knight or Loki in Avengers, where you can understand how they were going to be doing some stuff. Obviously, the shaky ones are best in some of those examples, too. But this one, nothing. Nothing to work with. Um, all they nope. say to her is, Freddy, for the staff and your freedom, and stop the dome. Okay. Okay. Right. And then we cut to them writing up another letter. And they want to send it to the remaining two sisters. And he goes, Dear daughters of ass, hatless. Ha <laughs> ha, boom. Uh -huh. Got, um... Dun, dun, uh, I hate it, this so we much. We need a teenage <laughs> consultant. We really do. Like, just, yeah. just give them the script. So, like, do you speak like this? No. Like, no that's no. cringe. I'd never talk like that. Who wrote this? <laughs> Who wrote this? Yeah, and, and as uh, uh, Dahl is walking away, cause she's going to get some food for their prisoner, you hear in the background him saying, man, Steve's grammar makes me sound so much smarter. Also, how are you guys sisters? The age difference is noticeable. And slightly upsetting, not gonna lie. That's ups Hilarious. upsetting. I'm not sure. I don't know. I guess, like, they should all, like, how come Helen Mirren looks like the old lady, and Lucy Liu looks like a middle aged lady, and Anthea looks like a young chick? It's like that, that's a little unfair, I guess, you know? Well, you know, yeah, I gods, did maybe wonder that. At very different times, right? Thousands of years apart. I guess. It's ultimately know. inconsequential, but I did have that thought when I was watching it too. I'm like, oh, they're sisters? Oh, okay. I, I'm, hmm, all right. Also, so, as um, someone pointed out, they literally had teenagers on set they could have consulted. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're <laughs> right. Dude, when, when they had the kids say, like, do we have to play war games when he's talking about a FPS? I was just like, so does that kid just not play video games? Because he could have told them. He could be like, we don't, we don't yeah. call him that. <laughs> yeah, Call of Duty, it's called a war game. <laughs> Hey guys, war you want to play game. the war games tonight? You're like, what are you? What? That? Uh, <laughs> like, I'm fuck? sick of war games. Why do we always have to use guns? <laughs> Hello, fellow teenagers. Uh, that's what I mean. It's like, <laughs> let's play Halo. It's like another war game. You're like, oh, uh, yeah, guns. You that to you? You just be like, are you okay? <laughs> so uh, yeah, she obviously breaks out and she goes to get the uh, the apple. 
and then they're all panicking. They're like, where could she be? Where did she go? It's like, man, if only we all had super speed and we could check the whole fucking rock immediately. Oh well. Nope. They hear a noise, and they run into the room of doors, and they realize that's where she's escaped. So, yeah. And now you're thinking to yourselves, wait, why did she need to be captured to go to the Rock of Eternity? It's like, well, because she can't go to the Rock of Eternity. Why? Uh, well, uh, well, because... Reasons. So this is a genuine thing for me. I'm like, is it that there's a barrier for her to walk in herself? She has to be carried in by one of these guys? Is that what they're why trying to say? Why would that be? Or are they trying to a... say that she can't open the door to the Rock of Eternity, she needs to get one of them to do it so that she can go then through the door. It's like, that makes the most sense. It's like, no, that can't be it, because there's a literal fucking door in their labyrinth that leads directly to the yeah. Rock of Eternity. So, nope. I don't know. It's, uh, it's I don't awkward. Know. I have no clue. And just to Considering clarify, how she... uh, that door is always to the labyrinth. It never changes, because the, even the, uh, the guy says, no, that just leads to a labyrinth that goes nowhere. It's like, it clearly doesn't go nowhere, what do you mean? Like, you just I don't know why he, yeah, he just assumed that the labyrinth say. goes nowhere. You have super speed, yeah. just check why out the whole thing. This? That's what mapping means. Yeah, yeah. It, it does blow my mind that he could have run into the <laughs> Sisters of Atlas so much earlier. Or he could have run into the Wizards so much earlier. Yep. Holy yep. fuck. <clears throat> That's pretty funny. So, wizard. how does she get from her original realm to Earth? Walked. But she, but she can't get to the Rock of Eternity. Yeah, you can't walk there. You can't walk. <laughs> can't, yeah, you can't get there by walking because you can't walk there. Of course you can what walk from the God confusing. realm to the human realm. You can't walk from the human realm to the Rock of Eternity. Yeah, the Rock of Eternity is a special place. It's different. <laughs> I don't oh. know. <laughs> <laughs> uh... And then, yeah, one of the characters goes, I thought we brought her in too easily. She wanted to get caught. <sighs> Thanks. So tropey. All Thanks. right. Filled with you should have said something. You should have mentioned it. Yeah, probably. Just... Like, guys, this seems really, uh, seemed really easy, what we just did. I thought that'd be more difficult. I thought we'd have a bit more of a struggle there. <laughs> when they broke out the wizard, uh, sorry, when Anthea broke out the wizard and uh, Freddy from Spooky Dragon, she said that they need to follow the instructions of going right, left, left, and then follow the right wall to the door. They forgot these instructions somehow and get lost. Yeah. And then he's We lost. remembered it and we had to watch a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this wasn't, our lives wasn't dependent on this information. Um, so yeah, he, he's like, oh, we're lost. Thanks, Bozo. And then he goes, who's the wizard here? Why is the wizard Doesn't talking mean anything. like that? Why, why wouldn't the wizard be like, shut the fuck up? Because it's it's that it's that terrible modern writing where everyone speaks in these contemporary ways. No one seems wise or aged. Uh, well, no, at least Rings of Power part. tried. It did try. That's all right. They tried. Bad. Um, but yeah, then they clearly aren't following the right wall, and they end up at the door. Really annoyed me because I was like, that's the one thing I never <laughs> remember saying. It's like, yeah, well, fuck you. Um, fuck you for paying attention. And then Helen Mirren walks through that very door that they just arrived at with the golden apple, and they hide, and they're like, oh no, she has the golden apple. She's not supposed to have that. That's supposed oh, no. to be in a safe place. And they both look at each other, and they go, Billy, like Billy fucked up, and she got the apple. It's like, did you tell him? Did you yeah, tell did him you about tell him? the apple? You cunt? Why'd you keep doing this? Like, there's all these important items that you just don't tell him the, the value of. So when they get lost, it's like playing like, oh. a game and no one tells you the rules, and they they're like, "Yeah, of course I failed. It, yeah. You didn't tell me the rules. Sorry, I didn't know a bishop could only move diagonally. How was I supposed to guess that shit? It doesn't <laughs> even look like a bishop. Fuck you." Oh, this is actually. I didn't even. It's much worse than I thought it was. Right. So they see all the doors in front of them, oh. and they're starting to test them out, and it's not working out well. And then Shazam walks up to the door, the one we need, and uh, the guy goes, "Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. don't need to worry about that one. That one just leads to a labyrinth with nothing in it," which we said was really dumb. But then, Mary says, wait, <laughs> like, like a Greek labyrinth? Oh, <laughs> like, God. Why would give a shit about things being Greek? Uh, uh, it's just, it's just many like, kinds of labyrinths. Like and, um, Theseus? And again, like, it wasn't bad enough, uh, Shazam then says, guys, I smell porta potty. Meaning, oh, yeah, that's a... they went through the porta potty <laughs> door, which got a smell onto Helen Mirren that followed through to that door. Is that what they're suggesting? 
Yeah, yeah but it's well, stupid because there's no porter potty in there. There's no poop. No. There's no poop to stank. You're right. But what a there's fitting no metaphor. Stank. It's just what a plastic. No poop to stank. Yeah. But what a fitting metaphor for this film. Follow the stink of shit and you will Follow find the... your plot. Oh my Follow god. Follow the poop stank. And the reveal is they never find it. Yeah. Whoa. Um, so yeah, the the apple, they've got it, and they are all arrived, all three of them, and she's like, It's over, sisters, we can restore our realm. And it, it's because I've already said how bad Lucy Liu is, but so Hellbird says that, and then Lucy Liu goes, Or we plant it in theirs and destroy their realm. It's like, just like, why? Why? <laughs> why? Why did you do that? <laughs> so evil. And yeah, and then Anthea's like, no, that's not what we agreed to. And it's just like, why would you even? You've got one apple. Restore why would you your want realm. To do it? Especially you? when you know that that's going to be good for you and putting it in Earth. You know? I don't know that that's going to pan out very well. Oh. And, uh... I mean, as we see, it doesn't. So they, they're arguing over what to do with the apple, and it pans over to the front door where the wizard and Freddy are, because they're going to be like, okay, we're going to steal it. And so Freddy goes to steal it, and, and it's like, what the fuck? And you might, as an audience member, be like, why the fuck's Freddy doing it? The wizard should do it, obviously. And you yeah, might think, obviously. Um, as the writer does, oh, right, uh, you shouldn't go, uh, I should go. And, and, and Freddy says, oh, because, I'm, because the cripple doesn't know, uh, he's not exactly some good sneak thief. Um, is that is that why? And I was thinking to myself, like, it's not even just that you've got one leg that doesn't work perfectly, but you're a kid. He's an adult. Yeah. But like, we didn't mm. even remember that. The writers don't even <laughs> like they're not even thinking <laughs> about that. They're just like, oh, whatever, because of his bad leg. It's like, no. But yes, also that make makes you bad at partially speaking. that. Yeah, that probably is a little bit of a dexterity penalty. Yeah, yeah and so um, be technical about that. Yeah. He says, yeah, okay, like one of my legs is too great, but your knees make crackling noises whenever you walk. And then the wizard yeah, exactly. like kneels and he goes, <laughs> "It's like what? <laughs> Where was that a thing?" <laughs> like, right thing now, Mola. Right, right now. now, exactly. Um, yeah. So insanity. I just think it's funny that the writer was like, "Oh, they'll take issue with this because he's crippled." It's like child. <laughs> like he should probably not be dealing with all this shit. I guess he's he's seventeen, but still, the wizard should probably do it. But never mind. We're gonna get him yes. to do it. Um. And so they continue arguing, and they say, if you plant the apple in Earth, it will t it'll disfigure into something monstrous, okay? Take that as information on its own. It's like, ah, well, the obvious thing then is to plant it in our realm, to restore it. Give us nice, happy flowers, sunshine, whatever. That's, that's what it does. We see it do it later. We, we will yeah, definitely be not be planting it on Earth if it, all it'll do is destroy Earth and give us nothing. Like, the, why? Yeah, it seems like a waste of that mm -hmm. apple. <laughs> but what does mm -hmm. Lucy yeah, do say back? Our love for our own realm is greater than our hatred for the humans from thousands of years ago, we can only assume. Yeah. Um, or not, or whatever. Maybe further back. We know, actually, no, it'd be thousands, yeah. We talked a little bit about how uh, in really, really bad scripts, human beings just don't talk to each other, or people don't talk to each other like people. So Lucy Lou's response is, that's, so remember, it would disfigure into something monstrous. She says... That's what humans are. It's only fitting that we bring our monsters to their world and do to them what they did to us. Or you could okay. restore your home. I d yeah, or you can, yeah. Exactly. That's what I mean, it's just like, oh, you're like insane. What do you- Kind of, you're just like cartoonishly evil and I can't take you seriously. This has gone well beyond. We can restore our- Why don't you care about our realm? What's going on? Like, I am just so angry and vengeful. You're like, no, this is just clown stuff. Like, well, come on, work with me. It's What's going on? <laughs> So stupid. And uh, then she follows up with all humans are villains. Is evil okay. humans. Yeah. Okay. So, riveting character in Lucy Lucy. Uh, she says, okay. they actually pray for the gods to absolve them, for order, for peace, when all they do is dismantle in return. And then uh, Helmer's like, a a Anthea, I want you to take the apple and plant it in our garden. Like, basically ignoring Lucy Lou. It's like... Um, unfortunately, that's when Freddy knocks shit over and reveals that he's actually trying to steal the apple. Meaning that it had the wizard done it, it would have worked out just fine. I can't so, believe they actually made the knocking over thing. Yeah. It's like, really? She was about to turn that. around anyway. Like, you didn't need this. Just have it a bad timing thing or whatever. Don't... 
not funny. Stop it. Then uh, Lucy Lou's like, you see, you put your trust in Anthea and she betrays us. So I guess she's talking about the fact that you must have figured he's, Anthea let them out of the dragon pit. Yeah, apparently. I guess. No, fucking... So then uh, Helen Mirren goes to kill Freddy and he's like panicking. He's like, oh no. And then they all go, wait, what's that? And they all look over at the, the violin that's on fire. Because that was from Rock yeah. Eternity. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't need... They just put that there for, for the lulz? Well, they said it's to, to distract them, so he can use his super speed to grab the, the staff. It's like, you can do that anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they use his super speed. speed. doesn't really seem like it requires much of a... Yeah. So you wasted time just getting that stupid violin yep. all the way here? Mm -hmm. it's even better than that, Mel. Aww. They super sped in to drop the violin and super sped out, yeah. waited for them to be distracted by it, and then super sped in to steal the staff. How fucking dumb is that? S super dumb. The big dumb, even. It's even it's even clunkier than that because they're distracted by a flaming violin in a room with a whole bunch of other flames going. So it's not even all that visually. Yeah, like it's not from unique. Everything else in the room. Uh, well, yeah, it is unique, but not... not like you know in a broad sense. Yeah. Yeah, in the Rock of Eternity, it stands out a lot more because it's all gray rock and everything mm -hmm. in that chamber. Not so much. Stupid. Anyway, they've got the staff now. It's like holy shit. Oh, this right. changes everything. Nice. Well, amazing. that was it was actually kind of easy. And then one of the most yeah, frustrating have, parts of the movie happens. That. He, um, he wants to toss it uh. to Freddy so that Freddy can say Shazam with it and get his powers back. You might be thinking, why don't we just get everyone out? That's probably the better thing to do. Use your super speed. That would be a great idea. So, we should yeah, do that in your play. We should do that instead. But you know, Shazam's like, nope. I will throw this to Freddy, and then he will do that. Throws it, and Lucy Lou just. It it honestly looks like she just extends her arm a little bit and just grabs it. Yeah. So, yeah. The scene is literally like, Helen has a staff. Shazam goes, Phew, I've got it now. Ha ha. And then throws it and Lucy Lou just takes it as though he threw it to her. And you, yeah, just, yeah. you yeah. sit there as an audience member like, what? Really Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Like, Why she didn't even need that? to like jump or get in the way. No, just like, no. oh, cool. Thank you. It was just a terrible idea. And then she sounds just like, oh. oh. And the uh, wizard... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not like it's a big deal or anything. I think wizard says, uh, Freddy, the crutch. And he, he puts the crutch on the staff, which counts as touching it, I guess, and says Shazam. And he gets his <laughs> I don't know about back. that. I don't, I don't, know that. I don't well, believe it 100%. Well, I wonder if you put the staff on the ground, and then everyone says yeah. Shazam. <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> Because, like, does, Only the, the, does the staff recognize that the crutch is, like, an extension of you? No, yeah. That's how oh my... it is to him. It'd be like if it fell on your car and you said Shazam, and then you turned into Shazam. <laughs> turned into a Transformer. But well, just... it, your car actually protects you from the lightning, so it probably wouldn't work. Oh, bad stuff, about... oh, yeah. damn. This is magic lightning. And you raise yeah. a valid point. How far does this go? Do I put it on the ground and that is connected to the earth, which is connected to the buildings, which is connected to the ocean, which is connected to everything oh, no. else, which is connected to everything else? Can anyone on earth say Shazam once that staff touches the ground? Or if holding the staff, if the, you're you holding the, the ground, staff. Yeah. yeah, anyone can become Captain Marvel. Well, the earth gets a big old lightning symbol on it because it's a Shazam now. <laughs> yes. It's, it's John Shazam. Yeah. Yeah. You, you fight of <laughs> Earth. Uh, John Shazam. So, anyway, with that blunder, um, Freddy just zooms out. Shazam zooms out with the wizard, and the three sisters are like, boo! But they have um, the staff, of course, and the apple. So, you know, overall, that's, that's the stakes now, even though it's just completely fucky and switches everything all the time. Hard to pay attention exactly. Um, yeah, which moves us to I guess the next act. <laughs> I think. <laughs> right. So, um, they, uh, yeah, yeah, you have Helen Mirren say, Calypso, you are not fit to wield this staff, and takes it off her. Then she takes it back off Helen Mirren and says, I'm more fit than you. You had them in your hands and you did nothing. Our sole purpose is to avenge our father, but everyone here has become weak. You're weak. weak. <laughs> You're weak. <laughs> so she summons weak. the dragon, the big wood dragon, to attack Earth. And Helen Mirren disagrees with her with the staff, the dragon, people dying needlessly. Does nothing. Does nothing. Mm hmm. 
kind of like, okay. And you all know, because you've seen it, I mean, people all, you know what happens to Helen Mirren the next thing, time she yep. has screen time. So it's yep. kind of curious, right? Like, what is she doing? Why is she, is she doing anything? Why are you trying harder to stop this from happening? It's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. All right. Very important. So kind of doesn't make any sense at all, but whatever. They would have super sped down into the labyrinth, gone through that door, and into the room of doors. Right, that's where they are. But the dragon's been summoned, and so it shows us them getting out of that door, and the dragon bursts through it himself into the Rock of Eternity. So again, I'm just like, so there is nothing stopping you from going from there to the Rock of Eternity. You can just go through, even if you're a fucking huge ass dragon. I guess. How does a dragon fit through? I it don't. Really does, see that's it what it I was can. thinking as well. Yeah, like, it looks like it's like starts like to destroy. Because you figure if you destroy the door, you destroy the portal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see, the dragon sucked in. Uh huh. It's yeah. belly. That's it. Now it all makes sense. Apparently you can make these portals bigger, which would actually be even even easier to get people through it then. That's nice. Every time you say the room of doors, I keep thinking, like, oh, does he mean a hallway? I was like, oh, no, no, it's actually a room <laughs> full of doors. Oh, okay. Also, do they like, now just have, like a, cons uh, like, a, like, a doorway that's constantly open to yep. the, the godly place? Yep. Because it's broken? Yep. <laughs> Great. Get just so, to hang out there. They then open up a door to Earth <clears throat> and all get out, and it's their house. I don't know why, since they can choose from what I remember. I don't know why they did that, because it's just going to endanger their parents. And so they quick thinkingly, with the dragon on literally on their tail, they go, they run into their parents' room, and they're like, okay, parents, calm down, don't freak out. I'm Billy. And he just goes, guys, it's no time for secrets, so okay? You, we have to tell them the truth. Did you say um, a dragon literally on their tail? Mahler. Yeah. Yeah, Please. that's the phrase. That's what it means. Literally on their tail. That's I. I don't accept it. Yeah, on that's their tail. Madness. It refers to like right behind you. Madness. So but some might say on the they're on their no. tail when they're not really that close. I'm saying they are that. Close. Yeah, but that wouldn't be literally on their tail. No, that that's a different. I'm not referring to that literally. I'm talking about the literally of that meaning of that word. Uh, that phrase. Sorry. Literally, figuratively. No. On their tail refers to when someone's right behind you. Yeah, the figurative. I'm not saying like on their literal tails. That's madness. Well, how but do you, you distinguish just between literally being, figuratively. being right behind them as in on their tail or being on their tail as in chasing them? Well, as long as they aren't literally on someone's tail, it's not literal. Either yeah. way. Well, that's how that, I mean, that's the, the, the thing with the English language, right? On their tail means right behind. It's figurative. I mean, like I said, how do you draw the difference between on their tail is in chasing versus on their tail is in right behind. No, it's fine to have the distinction between those two things, but when you say literally, now that 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 completely overshadows everything. Now literally, you have to be on someone's tail. So what word am I supposed to use when I'm trying to say they are right on them instead of chasing them? Oh, I guess you could say right. You could say on their you could tail. say they're on their tail. That's fine. But if you say literally on their tail, I was like, well, at the, then it's then, then we've added literal to the mix. Yeah, but what word should I use? Well, or, right on their tail. To say yeah, it's on their tail. Well, I, that's well right it. on their tail. Right on their tail. The right is the emphasis part. Or else, because if you if you're using the phrase right on their tail in a figurative sense, which you were, but then you say literally, then essentially what you're mean literally the figurative thing. I want but the figurative known, thing went literally. I all, all I want it known is that it's like a meter away as opposed to several. Or like, do you think it's literally, literally? Do you think that literally would imply that it's closer necessarily? Yeah, because on their tail uh, in this instance, referring to just on them. But if they don't have a tail yeah, to be on, no, I like, know. It's right but that's behind them. I didn't, like, I didn't mean somebody they had said, a tail. My, my issue somebody is said, I'm that... like, I'll be two minutes, and then they said, I'll literally be two minutes. Does that imply that it is going to be a literally faster two minutes. two minutes, or does it mean exactly two well, minutes? Well, yeah, because the first one could have implied yeah, I... five, right? Because yeah. I, if you if you say, I'll just be a few minutes. Right, or I'll just be a second. Rather it, than say that I'll literally just be a second, one minute, right? it, you know, that no one... implies. That yeah, that, that, actually that's actually, minute. that is a really great example. That's how I'm using it. When someone says, I'll literally be two minutes, I don't think they mean they're going to be a passage of time. I think they mean accurately two minutes. Yeah, that, and I think that's the same principles applied here. Yeah, I'm, I'm I saying think I think using... we don't need to draw it that hard for colloquial English. 
I don't know. I I, le I really like my literals. Well, I, I, really I actually, like them. I'm just really know. glad that example's there because I actually would want to keep that one. If I say I'm literally going to be two minutes and someone goes, <laughs> you're not literally two minutes. Like, well, no, are I... you, so your position, because for me, this is an element of how does the word literally get applied to figurative language because those things are in opposition to each other. And I think that literal should supersede the figurative meanings that have been used. I understand. Um, but the way this seems to have happened is like when you have I'll be two minutes or I'll be right behind or I'll be these, these different things, a lot of the time people can mean them to mean much further away than what is implied by the statement. So a literal almost being read is how read is how understood meaning on their tail as in right on them or be two minutes as in 120 seconds uh, and i wouldn't want you to interpret anything else and if someone said yeah well now i'm interpreting that your time i'd be like no you're not i get where you're coming from but I think that literal will still supersede the figurative uses of those phrases. I understand. And I think that's... All right, well, the point is the dragon eats the bed for some reason. Well, I have no so fucking idea why. I'm, I'm <laughs> leading to the gay. I'm, I'm actually heading to the gay. So oh, yeah, you're right. They have the gay the thing. The thing about this is the dragon is shown in a moment to burst out right in front of them, right? And it, theoretically, he's chasing them. You don't see it, but I'm assuming he's chasing them through the Rock of Eternity, so he's right behind them, seconds away. He's on their feet, <laughs> literally. And so you, uh, <gasps> they, don't, they should not have time <laughs> to go up, especially, by the way, because not all of them are super speed. They, they burst into the parents' room, like, one by one sort of thing, like, like people, not, like, super speed. But the yeah, dragon's got to be like right here, right? The rest of them, yeah. Then they have dialogue back forth, back forth, back forth, until he says, guys... No time for secrets. We have to tell them the truth. And they all announce, we're superheroes, except for Pedro, who says, I'm gay. And, like, that to me is parody well, levels. I would put that in Little Britain or something. Yeah. That sounds funny as fuck. Yeah. But in, yes, the, in the superhero, in the serious silly. superhero movie, it's like, uh, you guys do not have the time. Why would he say that? Then and there? Like, I don't know. Obviously, that, that he's not, not referring his. to, let's announce that we're gay if need be. Like, what do you... And then, of course, all the other characters go, we know, man. We know. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. He goes, you knew? He goes, yeah. Yeah. Like, there's a dragon. This is a little <laughs> fucking dragon. And the scene... This um, should not be your, on your mind at all right now. You it, should just be dragon. It shouldn't dragon. be happening. Let's the dragon should have been here by now. You should have killed them all. But, and, yeah, that too. <laughs> um, and then I think one of the characters is like, guys, dragon. And then others like, what do you mean, dragon? And then he goes, blah, and eats the bed. Which is like, oh, that was lucky. <laughs> mm-hmm. Only it, you know, did if it just breathed fire in that direction, it'll be fucked. Or well, non super people would be fucked. But Ugh. by the way, I'm still a little bit confused how this this Rock of Eternity works. Where where do they come out from now? Uh... Where, where, how do they get to there and come back? I, I'm, I'm still not sure how, how that works. On Best... the like the staircase or something. Best faith interpretation. They have to do some weird spell carving thing. If you remember to get into in the first film, yeah. yeah. So. When they first went to the Rock of Eternity, they did it through the um, like the little uh, closet door that maybe underneath the stairs, whatever. Okay, just, this it. is another door. And then okay. they go into the door uh, room of doors to get to the God Realm. So when they came back, they could then use their primary uh, Rock of Eternity door to get back into Earth. What I was trying to say was you should have someone go through there, super speed over some other place that's yeah. abandoned with a door, and then open that one up to the Rock of Eternity. That would be the reasonable and moral thing to do instead of dragging a dinosaur vampire horrifying yeah. fear demon into the into this suburbia residential area like it's yeah, yeah. which so, means that door is also destroyed now by the way which i have to close well, I, somehow I don't, I don't in the know. aftermath for all we know they, they cast a spell and it all reassembles so this is that's it okay um like I said, I don't know. I just, I just, I just think it's so bad that that's how they implement a gay character, and that they, they've been marketing it with that. By the way, the the film, they've been like, we, we have a gay character, and we're gonna be, we're not gonna hide him. We're gonna be, we're gonna, it's gonna be part of the film that he said. Apparently, they fought for that scene. They fought for that scene. And I was just like, wow, what are you talking about? It's, it's so we're not goofy. gonna hide him. And the thing is, there's something, not gonna hide him. About, there's something to be said about if if he felt it was like that big a deal to sort of come out to his family, 
it probably would be worthwhile if the family were more like recognized that it mattered to him a lot rather than kind of just glossing over it. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps. Or maybe it's, also, yeah, it's, it's just like, oh yeah, we know it's cool. It's deal. like, well, I mean, well, I, I get what, I get what they were doing of like, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, whatever, man, like it's, it's fine. You know, like I know that that was what the thinking was, but if that character was that, you know, like he felt like he needed to get it off his chest, it might be worthwhile to have more of a discussion with him. The problem is that they inserted it here in the middle of the dragon thing. Yeah. Like, there's no time so we for it to have, breathe. So it gets like the, like the weaknesses of both. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, kind it's, of the, it's the worst of both worlds. Yeah. It's yeah. because yeah. Yeah. now that you he said this. You can't say it anyway because there's a dragon coming and you can't have the parents like really accepting him for it in an earnest way because there is a dragon coming. You don't have the time to do it. Yeah, because um, we're, 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 we're owed the moment now where the mum says, like, why did you feel like you had to hide that? Did we ever give like, the problem an impression is that, of an environment that we wouldn't accept that? Because I'd hate to think unfortunately, that you felt, you know, blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, though, every other kid except for uh, Billy and Freddy don't really get any time at all for anything pertaining to them. They're just sort of there. Really, yeah. They're just kind of around. Well, isn't that... It's everything that matters. That's the whole Bloody movie, Billy isn't it? And Freddy. The to me, that's the most embarrassing around. part of all of this. It's like, Billy... They really didn't exactly know what they were doing with him. A bunch of stuff is thrown at mm -hmm. him, and then at the end they try and seal it up. It's kind of bad. Uh, is it Freddy? Freddy's Freddy, just right? like you're yeah. really brave and 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 you have a good heart. You know, yeah, you're you're, you're a real good heart. guy. That's just yeah. That's more or less it. Yeah. Mary's like you want to go to college, but you just can't. <laughs> and then what is the resolution for her anyway? I don't know. I don't. I don't actually. I don't, I don't think she had any that. resolution. Yeah, she did and nothing. Then, uh, nothing. Dollar and um, Eugene. Nothing. Didn't There's really nothing. have anything at all. And so, like, so who's left? Is like, well, it's Pedro. What does he have? He's gay. <laughs> and you're Good like, job. oh, they they focus on gay of all of his seeds. You're like, yes, all two of his seeds. They have like it's, it's all gay. all one all sixty seconds. They, they focus hard on. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. How embarrassing. If, nobody else is allowed go to around, really be anything around, at all. Like, we, we got a gay one and we don't hide it for a minute. Well, it's just, Man, it's if, not, it, it, none of them are even allowed to be characters because you, they, no. they waste a lot of time. They waste a lot of time that they could yeah. be using to develop the other characters. There's no reason why you can't give each of those kids, like, something, um for their story but i mean yeah a lot of them are just neglected and especially and then yeah it's like oh the plot comes barreling through because we got to keep moving with this crazy ridiculous plot we yeah, got a well, gay one really <laughs> we got a gay one <laughs> we got what, what really shits me is that you've got you've literally got a power that causes you to turn into a different person physically you are literally hiding away your true self and they also have a gay character, and they do nothing to connect these two things yeah. and explore well, it what using that metaphor. Had a level of dysphoria about like how does he reconcile who he is normally versus who he is as a superhero? Wouldn't and like all any, of them... any, and... well, all yeah. of them would. Yeah. But I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna pick one thing for each character, that seems like a golden opportunity. There's, I'm not. Uh, that he also has the biggest about, difference like, between like how in shape he is. Well, that's what uh, I'm talking yeah, about, is, exactly. like, maybe he starts feeling insecure about that. I'm not very passionate about the idea, like, behind Shazam, personally. Like, as a concept, it's kind of neat. But, I mean, if you actually wanted to do something meaningful with a concept of kids who become, like, superheroes, it feels like there's so many opportunities <laughs> available to you about, like, responsibility or identity or any number of those things that this film just doesn't explore, and the other film didn't really either. It's like the surface level is, hey. oh, they act kind of goofy and silly. Um, and that's as far as it goes. <laughs> because uh, as you just highlighted, yeah, it's like, um, why would he he be the one? Why would he ever want to go back to being the way that he was? He'd stay as a superhero. Wouldn't that be interesting if it was about sort of accepting mm -hmm. who he is, you know? Dude, and isn't that isn't that like a great opportunity, especially if you want to tie it into him being nervous about coming out? Like, that that's something that he sort of is like, yeah, I'm me, this is who I am, and I'm happy with who I am. This seems like an easy... Like, that's easy, you know? Like, you don't even need many scenes to reinforce that. But actually, show us that Freddy has serious insecurities about his role in, like, the world. He's, he's like, downtrodden yep. and stuff, and he can't walk, like, at his maximum ability. Yet, as a superhero, he gets to do things that no one else can at full capacity. He's like, how is they he ever going back to being a kid? I don't understand. Because they mm. kind of tried to have that in the first one, where he's like, man, Billy, like, you 
I, I would want these types of powers, and you just like taking it for granted. And now he's got them, and they don't really do anything with it. Yeah. The only thing that they have for his arc is like how it relates to Anthea, and like, ah, you're brave. But was that ever really in doubt? Like he was always there the whole time during all of the Shazam stuff. You know, in the I first film, going with the dragon yeah. eats the house. <laughs> oh yeah, he does. Doesn't that feel like what this is though? All that character talk that is just like so dragon. Ooh. Yeah. No, anyway, dragon the house, get away. is going to destroy the house that they just bought. It's Damn, big dragon that says, brr. It's yeah, dragon covered under your home like, insurance. Yeah, well. like does your insurance cover dragon? Well, they rebuild it at the end, for It's great. Oh, so their insurance does cover dragon. Or well, they stole all the materials. Uh, you know. Either well, way. maybe they did. Yeah, who knows? They rebuilt it by hand. Um, yeah, they they fought for that scene, and they you know, and they paraded it around like, "Look, guys, we did it for real this time." You know, we didn't shy away from it. It's the most <laughs> tonally incoherent, wasted opportunity of a scene. And then it just gets <laughs> the house gets eaten by a dragon. It's like, well, that's done. We're done <laughs> so with so that now. Moving on. Um, Enough uh, about the gay. We have a dragon. <laughs> They all do the or, superhero or this... fly away, by the way, and the dragon starts following them, and I just can't handle it. The dragon's like, whoa, whoa, slowly, like, sort of rising above the house, then starts moving toward them. It, it's just like, you're never catching up with them. No, never you never happen. catch up, because they can go from, like, zero to 200 kilometers per hour instantly, and you're a dragon <laughs> that has to, like, build up speed. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But he always catches up. And Voorhees rules. He does time. always catch up. But then they just land in a random industrial yard because I guess they didn't have the budget for anywhere more interesting. He, uh, well, it's funny he's a ninja too, if you remember, because the next scene they all land, they're all like, Oh, uh, yeah, he sneaks up on them. The they just giant go, boom, I'm dragon. here. Blah, blah, blah. And yep. as was mentioned earlier, she hits three of them, one, 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 with the laser yep. and knocks all the Good their job, guys. Out. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that leaves only two of them left now. Good job. It just sucks. Imagine what the film looks like if she hit Billy. It's like, oh, I guess that's the end of Shazam, the main yep. one. Yep. But nah, he's the main character, so he's got some good old plot armor really going on there. And he's like, hey, Do you I want the apple? Well, here it is, and tosses it to uh, uh, Mary. Mary, and she like goes, and it's like, yep, never catch it up to her. The dragon goes like, nope. oh, here I go. Oh, oh, and then oh. it does catch up And it's right her. next to her, yeah. It's just like, huh. And then like, Lucy Lou shoots the laser, and somehow she doesn't dodge it. Well, you'd think all How she has do to do is dodge it? circle around super fast and just grab it off her. That's all you gotta do. Yep. But nope. Yeah! She gets hit by the laser, because she sucks. How mm -hmm. would you get hit by that laser? Do you know awkward oh, that Oh, and then do like how they, they, they present the thing of like, Oh no, Mary's fallen and so is the apple. Shazam's gonna choose. Oh no. <laughs> That was so bizarre. It's like, you can't do that. He's super fast. You can get both. All you do is super speed to the apple, super speed to her, and slow down when you get to her, and then you can save it properly. But this one wouldn't even care about momentum or whiplash. It would just go, be boom nah. Got them both. Yep. 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 That's right. Done and done. But no. But they present it as though it's a choice, and that he has to choose her over the apple, which... Well, the thing is, it becomes a choice because of how long he spends standing there thinking about what he's going to choose. If he had just gotten started, yeah. he probably could have gotten them both. Ugh. Yep. I was just thinking to myself, like, what if they had played it so that he actually did go grab the apple and she splatted? What, what would you guys have what, to say? Like he, he, oh, that'd them. be interesting if he if he actually was like, this is greater good, and the whole family is like, I can't believe you did that, you know? And it's like, I, thought I can't I was, believe you've done this. I was, trying to, I was trying to save the world. I thought I needed to do this, you know? Yep. Something. Um -mm. Too interesting. Get this out of here. That is too interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's this this idea that a kid, maybe because they're influenced by all the superhero shows and stuff that they have seen, they do something that isn't that doesn't make any sense at all to actually do, but they think it's the right thing. So then, and, oh, go ahead. Oh, I just want to bounce off something Fringy said about how it could have hit Billy, and that just occurred to me. It's like, wait, he's suffering from imposter syndrome. This film. And they have something that can take away the one thing that's giving him empowerment, but also the thing that's causing his imposter syndrome. And they don't use the opportunity to put him in a situation where he's not going to, he, where he can't rely well, yeah. on his powers. So the problem meme is that Zachary Levi has top billing. So uh, yeah, that's why. Because by the way, it's been a while since we've seen Billy, like in this film. He's barely yeah. in this movie this time around. Um, he, how much screen time do you think he gets? Ten minutes. Something like that. Oh, maybe. It seems maybe. like very you little. Got, when he's he, playing Call of Duty, and then when he comes back yep. into the house, 
And no, then, then the he scene back at school. Shazam, like for talking about the yeah. Um, that's right. The school scene, scene at school, and then that's the last time for a while. I was about to say yeah, and then you get like the end part with the mum, and it's, it probably yeah, it could be it. less than five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh it has God. a lot more screen time in the first film. You'd forget that these characters were kids. When that was like whole yeah. idea. Yeah. I feel bad for him because I feel like he's working a lot harder. Um, like, Billy is... He's not that interesting, but he is a lot more interesting than Shazam. And it feels like he's trying a lot harder to yeah. sort of actually Absolutely. tap into the emotions. Just makes me feel yeah. bad. It's like I feel like you're working hard and you don't get any time to to play this character. The closest yeah. I ever felt to feeling anything in this movie is when it's like actual Billy and he's talking yep. about some of the you know the issues he's dealing with about losing his family, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. and it's the exactly. same with the first film. He's got all of the most emotionally potent and interesting scenes in the film, and then whenever it's Shazam, it's just bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, I find it a bit funny that um, as the child actor who plays Billy's gotten over, his jawline is actually getting better than adult <laughs> Shazam. It's uh, it's funny that he's got more of the superhero. He's starting to get more of the superhero look going than uh, his adult actor. Just a little funny observation. I just well, realized kind of, the whole thing was on a timer anyway. Like even if they wanted to do Shazam three, it's like all these people are aging up fast to the point we already knocked out one of the adult actors. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Like you probably should have started with him being maybe ten or eleven years old, and then that gives you more runway to yeah. get like yeah, have the story be more about them growing up. Well, yeah. yeah, but that wouldn't be very interesting, would it? Yeah, why would we want to see that? I yeah. want to see oh, yeah. stupid CGI dragon fight. Oh, not yeah, not, not any of that pesky character work. Even he calls it Khaleesi at one point. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, stop! Stop it! Get it help. My Days. Something that probably didn't do them any favors is that like this this film got delayed so many times. Like they I think they start, yeah they started pre production in this on this movie in 2021. Yep, they shot it in 2021, and now it's out in 2023. That's and wild. Wasn't, wasn't the reasoning that the VFX needed more time, but the VFX uh, looked like awful. So yeah. I think what happened was that the initial slate for 2022 was they had the Batman, and then I think it was Black Adam in like June or July. And then The Flash in November, then Aquaman in December. And those films, and then Shazam was meant to come out around this time. And then those films got delayed for visual effects pipeline, and they moved Shazam up, and it was going to compete with uh, Avatar 2. So they delayed it uh, as well to spread out. I think they, they need to spread out marketing budget for these films. Um, that's the reason why they delayed and spread out all these films, because they didn't have enough money to pay for the marketing, like, at uh, each given point in time. Or I think it was just a budgeting thing, whatever. And isn't it interesting? This was meant to compete against Avatar 2. It's competing Ooh. against nothing right now, and it's only going to make 30 million domestically, which, by the way, I'm well. pretty sure that Black Adam made that in a day, and that was not, like, even that was like, mm, oh, geez. Like, there was kind of an expectation exactly. to make more. Oy. Yeah, Jeez. imagine imagine if it competed directly against Avatar Two. That <laughs> would have been crushed. I can't imagine that'd be slaughter. <laughs> I admire their confidence though, crushed. but geez, <laughs> it's yeah. literally competing against nothing. Like I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure. And, and John Wick Four comes out like next week, so it's probably the end yeah. of that. So, uh... It's not going to get better, I think. Uh, no, of John course Wick not. What, what's the? Oh, you mean like the quality of films? <laughs> Well, oh no! I mean the the box office. Right, the box office. I mean no. the writing as well. What do you think course. word of mouth is gonna be for this film? Nothing. Yeah. Oh Nothing. yeah, and then Mario is out like the week after. Yeah, the, <laughs> so it's true. over. Yeah. Yeah, it's only downhill from here. Um, oh, something you just you you highlighted a good point, Fringy, about the the age thing where. You know, this is the, again, you know, this, as we pointed out, this is the kind of character you would want to cast pretty young early, yeah. like in the first film, and then ages slowly over the course of the trilogy or whatever. Um, and the thing is, it, what blows my, me away is that the he was only 10, nine or 10 years old in the source material, and they chose to age him up, a decision that has actively fucked them right here because they're having to rush through um mm -hmm. the, you know to account for the age that um things yeah you're just uh, running out of time like the longer it goes on you're just running out of time so starting him at 14 and then and then taking four years to uh to get the sequel out 
that was not Dooley dooly. Yeah. Yeah, that was mm. you needed to be quick if you were gonna start him at fourteen. But yeah, I mean it's already mm. over anyway. Even if they wanted to make a third one, which is probably never gonna happen. It's yeah, like you've already yeah. run out of time. Yep, well, they could have even even a good director and a good writer could have used this and made something good out of it anyway, because clearly there was no sort of thought about how the fact that Billy acts way more mature than Zachary Levi does. No, I don't even seem to recognize that that's the case. I don't I don't no. know what that is except for bad writing and bad direction. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I feel like you could have Zachary Levi be playing a more mature eighteen year old now, and you could make it work. Yep. You could do you could you could do something. Um, something a part of me wonders if it's as simple as in the script they probably um um have billy's lines um uh labeled differently from the shazam captain marvel lines right so they probably have you know billy is lying he says shazam and then his his dialogue now comes up as shazam so it might, makes me wonder if there's like a cognitive dissonance going on while they're writing it where when Shazam shows up, they subconsciously almost think of him as a different character because he appears different. I don't know. It's something that I'm be. wondering. Yeah. I also wouldn't be uh, surprised if they let Zachary Levi do some improv or something, because that's how a lot of it feels. Incredibly yeah. undercooked. As far as the jokes in air quotes go. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, one of the things I read in chat that I thought was kind of funny was um, once this stream is over, no one will ever speak of this film ever again. Kinda, probably. Kinda. No one yep. will say the word. It was hard to remember the movie up until today. <laughs> yeah. But we had to hurry with this. Yeah, well, memories are all falling apart. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll be honest. Like Going through the recap, I'm unlocking memories of my mm -hmm. theatrical oh, yeah, experience. Same. Yeah, like I'm remembering oh, yeah, how I happen. react. Oh, seriously. When, yeah. Um, when we see certain films, one of the things we worry about, say, me, Mel, Fringy, uh, Rags, we'll, we'll be like, oh, shit, we we got to be careful jumping into a call because we might end up talking a bit about it when we need to save it for the podcast. We don't want to end up repeating everything. Um, mm -hmm. I think when I first spoke to Free about this film, I had like two or three things that are just de it's dead in the war <laughs> of talking about it. It was just done. It was just like, yeah. Like, I don't that, that, that's, prob that's probably why I came out saying it's like, oh, yeah, I think that was kind of mid because I'm not like angry or and felt like it was like, offensive but then again it was like midnight and i was waiting for the bus and it was cold and i was like oh, i want to go home and then we recorded other things and then the day was over and i never thought about it again <laughs> and then like two days later when i started thinking about it again it's like oh yeah this all happens like oh yeah this is really bad i should have been more angry after i watched that movie <laughs> Yeah, a very but, similar experience because I, uh, you know, all I was thinking by the end of it is like, come on, and fucking post credit scene. I need to go home. I I forgot my ADHD meds. I'm my focus is all oh over. No. And then I get home. And it's like, what movie did I just see? Oh, all right, there was a thing, and there was this moment, and then there was a theme, and then there was um a line here, and then Wonder Woman something. Yeah, that was the movie. Okay. <laughs> so all of this is just coming back to me now. Oh, yeah. and it, it, it's, it's, a, it's been an interesting experience, this stream. It really has. Oh, uh, Lucy Lou has the apple now. And everyone, like, like was mentioned, it's only Shazam with powers left. And I think the last we see of him is he says, Now, where's that dragon? And then we cut over to Lucy Lou planting the apple in a stadium. And it raises this big old tree, and all of its roots start to spread throughout the city. And on those roots are little, like, sacks of of organic stuff that hatch open. And we get harpies, minotaurs, cyclops, and chimera. It feels like a really big clash of aesthetics. This idea that you have this plant, and the plant has these pods that open up, and they're gooey. Outside of the pod, or from the pod, just comes like random assorted Greek mythology creatures. Yeah. The yeah. Minotaur, yeah. which like had an, or you know, there's just a Minotaur, there's a Chimera, uh, there's unicorns, there's harpies. It's just like stuff just comes out of the fruit pod of this tree. And it just doesn't seem to make sense at all. You expect like some sort of a plant monster from Jumanji to come out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, the Cyclopses were tiny. I got to say, that was something that was distracting as well as the CGI not being great. <clears throat> I was too busy going the Minotaur, so I don't know. Yeah, I was fair. too fucking bothered by the fact that the Chimera's like Scorpion Stinger appears and everyone just goes, ooh. And it's like, what are you? Run! <laughs> let, me, let me have a look what happens when it finally hatches. Oh, I get yeeted across the street and into a yep. shop and die. 
Like, oh, oh what did you expect she to happen? She gets stabbed in the back by the stinger and then tossed into yeah. the shop. And just, oh, she's yeah. Dead. Yeah, you I, could at least I, hide then look, you know? Yeah. If, if they're going to do all this look. kind of kind of horror-like stuff, I feel like the movie felt really cheap in the fact that it was yeah. PG-13. You know? Yeah. Like, it, they, you know, people, like, these giant horrific monsters show up and they just throw people off screen. You yep. know, there's no blood. Uh, it's, it's not like so Hellboy. Lame. One woman got impaled. You don't even Ooh. see it really, though. Like, they hide a lot of it. Well, yeah, it's all well, you it's see all very... it, but it's off screen very quickly. So you see the impale, but then they throw it off just to make sure it's not yeah. on screen for too long. Yeah, them. I thought that was really lame. Yeah, so there was one good thing about it, and that was one of the minotaurs is sort of rising, and then a cop just goes, hmm, "That's a fucking monster!" Boom, 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 with his pistol. You know, he tried. Yeah, yeah. but of course, yeah. the pistol did no damage at all because nope. pistols never work against anything in movies. That have no. monsters in them. It's one of my it's least really favorite lame. little tropes, you know. It's like a big monster. Just let it get shot a couple of times, and then it just rampages all over your face or something. Like that's still fine. You yeah, don't need to have make a little bit of blood bulletproof. come out of it or something. You know, like he tried, and it was worth something. Yeah, well, it still kill like him. It, yeah, and like an injured monster is often a more scary monster. Because think about it, what happens when you injure a lion or a tiger, but it doesn't die. It gets more pissed off. It gets more desperate to survive. It gets it, and it targets you for hurting it, and then it targets everything around it. So, you, if anything, letting the monsters be a little bit more vulnerable would actually heighten the menace level. So you're thinking entirely too much about that. Just with all that in play, <laughs> we must be in the third act, right? It's like that's got to be it. You're like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> sure. <It's all> scary <laughs> and stuff. So uh, Anthena turns up to our crew of heroes, and she's like, "The tree is so beautiful in our realm. Here, it's corrupted by the person who planted it. It Here was not stinky. meant for this soil." And I, I, it's such a non-point. But I was just like, "Wait, is it who plants it that matters, or is it the soil that matters?" But it was both. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you breaking have, your own rules? Would it have been what nice if happening? you planted it, or is it just Lucy Lou's just evil? Because <laughs> she plants things that are just evil. That's how that works. It's, She's just an evil gardener. She has a black thumb. And then she should yeah. sort of fuck up sunflower she plants. Jeez. Uh, I wouldn't she want did nothing it. born out of revenge, you know, is good. That's the oh. whole thing. It doesn't make it. Can her supervillain name be the Necro Thumb? The Necro Thumb? Yeah. 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 And uh, so I was thinking about something. This is the first time I was in sync with the movie. Shazam in the background goes, whose side is she on? And I was like, eh, yeah. <laughs> Good know. question. Yeah. I'm on my own question. side now. That's what she the says. best side. And she basically says, I must sway Helen Mirren. She's the only one that can subdue my sister. I'll convince her or I'll die trying. And then Freddy's like, die? No, no, no. What do you mean, die? We can always find another way. We can find another way, an alternative. And she says, sweet Freddy, if needs be, I will die. I have lived a long life. And I was, I just, I was just like, what? Oh, okay. Do you think you're Shakespeare? <laughs> it's just like, like, okay. When did we switch the way we would talk? Like, what is this? You don't, you always talk <laughs> like a normal person. Now suddenly you're like trying to go for period accurate or some shit. Like, oh, what is this? sweet Freddy. Shut up. You've known him for five seconds. You, you can just feel the spotlight coming down as the soliloquy engages. And then uh, he says, what do you mean you've lived a long life? We're the same age. And then she says, I'm over 6,000 years old. And he goes, what? And then Shazam's like, wow, you look great. So yeah, all right. Yes. Yeah, so then, we're, we're just having this chat. There are very important things happening right now. She, uh, yeah. Uh, she kisses Freddy, and then that's after all the information Ew. she just gave out, and so the parents are like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. That's good. That, yeah, like, that was, that's kind of awkward now that we know that. It's like, yeah, it is, and you still kept it in the movie, so I don't know why you did that. But, yeah, it's a little predatory, not gonna lie. Well, you know what would happen if it was reversed? Just saying. Yeah, just mm. saying. Yeah, yeah. And they call it uh. out! <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's even weird that they call it out. It's like, okay. Yeah. And then uh, Shazam's like, I don't know what to do. I had to Google who those sisters were. You picked the wrong guy. Without my family, I'm nothing. I have no idea what I'm doing. And then the wizard says, you have no wisdom in that head of yours, but your heart is wise. <laughs> because you know, after yeah. he's been shitting on him the whole movie, how he fucked up and is awful, and he 
she was wrong. Now all of a sudden it's like, no, no, your heart is wise. Like, when when did you turn cam around to that? When did Things. that happen? Part of the set of powers you get, none of them mention anything to do with your heart, which is why all like values that kind of are associated with them. Hence why I would be like, ah, oh, because you need to choose the right person because you give them so many powers. But now he's like explained it that that's almost the explanation for where the so wisdom of Solomon went. It didn't go to their heads, it went to their hearts. And it's like, wait, but so then who, why does it matter who you pick if, if everyone gets like wise hearts? Presumably, because he, he references oh, his morals. Yeah. So at that point, it's just like, so you're just not even you anymore. You've just been given a thing that gives you a change of heart and then a bunch of physical abilities. Yeah, because the the whole thing is that you're it's supposed to be the reverse, right? That he's pure of heart. That um, I think in the original yeah. material, like he had been through tragedy after tragedy by the uh, the ripe old age of uh, uh, fucking ten, um, and he had st it hadn't affected him, and that was what um, granted him worthiness is that he was pure of heart, and he was able to he was also strong and able to endure that um and also blackout and prove that it, giving it to adults was a bad idea um so <laughs> it, it the fact that they've changed it the fact that it's oh it getting the wisdom of solomon changes your heart um it it does cheapen it it does cheapen it a lot it's it's nuts to me that they're actually trying to answer the question of where did the wisdom of solomon go and it's like it went the wisdom went into your heart you have heart wisdom which is like, you're gonna you know how to, to like people deep. really you good. You like the right people because <laughs> you're wise. You like the right people. Heart-wise, though, not mind-wise. You heart -wise. don't stick your dick in crazy? I don't know. I guess so. That's yeah. part of the message. So, yeah, don't understand any of that at all. And by the way, I just reminded myself, um, for those who don't know, in the first Shazam, um, it, the, the wizard mentions his history of how like the wizard's council got destroyed. Now, if you remember, because we watched Black Adam, the uh, Wizard Council's destroyed in that by Black Adam. And so when he retells it in the first Shazam film, he says that all uh -huh. uh, well, that happened, but that during his rampage, like, they don't name him, but they say during that guy's rampage, he released the seven deadly sins. So yes. When did that happen in Black mm. Adam? <laughs> when was the, the death? Why? Why was it? They were in the basement. That that place that he, like, annihilated, did the sins live there? What was? What? They were in the basement. It's such a like, what the fuck's going on? What is this? No one will be able to tell you like the plot or the history of like everyone can tell you the backstory for the Lord of the Rings, right? It's very clearly presented. It's never they they never take it back. They never go against it. Everyone can remember that, and that was twenty years ago. But you talk about like these Wonder Woman movies, the Shazam movies. You're like, so can you give me like the backstory of these movies, sort of what's happening with the the world? And you're like, no, you can't. No. It's all nonsense and madness. <laughs> oh. I could tell you from other mediums. <laughs> Can't tell you about this universe. <laughs> There's a line that's said, and I don't know how long it's going to take for us to pass this one out in terms of just what the fuck is going on. So, state of mm. the people. We have Shazam, powered up, ready to go. We have all the kids and the parents, and they have a truck. Right? That's, that's our resources in total. That's all mention of powers, too. Shazam says, I'm going to get the staff. You guys lure the monsters away from the stadium while I do it. <laughs> yeah, but how though? You, you children and humans. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know what I said. You children and humans, you need, to go, <laughs> you need to go and, and distract all of these mythological creatures so that I can go do something else with my powers. Wow. I had That's to so double, triple, them, quadruple take run that line. Away. I couldn't fucking believe he said okay. that. I didn't. I didn't register it at all the first time around. And I really listened. I was like, "Did he actually just command this ragtag group of very vulnerable people to go and try and stop an army of Cyclops, Minotaur, Chimera, and fucking the flying ones?" I always forget. The, uh, well, none of them uh, have hobbies? combat experience, hobbies, yeah. and two of them seem to be quite obese. So I don't. I, I don't know, know what we're expecting him to do here. Absolutely. Well, he doesn't. He shouldn't nuts. want them from a character thing. He's like, you should get away from here. You don't have powers. Absolutely, These are monsters. Yeah. The cops with their guns can't stop them. I just don't. If anything, get it. it's the kids who should be insisting on helping, despite his reservations. It shouldn't be him going. Yeah, yeah, child soldiers. You don't have any weapons anymore. Now go beat have, them with your bare hands. They don't have special information either. Yeah. What does he mean, lure them like, away? What do you mean? Like with our faces? With I guess our, with, with our, our literal <laughs> with innocent what? creature bodies. bodies. We'll just go, look, you can kill us. Come over here. 
Because Shazam could tell them that they need to leave and get help or go find something or they, they need to leave, right? And then he takes off and then they decide to not yeah, leave. Yeah, he could say, run, don't get involved. Better. Well, so the thing is, better, um, cool. yeah. I think it's unfortunate none of them have super speed because if, say, for example, Shazam had super speed, he might be able to actually make it all the way around the whole city, uppercutting and breaking the faces of all of these enemies and then go deal with staff. Probably something he could do against yeah. super speed. He does not have super speed though, right? No no, 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 that would be silly. No. Or yeah. like lightning powers he could chain together? Yeah, I just think that's more risky. The super speed thing just breaks everything constantly. Yeah. But hey. Um but yeah, uh then then the, 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 the mum is like, wait, I want to see my son before he leaves, and then he unshazams. He says, uh he says, Don't worry, I won't force you to keep me after I defeat this dragon and then she's like you'll never age out of your home now go kick their ass kind of like well that was normal yes yeah and we've com we've completed she was gonna say ass that is i've seen... never i've never seen an ass more telegraphed than that yeah yeah, yeah you can see it coming by the way it is um that is the second half to the completed arc where she worried that he didn't like the ha the home and her as a mum, and then later he says he's just annoyed he's sort of insecure about the fact that she might boot him out and you're thinking to yourself like that's something it's like yep two scenes about five lines it's thin that's but an it's arc there. technically it's, there is something there we might just be able to fish it out flesh it out and <laughs> do something with it in a different movie but oh well he says love you mom and she says me too probably should say yeah. i love you too not me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit of a. Gap. Why are you me tooing me, mom? No, what the hashtag me. Oh god. <laughs> that's, Someone that's just said, "Let me look upon you with my own eyes." <laughs> 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 Not quite, but. Yeah. Let um, me look upon you in your own flesh. Oh, and uh, something to note, when he turns back into Billy, for that moment, he is far more mature again than anything you ever get from Shazam. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. even jarring or whatever. It's yeah. really weird. The whole so they time. must have been on set the same day. They must have shot that back to back. So it's even more bizarre. <laughs> yeah, because the kid's like, "Okay, no. I'm I'm ready for my scene." And Zach's in the background going, "Whoa!" on his unicycle. What? Like, oh, but don't distract you there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> must have been um, difficult to CGI all the clown makeup off him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the sisters have met up again, and uh, uh, Anthea is like, "Don't you see what you're doing?" And then Lucy Lou says, "What I see is just." She's really great and awesome and such an interesting person. <laughs> and Anthea says, "The tree is blighted. You made a vow to destroy the realm, not destroy another." And then Lucy Lou well, says, oh, "I am showing good. them their place." By killing them all, and they have no fucking clue who's doing it or yeah, how this happened who you or are. what's going on. Or like why if you're trying to you're show a message here, it's not. They're just going to be too busy running for their lives to know what the message is. This is just a terrible random calamity that's happening. It would be so funny day. if she's running through the streets saying, "I, I, I did this." By the way, gods, gods, I did this. This was me. Gods did this, and you're, they're like, "What? Who are you? What? What's happening? Like, don't you remember thousands of years? You, you, you didn't forget, did you? <laughs> you humans. That's awkward." Um, Trust me, you did something really that I didn't like a long time ago. Trust me, you deserve this. So they're having that. You fight. were my sister, Calypso. I loved you. <laughs> the, <laughs> they're having the harsh back and forth, and then Helvera just cuts in and says, "You know what? Your fanatical tone echoes our uncle Hades. No, I'm putting an end to this." And I was thinking, <laughs> is Hades Atlas's brother? Hey, these nuts. They'd have to move things um, around, right? Because Atlas. Yeah. He's, he's a, a titan, wasn't he's he? A titan. Don't they say that? He's a titan. Well, and he's Kronos is Zeus and Hades and uh, Poseidon's dad, right? Or yes, I'm and he was a titan as well. So um, Hades would, would have be... to be the bro. Well, Hades is the brother of you know Poseidon. Would Zeus. he be a cousin? So if if they are the daughters of Atlas, wait, Atlas, Atlas is a titan, yeah, uh, Atlas, Atlas was uh, a titan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Atlas yeah. Was so a titan. the dad is Atlas. Is is Kronos a brother to Atlas? Is that at least a connection or no? Oh, the Atlas has three children. Uh, -huh. uh Hyas, <laughs> Dia, uh, Dione, and Calypso. Oh, so they're just making shit up then. 
Which is okay. So I'm pretty, yeah. I'm pretty sure that uh the the these characters are OCs. They're not like from the comics. Well, you just said Calypso. That's the Lucy Liu's oh, playing Calypso. Yeah, I guess. And because it's Greek, uh, it also says that his children are the Hesperides, the Hyades, and the Pleiades. Oh, the Pleiades. The the Pleiades. Pleiades nuts. So they they get these. <laughs> what? Fuck was that? Okay, I thought I heard something. I don't know but, what uh, that was. So yeah, the the Hesperides are the nymphs of evening and golden light of sunset. That's lovely. The Hyades, uh, they are the a, a sisterhood of nymphs that bring rain. Lovely. That's wonderful. And the Pleiades were the seven sister nymphs, companions of Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. Um they were called things and did stuff. Okay. All right. Well, I was just uh. I was just curious if because yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. They can make up whatever the fuck they want because they don't care. They've already Ooh. like foul over Wonder Woman's lore. So the Egyptian equivalent of Atlas yeah. is Shu. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Shoe. Anyway, good old shoe. <laughs> he makes that criticism, Helen Mirren, and then she gets stabbed through the heart by the dragon tail. Oh, oh no. goodness and, uh, gracious. Legitimately, when I saw that, I was like, oh, <laughs> now we're going to have to fucking listen to Lucy Lou for the rest of the movie. Because we, we literally, like, the, the moment we started to have, like, something interesting kind of happen, mm -hmm. the movie's like, nah. Remember, you, you know your place. <laughs> know your place, old lady. You're boring. We need the cool, edgy You're boring. Uh, you edgy have to stay lady. that way. So, um, yeah, then, then we get in a fucking, an absolute, the lines get worse as the film goes on, and this is an absolute banger from Lucy Liu. She's looking at Anthena, and she says, if your emotions rest with the humans, so then perhaps you should be human. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. And she fires the make you human laser at her. <laughs> <laughs> now now we've established that this laser will impact on solid objects yes and it will disperse yes. so all she needs to do is move solid objects in the way right oh you're in luck she does indeed and she does it for a while she goes with her axis powers and oh my god she it looks like absolute miles and miles and miles she moves herself away from uh from from Kali from lucy Lou. so yes she's totally fine absolutely definitely fine she moved herself away one problem Mm. She may what, what have accidentally, mean? when moving herself away, not moved herself away in any way other than how? How do you even put this? One direction. Backwards. Yeah, she. So the she just she dodged backwards. It's like you know, in a video game, how an enemy has like a laser beam mm -hmm. and it like goes in a straight line, mm -hmm. and your yes. character can dodge, but you yeah. dodge backwards, which doesn't accomplish anything because well, we the laser beam goes straight forward in a line. Always go back to the school of Prometheus, the uh, the famous, famous film for characters running in a straight line when a donut is chasing them, and it's like just go left <laughs> or right. That's all you got to do is just go left or right. So Axis Lady, she doesn't go left doesn't go right, she doesn't go up, she doesn't go down. She goes back and back alone. Unfortunately for her, the laser electricity stuff, it caught up eventually and hits her. So she loses her that's god's oh no. And I, Yeah, that's I, like, actually, actually incredible, like you had to try to do that. Yeah, that's actually difficult to do, I assume anyway, from how she controls the powers, to nail it to be exactly in the same way, but as was said by a meme, we've seen this thing crash into physical objects several times and stop, but I guess you just fucked that up, and it it, it, it somehow get. I mean, it smashes through several glass uh, doors before it hits her, but maybe glasses. Yeah. Yeah. So she moved herself miles and miles and miles away to avoid the shot, but it just kept coming and still hit her, because she's an idiot. And it wouldn't stop coming. The reason this happened no, is because they, they knew they that allowing Access Girl to keep her power would mean there's just no stakes because she'd annihilate everything. Gotta get rid of them. But of course, yeah, it's when like you say Access Girl, I think of like Elsa or something. Sorry. You know, she can uh, join Rickon Stark in the uh, school of running away from things that are avoidable. A lot of people in that school. <laughs> it's, it's all yeah. filled up. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you were wondering earlier how will the family be able to make a significant difference in this fight and we find out uh, the dad runs over a minotaur and it's already nearly like destroyed the van as you'd expect, there's a big crack in the thing and, yep. and he says I don't know how many more I can run over these things, it's like 
Yeah, that's probably not. One, that's, probably. That, that, that's, that, <laughs> wait, wait. That, but seriously though, with all wait, the resources they had between them, that is about the maximum they could do, and that's what we saw. So, it's the bulletproof, <laughs> but they're not bandproof. Uh, ask David. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will. I will go to his house right now. Oh no! And do that. Oh, do it. Uh, so we 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 have Dala come up with a plan. You see, Steve is with them in the car. I don't remember when he joined them on this trip, but he's there. And they say, hey, Steve, what are monsters afraid of? Which to me feels like a very vague question. You should be more specific. Like, How can I destroy these without any superpowers? Yeah. What the do plan? we do? <laughs> what should we do, Steve? <laughs> what should we do? How do we, you know, instead of this, like, be very direct with this omniscient pen. And then, what is their monster night? And, and so you, you just, yeah, specific question. But anyway, he answers the question of what are monsters afraid of with unicorns. And it's like, because uh -huh. uh, he says that's the king of the beasts. Is what what happens if a king of the beasts? <laughs> um, lion, Lion's probably the first thing that comes see. up. Right? King of the jungle. It generally looks, I get in a lot of pictures of lions here. Well, I guess it's this subversion, right? Because you think it's what about this quaint king Kong? Critters. A lot of lions. Here's a lion with a lot of heads. So that's like a mega. That's like a mega lion. That might be a um, biblically accurate angel. A biblically accurate lion. Yeah. Um. We have yeah, lots and lots and lots of lions. It looks like so you'd expect it would be a lion or, well, what if I do mythology king of the beasts? We get, um, the griffins. Griffin? Yeah. Yeah, because they're back half's a lion. That's cool. Um, and we have just all sorts of stuff here, but, uh, yeah, no unicorns. I don't see anywhere. It's, well, it's you know, it's their own continuity. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah Fringe's mentioned very subversive. Says the, yeah, it looks we like according this... to the libraries from the University of Missouri, the griffin is the king of the beasts. You know. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, someone did mention, they say, you know, what are monsters afraid of? And they say king of the beasts. Like, well, what are the king of the monsters? That would be Godzilla. Not available. Just yes. like Wonder Woman doing um, his own thing. Um, I can't believe Godzilla didn't show up. It's kind of bullshit. Yeah. So fun fact, Godzilla is canon to the Marvel Comics universe. Um, that that is one hundred percent true. Um, but they had to rename him after they lost the rights. So that was funny. Oh. Well, the uh, I uh, unicorns being mentioned. Uh, Dala says, "I love unicorns," and then the wizard says, "Yet the unicorn does not love you." What are we What are we thinking <laughs> about that? Uh, I, have no I mean, idea. yeah, um, probably not. Like, the, like it's it's the way to say that it's, um, yeah, um, <laughs> that you shouldn't like. Maybe it's about what what are they called? Um, those are like like if you have a YouTuber or a streamer, those quasi personal. What's it, what are they called? Parasocial. Parasocial relationship. Yeah, you have a parasocial relationship with the unicorns. You think that they're cool. You've read about them. And you know about them, but they don't, they've never met you, you know? So you might think that you have a sort of rapport that you don't actually have with a unicorn, so you should be careful. And maybe you, should, maybe you don't have to meet your heroes. Maybe it's yes. not as cool as, you know, it, 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 you might think it is. You know, don't go to their house. Jesus Christ, don't do that. You know, don't, don't bug them <laughs> too might much. Have a gun. Too many emails. Maybe that's what they mean. Maybe. It's a really, Perhaps. really strange thing for him to say, but it's, it's kind of just like, okay, what, whatever, I guess. Why not? Especially the wizard. Is it for like the audience to be like, the audience is like, no, audience, you might think unicorns are nice and wonderful, but actually they're jerks and they look spooky. It kind of matches the rest and of the film. And they smell. The dialogue is ill conceived, to say the least. Yeah, but based on what they end up doing with the unicorns, it seems like they are just friends with the unicorns. No, oh, no, we'll get we're so close to that. Well, it wasn't thing. friendly at first. They 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 had the secret, you see, the secret to the corn. So, um, he says the unicorn is the most fearsome creature of the realm. They loathe humanity. And then she says, "Is there anything they do like?" And the pen writes down dark caverns and ambrosia. So Dala says, "I have an idea. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go." And they all follow suit with her. They don't ask it what the plan is. They just don't follow. ask what Questions. it is. Don't, yeah, uh, they don't do anything. Then, they don't. As as Mary <laughs> leaves, she says, "Hey guys," meaning the mum and the dad, "get as many people to safety as you can." 
Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, I can I can fit like okay. six people in here. Gotcha. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> sure. Fine. Whatever. That that almost feels like a, a line that they saw in movies before and had to say, but they don't know why someone says that. We gotta do that the thing. Person. Yeah. We gotta Off do that the thing. It's in movies. Get, you go. Get someone to safety. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. We did it. Like, there's only an army of like Greek mythology out there. <laughs> Just go, go nuts. Get get a bad. Yeah. And then why is everybody following the eight-year-old to the bloodthirsty monster that hates humanity? That's what it was just described as. And then why are the parents letting all this happen? Reasons? Because they, they, they lampshade that too. This, this is a lot of that in this film. She goes, I don't know how to parent right now or all of this. It's like, yeah, you don't. You could, yeah. you could try. You could be like, hey, guys, don't. Or something, screw, something like that. Hmm. I will turn this car around right here, Mister, and we'll go to a safe place. Oh wait, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds and reasonable. So let's do, do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's go the other way. Let's go the opposite direction of the demons. And then we yeah. could have a conversation or something. Freddy walks out of the car and he, he doesn't follow Dollar. He instead just walks off in a different direction and spots Anthena. He's just walking around. And he goes, "Oh, Anthena, He's hey." <laughs> it's. It's unreal. Like, you just don't care. No, no, nobody cares about anything. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny because uh, I, I missed a little bit of the movie because I went to, to the bathroom. I was like, oh, she's just walking around here. I guess I missed how she got here. But now I was listening nope. to you guys. I was like, oh, no, they just get no. here and now she's there. <laughs> I was like, okay. Simple as that. Um, and then we catch up with Shazam. What's he up to? Uh, he grabs the dragon and pushes it through a skyscraper. Yeah. And when he's done with that, he says, Woo, that was satisfying. Oh, satisfying. Some from Superman. I yeah, I got some super bad vibes there. I guess this yeah. consistent. He's inspired by one of the, <laughs> the most aggressive bad war criminals of the world. Bad. Oh, well. Um, and then the dragon, like, does the whole bra with fire, and somehow he gets hit by that. He doesn't manage to avoid it. Yeah. I don't know how you manage hmm. that, buddy. <laughs> Not and then we get one of my favorite Lucy Liu lines in the whole film. This one. This is where it gets to the point where it's so bad I'm starting to really enjoy it and I won't Oh, walk. this is... We laughed. But she says, <laughs> You thought you were invulnerable, but no! Magical fire. Magic can kill magic. <laughs> I... Like, oh. wow, they wrote that. <laughs> they wrote that. They sure did. I love the, you thought you were invulnerable, but no! <laughs> Like, no. magical fire. <laughs> it's it's not just fire, you bitch. Not. It's magical fire. It's like, wow. This is magic fire. It is far more deadly than fire fire. And yeah, she's lost any semblance of being in any way normal. She says, uh, I defeated my traitor sister, a god. You think I won't <laughs> destroy you? <laughs> <laughs> getting, Thank some you, real, getting some real then I will yeah. destroy your <laughs> vibes oh, oh so cringy fuck you he man that, yeah that energy <laughs> I'm evil <laughs> I, I have a soul of darkness <laughs> oh I planted an apple in a baseball field and it's evil <laughs> Ooh, harvest of darkness so uh, he then fires some lightning at it and it hits the staff, and then it bounces into the dome, and it bounces around the dome a whole bunch. He looks up, and he goes, The staff. The staff is absorbing it all, like a battery. <gasps> oh my goodness. Man, that's, I, uh, I, I all, you don't have that's, to... Uh, <laughs> another lol, nice reach, dude. <laughs> yeah, where did yeah. you get that? Exactly. <laughs> They've called it a battery no, like, earlier in the film, but seeing what he saw there, I don't know how at all that translates to what he says. Yeah, I got nothing. So he concludes a plan from that, but we don't know what it is yet. He flies off. Um, great, great plan, good plan. We then cut back to the kids, and you hear the wizard say, this is a terrible idea. You don't understand the savagery, the barbarity. And I thought from that, is the idea she's told them the plan now, but we didn't see it. It was off screen. Maybe. I don't know. I, I assume so. It is it Because otherwise he wouldn't slightly... have anything to... It is slightly Wouldn't better have anything else if to that's the way we should interpret it. It's still terrible, but like it's slightly better. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah, they, they find a unicorn spawn point, and they see it in the distance, and she's like, all right, <laughs> time for my plan. And the unicorn starts like sprinting at her, and they all like panic and turn away like, oh god, we're all dead. 
But and, and this thing, for anyone listening, because you're not going to believe me on this one, I'm going to have to try yeah. and explain this to you because this is what happens. It's, um, this thing has been built up as the most horrifying creature that despises humanity in all of history and will just annihilate everything in its path, right? And the, and the kid mm -hmm. says she's come up with a plan because we were told they like ambrosia. And so you're thinking, like, what what is it going to be? What what does Dala have? What is she going to do? What is going to happen? And so it's about to reach her, and she reaches into her pocket and throws Skittles at it. Mm -hmm. I need yep. you to absorb that. It just will go a little slower. And then, as it slows down, stops, and looks at the Skittles, it, the camera tightens right up on her, and she says... Taste the rainbow. <laughs> uh, um, An adult wrote she this starts script, just so you know. Feeding it by hand, the Skittles, oh, and me. she says, Skittles are the closest thing we have to ambrosia. Yeah. Alcohol sure. would like to disagree. I don't even like. I. I that has to be product placement. This has got to be product placement. Oh, this, this is yeah, this product, product placement. The rainbow. It's like the it's product of placement. The God. This is some. Yeah, this I'm might sure be the worst product, product placement I've God. ever seen. Like it's. I'm trying well, to think of ones that are very plastic. intrusive. It's incredibly intrusive. It just bars yeah. its way into the film. It's I'm the, not aware of a worse example. When we often in films see someone holding like a phone that's a Sony Xperia, and then they open their laptop and it's also a Sony thing, it's like, hey, yeah, Sony is great. <laughs> we, yeah, whatever. Yeah. We will often joke and like claim that the movie's like, buy Sony, because Sony products are amazing. Well, yeah, this is literally imagine... done the taste the rainbow because Skittles are the best tasting mm -hmm. thing on earth. Yeah, they it, basically said it would that. Be like if you, it'd be like they if you had turn a unicorn man. man. It'd be like if you had a scene in Spider-Man where he's playing PlayStation 4 and he's playing God of War and then he looks at the camera and says, PlayStation 4, greatness awaits or some shit. <laughs> like, no, he, no. Just, he just did that. Or if he ever, if he used the PlayStation and he used it to bash, like, the villain's head in, but the yeah. PlayStation's totally <laughs> intact because it's that sturdy and awesome and he can still no. play video games on it. Or he wow, this PlayStation this sure is unstoppable. That's right. This PlayStation play sure has however many teraflops or whatever, whatever it was people were fighting <laughs> well, about. With all of the incredible powers of the PlayStation library, we too can defeat the enemy <laughs> wizards. PlayStation and, and turn, 4, three ninety nine. <laughs> and he turns the PlayStation into his spidey armor, and on his wrist there's a oh, Sony God. phone that he's turned into his little gadgety thing. He, he does. He has Sony branded fucking web shooters. You know that sort of thing. No, they they would just say, "Wow, a PlayStation Five! How could I get my hands on a PlayStation 5? I'm True. glad you asked. Did you know that the PlayStation Five is available at these participating well, stores? To, to bring it back to Shazam, like Skittles save the world yes. in part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, were, they, they use the Skittles involved. to have the, the, the unicorn kill all of the the uh, the critters. Save the world, saved a whole bunch of innocent lives, are described as the most tasty thing ever, and like the king of the beasts, the most horrifying thing can be pacified by the power of Skittles, and she says, taste the rainbow. What the fuck? Taste if you describe this to someone, like, I, I don't believe that they believe They're you. I think like, they'd be like, you're being mean, hyperbolic. Right? This, yeah. is like a, this is a sketch. This is yeah, not this like is real. A, this is a Wayne's like, World 3, right? That's and, what we're doing. And plus, <laughs> these are Skittles, which... Let's be very, very clear and honest here. Are mid at best when it comes to candy. If yeah. I was, if I was just standing there and someone came up to me that I trusted and loved, a family <laughs> member perhaps, and offered to me a box of Skittles and said, "Here you go, Rags, because that's your name. You can have this ba a box of Skittles." I would say, "No, thank you." <laughs> yeah, like, I would. <laughs> that that kind of sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and and let's and let's be clear here. Let's be one hundred percent crystal clear about how um the film also talks about ambrosia. They literally make a point of saying it is the nectar of the gods, and then yep. later on we have Skittles being the equivalent or the closest thing you can get on Earth to the nectar of the gods. Let's just uh, oh. absorb that. Someone, the someone film. asked in chat. Oh yeah, well, what, someone asked in chat. What is a good candy? Uh, we could do it really quick. Left to right, just say your favorite candy. Cap, go. Just a good uh, one. Uh, I like Starburst. Starburst are good. All right. Pring. Man, you put a lot of pressure. M&Ms I like. Yeah. Um, I really like Reese's Pieces. Okay, those are good. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wait, those are the peanut butter cups, right? Yeah, me yeah. too. No, I'm also a peanut butter unique. cup, man. No, right. Yeah, the no, break no, I like that one. Metal, you have to say... Yeah, Metal, you have to say one. 
What? I just said one. Well, he's allowed to pick the same one, right? <laughs> so Rags, like Rags, one Rags, make a rule. You have to have <laughs> oh, a unique one. Calm down, Rags. You have Jeez. to have a unique one. Yes, they are. <laughs> what? No! <laughs> you can't think of a candy that you like? Oh, I just said did. one. that one. That's his favorite. Well, I like that one. one. I know I know one. Cubs. I, I like that metal is in trouble when I'm the one who said it second. No, you said it third. I said it first. That's, that's the point. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Metal was next in, in line. Metal only likes God. one candy. Yeah, that's he's my only, he only what, likes what, is, what is yours, Rag? What no, is wait, your we do Mel, just say Snickers or well, Mars bar or Bounty or Twix. You did so many. I, I like pods. There we go. Pods. I like, pods. I like Tide Pods. Those are my favorite. <laughs> ceramic, <laughs> ceramic pods. Well, I was well, gonna um, say Kit Kat bars. They, oh, yeah, yeah, that's Sour Patch choice. Kids can be pretty good. Oh, wait, be wait, of right. all the ones that are mentioned, I, I rate them all above Skittles. Sorry, not sorry. Oh yeah, yeah all of these are above Skittles. They're just like. They're just yeah. They're not. They're not very <clears throat> exciting, are they? Ooh, I'll have them right guys... there, but that's about it. What are those? Um, the, like fruit by the foot, but they have like the sour stuff on them, the sour sprinkles on them. That shit's gold. Ooh, yeah. Oh man, that's that's ambrosia to children and probably <laughs> yeah. to me currently. Oh man, sour uh, Jolly Ranchers, Tim and... Tams. Oh, I don't know what those uh, well, are. Tim, what are Tim, Tim Tams? Tim Tams are uh, they're a they're a local Australian delicacy. Those ones. Tim Tams, yeah. Australia's favorite chocolate biscuit. Yeah, people, I have... <laughs> when people come on holiday to Australia, Tim Tams are often sort of up there with like uh, Vegemite. Oh, these look good. To try. Yeah, they're neat. Then it's a are bunch they of just like flavors. So yeah. they're kind. Of, are they kind of like Oreos, where they have like two wafers and some like creamy stuff in there? Uh, in the middle, well, it's, and it's chocolate it, coated. It, there is depending on which one you get, there'll be like different sort of flavors in that middle portion, but then it'll be, you know, like the whole uh, things coated. Oh, in double chocolate. coat, chewy caramel, white, dark chocolate mint. Yeah, Tim Tim Tams are they're pretty sweet. Um, yeah, these um, look these look very good. Yeah, these do look great. I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of pushback for the idea that M and M's could be considered better than Skittles. What's what's the word on oh, that? Oh, of course and... they are. They are uh, so well, much better. They are. So they are. Not even big, close. No contest. So I definitely prefer M and M's, but I tragic guess lack what, of taste. It depends on what kind of flavor right. you're going for, I suppose. One <laughs> thing I would say is that something We're going I've for good is flavor. When I when <laughs> I have Skittles, there was sort of that initial burst of flavor, but then it kind of deteriorates pretty quickly, and then you're sort of left with like. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know. Whereas M and M's are just like they're great the whole way. It's always a safe, you know, bet. from you beginning to M&Ms end. To, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always a safe bet. <laughs> but oh, Skittles are just gone. like, oh, that's like one of the pranks, right? One of the famous meme <laughs> pranks is like putting <laughs> yeah. random Skittles into the M and M's. <laughs> just I, being a there's dick. A, there's a great deal of variety in the types of M and M's you can get as well. Yes, you know, peanut peanut M and M's are really good because peanuts are peanut butter M and M's are classic. Really good yeah. 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 Wait, butter M and M's? What? Pe peanut oh yeah, butter. peanut butter. I thought you said butter M and M's. Like, well, I, I don't know. I guess well, so. Don't know that that right. America, Nectar of knows. the gods, right? <laughs> Something I was gonna say though that's worth noting on the Shazam thing is, look, all right, it's Chekhov's Skittles. They set up at the beginning of the film when uh, what's her name, Dala was like, oh yeah, oh, Skittles, yeah. you know. But I'm I'm gonna give the yellow ones or whatever to the to Helen Mirren. Because you don't like, deserve even you know? earlier. It's even Still earlier up. one. Even yeah, there was. One. That's right. So it's With, really. She, she, it's. I think it's all the way in the be uh, beginning, right after the museum scene, where it's just kind of doing their house stuff, like housework chores or whatever. It's like, oh, there. Who put Skittles in your pocket? And then the girl's like, yeah, that was me. Right. It was supposed Check to be a surprise. Skittles. Yeah, it was right there. It's so Check good, so Skittles. clever. So you can't complain. It was set up. And yeah, yeah. Set up. Room. Anything that's yeah. set up. Is it's in the clear as long as you set it up, it's good. Is you're good, you're good, you're golden. That's the only rule of writing. But if you want the true nectar of the gods, you must, uh, you know, it's not going to be Skittles because Skittles cannot do an equivalent of the Tim Tam slam where you bite off one end of the Tim Tam and the other end of the Tim Tam and you put it in a hot drink like a hot cup of cocoa or something and you drink the cocoa through the Tim Tam, making it more chocolatey as it goes up. It is an Australian tradition and Wait, then it melts through the, the Tim Tam. Tam? Yeah, through the Tim Tam. They were like the... squares. They are squares, but you bite the top off and the bottom off. And because there is a, a meltable creamy filling in between, the hot drink melts it as you suck oh, up. Oh, it... okay. Yeah, and, and it melts I it and makes it even more delicious. I think I sort of understand what you mean. Yeah. That's hard for me to visualize. In terms yeah, there's of probably some videos poll, on M&Ms yeah. are uh, the front runner by a considerable margin, 61%. <laughs> It should be bigger. Skittles. It should be bigger. There should, should be like be maybe 10% I'm willing Skittles. to... Uh, 
because I don't mind Skittles. Like I can have them, but if you if you say to M and M's or Skittles, I'm going with M and M's. Like basically 100 percent of the time. I was gonna say I can't imagine. I would even if I had M and M's once per day. I don't know how well I wouldn't want that. I'm trying to think of like when would I finally be like fine <laughs> Skittles. Well, here's an interesting question. If there were no other That's... options. We, we're gonna know. Know. even the, then maybe the, not. Uh, the even then maybe inspector, not. The, you know the mystery box thing. Skittles guaranteed or whatever's in the box, and it could be any type of uh like candy, both good and terrible. What do you do? I'm going you with go the box. The, you go for the box. Yeah, yeah, I'm going for the for the mystery box dopamine rush. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right. you do get some fun with the mystery box. Well, rags. Yeah, yeah. What about you? you are can you, you, you going to? Bet it all on what's in the box. <laughs> Bet it all in or... what's in the box. So the, the, the idea is Skittles for sure or whatever's in the box. Uh, in uh, I'm going to go with whatever's in the box. Right. Uh, I wonder what chat would... Uh, maybe that's another poll. Skittles versus the <laughs> mystery box. They make, so the idea I'm with the question is box. take a gamble on whether or not it'll be better or worse than Skittles. I think it's yeah. kind of a gauge yeah. of like whether you consider Skittles to be mid or like worse than that because I, yeah, it's almost I it's almost would. baked into good it's almost baked into the good or bad that there's like a fifty percent chance that you'll get if, if we assume that Skittles is absolutely mid, um, I think it just says to more so the preference because if you told me M and M's or what's in the box, it's like I'd probably go with M and M's, like that's yeah, you know, too. like that's a nice safe one or like. Kit Kat versus, you know, the mystery box. <laughs> that picture of the guy drinking it through a Tim Tam looks it's really very funny. awkward. Yeah. 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 They need to be longer for that purpose, I think. Yeah. Well, you need well, a special Skittles won that one, by the way. Uh, not Skittles, uh, M&M's by a considerable margin. So it's, it's safe to say that if Shazam was a better written film, it would have been Skitt uh, yeah. M&M's that won. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and then you would have had the Eminem guy show up or something and go, yeah, good choice, buddy. <laughs> well, Mr. Peanut could show up and just start smacking people with his cane. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, it follows. Peanuts mm -hmm. are really good. Who was everybody's yeah. favorite, like, mascot for a, a, a like, a sweet, like, candy? Oh. Um, uh, e I'm or not... Reese's Pieces. I don't think I never had a favorite one. I just wanted the candy. <laughs> I'd have to... I uh... can't think of any. Like as long as we agree, mascots. Um, as long as we agree that Lemonhead is the worst. Um, well, you guys know not uh, everyone likes chocolate, right? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I guess there are some people out there who don't like chocolate. <laughs> that's totally what, fine. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they're allergic to joy. We get it. The M and M's are are fine. I don't really know that many um like candy specific mascots. There's the Kool Aid Man, I guess. Uh, the toucan for Fruit Loops. Toucan oh, yeah. Sam, but that's uh, it, that's not candy, is it? Well, well I cereal, think... I guess, could be stretched. Some yeah. cereal is candy. That's why, like, mm. you don't eat okay. cereal. <laughs> but yeah. Um, there's, but yeah, some of them. But if we're going with okay. like okay. typically candy, then because I think like berries are candy essentially, but I wouldn't. You know, nature's like, candy, yeah. Nature's candy. Yeah. Nature's ambrosia. He's literally grown. Nature's ambrosia, absolutely. <laughs> I feel like many, many nights have been spent with me kneeling naked in front of the open refrigerator, just shoveling strawberries into my mouth. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, it's what you do. God, uh, unironically, I, like, I feel like I'll go right right now. Now. Dude, I'm just happy like to be here and eat no have... Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Like Sorry, well. Skittles stands. Oh it's no, Skittles not, fans not on well Suicide Watch. Like... <laughs> 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 the um, I yeah, I guess I'll go with the M and M's because they have different personalities. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. You got the red guy and then the yellow guy. Yeah, but they took the sexy dress there. away, so I don't want no. them anymore. Yeah, well, she can. Yeah, well, we or don't. Whatever have the meme was, <laughs> she had her chance. From, this just reminds me of a video I saw on Twitter of some guy in the middle of the street, you know, walking up to the camera and ranting about feminist M and M's. It was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like the unicorns with that would guy. prefer. Why do they just have an opportunity to call it feminine M's? Yeah. Oh, you're right. <laughs> it's right there, man.
Oh, I got, um, uh, that was, um, I watched, uh, the, the rings of power videos that random film talk did. They were really good. And he calls the, he calls one of the, um, the, cra the, the, the white robed witch ladies people. He calls the, the leader of them feminem. That's good. Oh, that was very... <laughs> oh, oh, I get, yeah. Okay. That took a second. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> I have superfluous. I am not going to ask Linkara about the green M&M. I value oh. my sanity. <laughs> uh, so anyway, with this movie, let's go back to it. Yeah, so you have that whole skills <laughs> thing. We have to. And then an army of unicorns appear, and uh, Mary says, we're going to need a lot more Skittles. It's just like, stop it. Please stop it. Yeah, you need more Skittles, this. because they're going to save the world. Skittles, the greatest uh. candy that there ever was. Yep. What happens Brought if you, you give the Skittles the, to the other monsters? Whatever the company is that made Skittles. No, that doesn't work, Rex, because they're just evil. The unicorns can be saved. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, like, maybe it'd be worth giving them to the Cyclops, and then he's like, there, the M&Ms. They're too good. <laughs> I'm too evil. They are too good. <laughs> we do not blend. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, they're riding all the <laughs> unicorns in, and we see this moment where they're just slamming through all of the creatures, like, stabbing them and... With the, the horns and they're just winning. And they're and terrified. You, and you have Dala say, Taste the rainbow, mother fuck, and it cuts her off. <laughs> that meme. Yeah. So, um, That's you get topical. double taste the rainbow and a motherfucker to boot. Damn. It's not cringe. No. No, no. not at all. Yeah, no. No. I was silent because, because I wasn't laughing so hard. You said that, that product placement line like, wasn't enough. Mm hmm. How would, they, how would they not like embarrassed about that product placement? They got paid. I mean, have you seen the rest of the script? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I think they're fine. That was so, a good um, money for it. So. so way back when, way back when I mentioned that uh she was dead, Helen Mirren. Turns out she's not. Yeah, she's actually even she's oh, like, a giant like, hole in her chest. And uh, and Shazam's yeah, like, like no, 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 lady, you can't die. And he hits her with a lightning bolt thing. And then she's like, ugh, just let me go to the underworld in peace. She, she gets like, shot what? in the chest cavity with the lightning. It's really funny. But uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just baffled by the fact that she just doesn't seem to give a shit. She's, she can clearly do more things and cast spells, but she's like, nah, nah I've been stabbed. Uh, I've given up, yeah. And so I like, guess oh, I'll okay. die. You seem pretty passionate this about this whole thing this whole time, time but no mind. They and hit then, her passion by the way, it's, back. It's somewhere, in her heart. Somewhere during the movie, I, I thought the dome just disappeared because you can't really see it in the background <laughs> at all. Like, it's just clear away. Okay. No, you, you, <laughs> really that's mean. You, uh, imagination. Have you tried using your imagination? <laughs> what would have happened if the dome closed on someone? You know, like someone was standing where the dome formed. Would they have just been chopped in half? Yes. Yes. Probably. Ah. Uh, um, <laughs> um, so Shazam says, I think I know how to destroy the tree, the dragon, and, you know, Lucy Lou and everything all at once. And he says, If I have overload the staff with enough lightning, she says, A bomb? You would annihilate everything in the dome. And he goes, then I have one more favorite to ask. And I just, I just said, like, how did we jump so far so quick? And we just, okay, fine. We can make a bomb now. <laughs> but that's what we're doing. Makes sense. A little bombster. Um, so then uh, Freddy and Anne just wandering about. They happen to bump right into the fucking dragon. And Lucy Lou says, Layden, kill the traitor. And so it does its weird fear blast. Instead of yeah. just setting them on fire. Yeah, that probably would have done it, but, you know, fear, The whole fear time, time I was watching, all I was, like, thinking was, why are you not... It's a dragon. Yeah. Dragons breathe fire. That's, like, the thing that they're known for doing. Why is this dragon just screaming at them? <laughs> because of fear. And then, uh, and then, and then, and then Anne says, what is a goddess without her power? And then, <laughs> and then Freddy says, uh. the most powerful thing about you is you. That's what, what she said to him. Oh, I think that when, that's when they, the wisdom of Solomon scene, Hart. They yeah. filmed that scene. Everybody behind the camera was nodding and smiling. Like they were weeping. Yes. They were weeping. They were, yes. they were getting their tissues out. They were like, "This is." This they were. Is oh, cinema. they were weeping. I was weeping. <laughs> were and there weeping. was this one cameraman goes like, oh, "Cringe." <laughs> <laughs> you listen closely. You can hear him in the. In the... And uh, we get one of the best. Again, I want to make a compilation of her deliveries in this film. They're, they're like they're having their <laughs> moment, and then it pans over to good old um, Lucy Lou, and she says, "Kill them!" Kill <laughs> them! Like, oh, why do you have to keep talking? You don't need to. You can just have Re the dragon do stuff. 
Anyway, it's about to bite them because it really doesn't want to use his fire. And uh, Shazam pulls on its tail right before it does. He got there just in yep. time. Lucky. Man, if he was two seconds later, that would have been the end of Freddy and what's her name? And yes. Caught a um, dragon by its tail. And then. Not let it go again. He says, Freddy, Andrea, don't. And it makes Lucy Lou look at them. And then he super speed grabs her staff and he's like, haha, I got it. Like, you didn't even need to distract. You have super speed. She can't do anything <laughs> against you. There's they keep a, pretending like you can't trick someone with super speed unless they're not looking. It's like, what do you mean? Now that he has the staff, uh, Freddy, Shazam, now you got powers. Well, I'm going to find everybody else. Say Shazam. Well, why would now you do that just... now when they're dealing with like all the mythological creatures? That's not going to be useful for them. Yeah, I mean, it yeah, would, wait a minute. Like it would be useful for them. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. that's right. You know what, Muller? I think you're right. That would be really useful. Damn. It's a shame that he didn't think of that. Well, see, he's just like me, a fragile, uh, you know, weak human being who just doesn't think about these things on the spot. You know, um, I, I, I didn't, okay. and I love that I can relate to how he didn't. Yeah, oh. yeah, wisdom of Good my movie. ass. It's a human um, movie, and that's what yeah. superheroes aren't aspirational figures. Human no. movies, just like us. They're just fucking idiots. Is... Oh. <laughs> human movies. Human but you know, I like the human movies. But the you know what, Mauler? You, you know what? He, he's literally on his tail now. On hey, the dragon's tail. Hey, it's true. Oh, well, shit. We've moved on yeah. a little bit from there, but he was on his tail, literally. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, it, it occurred. Um, well, what happens next? Dumb shit. Um, he baits her into following him to the tree. And then Helen Mirren shrinks the dome down to basically just the stadium. And so it traps Lucy Liu in there and him. And then I was like, wait, if the dome cannot be trans, like, gone in and out of by the gods even, then how did you meet them in that place in Philadelphia for the food, remember? How did they get there? Hmm. Dome, both sides, you can't get through it, so did she turn it off? Oh, yeah. Or what? Oh, yeah, no. just really quickly. Oh my god. Could she make a small hole in the dome and then close it back up again? Maybe. That the that maybe. That's like the only yeah. fucking thing that could possibly fix this <laughs> batshit movie. Um, he says, remove the dome. Uh, no, sorry, Lucy Liu says remove the dome. And then, uh, and then Helen Mirren is like, as long as I breathe, the dome stands till I <laughs> see you on the other side, sister. Uh, I think they're in a different movie. I mean, it's, it's all bad, but... God, the overacting. Like they just gotta yeah. just told to go nuts with it, I guess. I think do you think maybe they're trying to evoke like um Kate Blanchett in Ragnarok? I think maybe. so. Maybe everyone was like, oh, she she was campy and fun. I'm gonna be campy and fun. I don't know how to explain but it. But exactly. I was afraid of her. But yeah, she was way yeah. better in Ragnarok than they are in yeah, this. Yeah, but I was like, oh, yeah, much better. I was really scared of her because she because was Kate Blanchett mean, is a fucking And I don't want her actress. to piss on me. She's yeah. incredible, yeah. Yeah, it I'm takes sorry, a special Lucy kind Lou, of actress but, uh... to pull off the maniacal, like, Palpatine-y sort of, um, performance. So, um... And not be great. Yeah, she's like Yzma from The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we then have this shot in the background. Well, it, you have a, in the foreground is Shazam looking around. In the background, you see Lucy Lou just shooting fire at Helen Mirren and not doing anything because of the dome. That's just happening, and Shazam just slowly lands and walks over to talk to his family while it's going on. I just yeah. think it's so funny. <laughs> like, Lucy Lou's just there for the next ten minutes, like, blah, 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 blah. Come on. Uh, so <laughs> Why is it our, working? We can have our conversation. So, so uh, uh, Freddy runs up to the wall, and so you know they're on either side of the dome. Like, get out of there! And he's like, I can't. And then he says, Billy, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be in there! And he's crying, and it's like, Wait, only Shazam knows what's about to happen. Nobody else does. Like, he hasn't told him yet. Yeah, he hasn't even told him about the bomb or anything. So I don't know why. Like we we can get in and out of the um. The funny thing about this is if there's a little makeshift door, which there's plenty of doors in a stadium, like to the fucking you know cloak room or whatever, you can just go back to the Rock of Eternity. Lucy Lou's just trapped in there. Yeah. Yeah. I guess until <laughs> Helen Mirren dies, but you know what I mean. Like the, basically, the problem here is that. Freddy should be like, oh, sweet, get out of there when you can, you know? But instead, he's treating it as though Shazam's about to die, and that's not information he has yet. That's awkward. But hey, whatever. Uh -oh. Maybe the characters are watching the film, too. Um, and he says, they yeah, are. Uh, I am supposed to be in here. I used to think I, could do any, uh, I couldn't do anything right, and then I didn't, uh, didn't deserve my powers, but it's something that I can do. I can save all of you. 
And then Freddy says, hey, hey, it's all or none, all or none. And he says, yeah, all my family gets to live and none of you gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. That sounds like more clever than I believe you could be. It's so bad. What do you mean? Like, twice. Yeah. You said no, the same no, thing yeah, twice. If you all live and none of you get hurt, it's like, yeah, it's kind of baked into each respective statement. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know, Mala, you've said this a couple times already, but that's the sort of line where if they said it in the writer's room, you'd laugh and then go, okay, no, Rags, seriously, what are we going to Did you think decide? that was a good line? I feel no, like No, I didn't say that. I said that. that was more clever than I think he could have come up with. You think, oh, you think that's even more clever than what he could have said? Hmm. Yeah, because he's not, like, at all, like, smart or really in, you know, like, like, I don't think, he's not quick. Okay. So when he says that, it seems out of place. I don't think it's good. But that seems out of place for him, you know, okay, to be able yeah. to say so that. I think oh. that they think it's a heavy and like heartfelt thing while I'm sitting there thinking like, did he actually have it in his head, the all or none? And he was like, all of you live and none <laughs> of you get hit. There you go. <laughs> like, that's why it comes across as suitably clownable to me. But like, that it's not supposed to be clowny. Would have been better. Well, I mean, it's not. There's supposed to be a moment where they're recognizing this is the final thing he says to his brother. This is what I mean about the tone. Like, because mm. he, he then says Red like freddy i've never had a family you know that everybody i cared about left me my mom my dad everyone when i found you guys i had uh -huh. to hang on and i held on too tight i should have let you guys do your own thing now it's time for you to fly like we didn't do oh, any of that okay. really we had like one scene yeah we've had like five minutes across two movies of them being together so like i don't know <laughs> Most of the time that they are communicating, it's them like sneaking up and down the stairs or something. There's no like really there's no character building being done. It's them trying to leave the house, sneaking into the house, creeping up the stairs. Um, it's yeah. not it's not character stuff. No. So then he's done. Ooh. He's moving on. He's going back to Lucy Lou and on cue perfectly. He sees her and she says, we end this now. But then he goes, yeah. We do. You know, sometimes you you know when you write the words down, it's not like you're writing it on parchment. Like you can you can hit backface. You, can, <laughs> you don't have to commit to that. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can change your mind. All right, it's not it's not set in stone. I wish I was there when they filmed it. You'd be like, David, come on. Yes, we do. That's all you got? <laughs> and then he could be like, well, what do you think you should say? Well, like, first of all, why the hell are you having her say, we had this now? Like, <laughs> fuck. Uh, this movie is amusing in a, the wrong way. Yep. And, and the thing is, it's just non-stop terrible. There's not really a scene where we go, oh, no, that seems That was like good. a good scene. Batwoman yeah. had one good scene. Yeah. Like, one <laughs> <of those reasons. laughs> Dun, 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 you don't dun. even reach Batwoman levels of quality. Do you remember? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it. legitimately, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure where we end up with this one. Wasn't it? Yeah, um, well, wasn't it High Top who put something out and then someone said, you know, it's okay to redraft? And then he was like, how fucking dare you? Like, oh, <laughs> imply that I don't redraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you would ever you. say that to another creator. He says, oh, like, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's like, it. Like, as a writer yeah. saying it to a fellow writer or something. Yeah, that was. Oh, it. God. Hey. Good oh, time. my God. My gobbly goodness. So, we can. We can this can be quick. He just shoots out a bunch of lightning, it bounces around the whole dome, it goes into the staff, and then he flies directly at the dragon and says, Shazam, which I think is a very unwise thing to do, since that'll turn you into a human. Um, but That's what I thought as well, yeah. I, I guess like, he wants okay, that extra guess... lightning strike to come down? I don't know. Uh, in any case, it kills everything. Goodbye dragon, Lucy Lou, tree, and... Oh, not the tree. I like that we managed to get this far, by the way, without... Talking about the thing that's about to happen that is the big thing. This yep. is the big topic the for the whole film. Yeah, this, this needs to be where it is. It needs to be easily about the thing there. that pissed me because... off the most. Well, this is the thing that people in chat it. won't even be ready for. And I, I, I talked about it with uh, Az and Shad on the thing uh, as like a spoiler talk thing. But yes, I, I'm not lying. He kills everything, even him. He's dead. He's yeah, on. he kills himself to save the world. Uh, obviously, the horde of what a hero like, mythological monsters they all just disappear as well. They like go ash mode, yeah. They turn to leaves, yeah. yeah they find a menace. There's a lot of that in these movies where the thing just 
turns to ash. It's like, yeah. You know, no, you know what? Problem. No, Mahler, I'm going to give it a little bit more credit. Do it. I'm going to little, just a little teeny tiny bit. They turn into leaves and they came from a tree. So that's something. That That is a thing that that's, is... That's something. I, mean, I guess yeah. they came from a tree, but they also came from like sacks of biologically like I'm, rendered yeah i was like no i i no no mercy it's, i'm it's, tired of like the, the whole oh yeah they <laughs> all <miss>. get, <laughs> they all just get yeeted why would we have to deal with like the consequences of this massive epic battle when we can just delete they have like, to rake just, all those we can leaves just go for control, <laughs> control <laughs> yeah, underneath yeah. the tree i've never had a lawn all that they've done is they've hit control a and then delete and it's just like, oh yeah, now we don't have to deal with no, any they, of those problems. That's a lot of leaves, Springy. I don't they think copied and pasted a lot of leaves in place of the Control <laughs> A, Control X. A, a, it's Control I'm tired X. Of it. That, they uh, just yeah. don't. Nobody wants to deal. It's what <laughs> happens. Corpses? Like, it, just not corpses. Just like you know, anybody crazy. who's left over. What if any of the Chitauri wanted to surrender or something? What was going to say? Oh no. Every last Ultron bot, we got him, and then of course snapping and you know deleting. That one I guess is more acceptable because yeah, you would do that. I'm just tired of like all of the enemies just like up, oh, we're dead. Well, yep, I we thought lost you were talking about the fact that like the way it affects cleanup because having a hive mind thing die and everything dies. I think this times with that definitely is valid, and um, sure. I think the Chitari one was a bit of a stretch, but it was like eh, they cut off from they like robot flesh thing. I don't know. But the thing I was going to appreciate about Avengers is that they left bodies everywhere. There was destruction everywhere, and we That's even right. got a now. homecoming built a story off the idea of uh, cleanup crews and stuff. It's like hey, not bad. Yep. Whereas now, they, they don't even want to do that. It's like, no, just get rid of it all, like Yudum, so that there's no cleanup, no problems. Just like, yeah. it's, it might as well have never happened. That's why I find it so frustrating. Um, you it just minimizes the effect on the world. It's really, really annoying. A world yep. that they're not continuing. Who cares, right? But whatever. Yeah, it's, just... it's more a principled outrage hey. than anything that helped them they got turned they're dead they died and turned to leaves too nobody cries for the unicorns that saved the world they no. were just that is kind of weird how they just i i used by the humans they just, they just despawn the unicorns they just turn to leaves maybe they, maybe they the unicorns leave. are right to hate humans they get used and then thrown away Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Helen Mirren indeed. Helen Mirren died as well, and she—the last thing she says yeah. is like, "Ah, you were a true god, or something." It's like, you're god. like, a, yeah, you're a hero, uh, a god. You had one, you had one goodish idea. Ah, oh, what a god! Yeah, you I don't know. Well, there's an idea. <laughs> there, there's an idea in the. Uh, there's an idea in like if you dig deep, deep down under all of the the grime and the CGI and the fucking leaves. <laughs> There's an idea underneath there that Helen Mirren's character like really despises humans and doesn't like them and thinks they're not you know worthwhile. And then eventually Shazam is the one who's like, no, humans are cool. See, I'm I'm a hero and I can do heroic things and I'm great and I'll work with you to stop this bigger evil. And they're like, it's it's not a complex idea and it's been done six trillion times before. But there's an idea there, and they even they don't do it well because they can't yeah. do anything well. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, so yeah, the, the, everyone's like crying and sad because boy dead. <laughs> Where? Oh, sad, 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 wait, 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 wait. Someone, what, what someone sent at? me this image, and I need you to see it. Well, okay, what, okay. Is, what have you inflicted Zigzars, upon upon us? Zigzars what what is... sent me this. <laughs> wait, <laughs> it's amazing. Those <laughs> <laughs> <Just> loopy legs. <laughs> <laughs> just everything gets okay. into S tier. <laughs> you got a pig, you got a one rag, you got a little, yeah, and then you got a little ferret there, and and rags the doggo, horsies, and yeah, a little kiwi. And yeah, look at that little fellow. Look at him running with those floofy legs. He's tried his best, and I appreciate it. <laughs> this is great. This particular rendering of Friggy is hilarious. I love it. <laughs> the yeah. little That's smile, funny, the it? little smile there. <laughs> Wait, That's what I like. <laughs> what was the inspiration for you? this representation of Friggy? I, I need I'm to know. I'm not sure what would be the inspiration for that, but I like it. <laughs> Obviously, they, me Shrek Shrek a little bit. they do. They do. They're kind of like Shrek ears. Maybe that was the inspiration. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the uh the witch doctor's clothes you see it's not easy. no this the, the, the lore on uh the lore on that is i i don't know yet <laughs> be we'll announced. Figure it out. what the hell so anyway oh 
That's good. That's good. Um, th this is a line I couldn't make out. This is the best approximation I have of it. I think it's what she said. If anyone has any better memory of it, go ahead. But uh, they're at his funeral. Oh, wait. No. Actually, wait. There's something before this to talk about, which is um, yeah. he's dead. They're all sad. Then you have... I can't remember who says it, but... Someone says he I was a hero. Or someone says he was a hero and a god. And the wizard says... Uh, Anthea? Yeah, that's probably it, actually. Yeah. And then the wizard says the he wizard should be god. laid to rest like one. Yeah. Now, okay. I'm probably the only character, if I were there, that would say, fuck you? He's a human. He's not a god. Well, 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 yeah. well, hold on. He said he should be laid to rest like one, which in and of itself is a nice, like, that is a gesture of he should be laid to rest like a hero. No, like a that god. That isn't in and of it. Like, like a god? Yeah, that's well, what I take issue with. The DC world, then. lay Ares to rest like the god that he is. That's um, what I'm saying. Like, it's not about, well, to be honest with you, it's just take credit. He's a human. He was a human. What he did was human. human. He deserves I think human customs. Human, yeah, that humans are human heroes. Are capable that's what I'm saying. Like the idea that because okay, he did something yeah, so yeah, great yeah. that he gets to have a god's later. It's like no, fuck you, humans. <laughs> like enough of this crazy shit. Where it's like, uh, after what the god gods shit. just did, are you kidding me? These are all fucking gods. Look what they just did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and look at what Wonder Woman did in 1994. Uh, I don't need um, your stupid god customs. We're gonna bury him like a man. Yep, because yeah. he's a human being and a really good one. Which Plus, would like, actually the just burying him anyway, like a, like normally. But, well, I guess, just, uh, like, it would actually world. change the plot line if he was to be buried like a human. Well, yeah. because because the thing that's worth emphasizing for everybody is this is a very emotional scene as it should be. You know, yes. the has to sacrifice his life to save the world and his family, and it's very sad. Um, and it's very it, sad. I was crying. It's the payoff that it's it's it is exactly what it is tr trying to be, which is. This character has made a sacrifice, and isn't it sad that he's gone? Mm -hmm. oh. oh, someone just said, was there anything left to bury? It's like, actually, yes. Inexplicably, yes. <laughs> yeah, his, his body not... was whole. It's his just body his, was whole. It it's his holes. human body with a bit of stuff on his face. Got like a weird, like, stuff on his face. So, yeah. <laughs> he's he's yeah, mostly fine. All Whatever. things considered, not looking too bad. Yeah. I mean, you died, but still. What happens next yeah, work he does look like... if you were in pieces? Yeah. Like, loads of fleshy intestines everywhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, jeez, we have to pick all these up. Or it's just, like, the, his bottom half. Or it's just, oh. like, legs and a, look, yeah. a comical spine sticking out with, like, a like an Among Us <laughs> bone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, See, God. that's comedy. So, yeah. Uh, then the part of the where I was a little bit confused. They're at his funeral. They're in the fucking god realm burying him, which, like I said, it's just like, fuck that. Burying him in his... Yeah. He's an American. He's not a stupid god. Exactly. Yeah. Bury me in Philly. Um, <laughs> Philly. <laughs> and so uh, Dahl is looking at the grave, and I think she says, like I said, this is the only thing I can get to fit. I think she says, will his light ever come back? I'm not sure if it's that. Uh... I need to keep listening, because I was just like, what the fuck question is that? And then the wizard says, the staff is drained of magic. Only the spark of a god can restore its power, and there are no gods left. The implication mm. being, we could get his light back, but, you know, the staff's out of battery, so. And it's kind of yeah. like, you, you think to yourself, wait, why is the staff oh, out of battery? Yeah. Was it exploded? I, I mean, exploded. but like it, it's, it All functions. It's just low on charge. It's still intact. It's still intact, you know? Like it didn't get destroyed by this. And you but restored like, it before. Did they ever have to do that? But basically, my, 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 my conniptions are that it should. It, why? Did, this was never a thing. It never ran out of battery before. That was, mm -hmm. that's, was that ever a fun? It can break in half, but it's still enough to give people powers back, even when it's broken in half. No, it's out of power. Okay. Yeah. And, and and they've set it all up. They said only a god can restore it, and there's none left. That's true. Oh. There are none left that have powers. <laughs> and then you hear oh, the god. wonderful voice of Gal Gadot say, "There oh, is no. one. There and, uh, is one." You see her legs, and oh. the fucking soundtrack actually like cooms all over the screen. Yeah. Goes, da -na 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 no yodeling though. It's very, so loud. Very I legit was like, "Calm down." I have brought down. myself a gaud. Not even an action magic scene. To feel denial. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's so terrible. And the thing is, the first thing you think is, "Wait, 
Where were you? Where were you? How did you get here? For, yeah. Uh, where, where were, were you? you? And how did yeah. you get here? How, how did you get here? How did you know to come here? There's so many questions and they will answer none and of she's them. She's just here <laughs> to pose, yeah. doing the pose there. It's yep. like she knows that she's being filmed. Yeah, the only thing they explain <laughs> is that she got the, the God letter that they apparently wrote her. That's all they give us yeah. in the scene. Um, and by the way, I just really... I really need to emphasize for chat what the fuck, what what the experience was like. So just like ignore the shitty fucking co cock ass dialogue for for <laughs> a second, um, and uh, ignore the fact that they're burying him in a very inappropriate place. They tonally, tonally, it's somber, 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 somber music, somberness. This is very like you know Billy Batson's dead. Like we are mourning him, we are mourning him, and this goes on for quite a bit. They they really drag it out. They really milk. I did kind of skip this, over it. Yeah. Um, this yeah and then out of nowhere all of a sudden we hard cut to just na -na 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 it just assaults you they don't do a they don't do a recomposition they don't do like a transition they don't slow <laughs> down the wonder woman theme it's not like da -na -na -da -na -da. like they well, why would it be it a soft like piano version yeah exactly it's epic it's epic yeah, exactly. They do Look, nothing. Look, it's Wonder Woman. You like Wonder Woman, right? After Wonder no. Woman 1984? <laughs> yeah, she's great. Yeah, it's like they ripped it straight from the BVS soundtrack. Yeah, I, it's definitely, it's I definitely a different composition, but like, it's like you can tell it's different, but it's, it's different almost in the worst way. It is loud. Yeah, it's it doesn't loud. have yeah. because, because the actual one from Batman v Superman starts off pretty chill. It's yeah. not like super duper loud. It's like the arrangement they had for 1984 where it was really loud. It was just a bunch of instruments all at once thrown at you. Not yeah. a lot of clarity. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I described it to Capital O um, earlier as it was like I got hit in the face with a shovel with the soundtrack. It was just a yep. shovel mm -hmm. right good to way, the face. Good way of putting it. Yeah. She, um, I, she has really this, can't, yeah, go ahead. She has this face of like, yeah, I'm here. So things are I'm good here. now. He does. Bet you're she all incredibly that, happy. Mm -hmm. I'm here, aren't I? Fucking cool. And there's only one ex like everyone's like, "Whoa, yeah." And the wizard, he's just like, "Hmm." And I really like it. <laughs> go check out his face yeah. in that scene. He just just looks unimpressed. He's just like, "Oh, for fuck's sake, here we go." Like, <laughs> like we're having a moment here. For fuck's sake. Ah, uh, this fucking idiot. Because he probably saw Wonder Woman eighty four. Okay, and he's just. Like, I was about to say. He just looks <laughs> as I. I know what you fucking did. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so she reignites the uh, the staff because she just hits it into the ground. That's all it takes. It's just like, yeah, because she's a god, I guess, or well, god, good enough. And, and um, it yep. starts to regrow the, the uh, well, just plants and, and stuff everywhere, making the place much more peaceful and happy. And then, boom, Zam's hand and arm bursts out of the ground. And uh, Eugene's like, oh my god, it's Jambi. Then he goes, no, it's just me. I'm back. Woohoo, yay, la 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 la. Yeah. And, so yeah. we, we need to talk about this. You don't get to you, kill your yeah. character and then bring them back two minutes later. You don't get to do that. You don't get Thank to God. extract all of the emotions that you get from people with a heroic sacrifice, only to not commit to what the heroic sacrifice entails, which is never having that character again. You don't yeah. get to do that. That's cheap That's as bullshit. fuck. I hate it. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah. And especially, yeah. just, it, it's just such a missed opportunity. Like, you yes. know this is going to be... I mean, I guess they filmed this like five million years ago, so I don't know if they already knew they won't be getting another one anyway or another, uh, one way or another. But if you would have written it not that stupidly, where he just comes back after two minutes, as you just said, you could have had Shazam have like this heroic ending. Yeah, you feel uh, like giving the film the a little of bit of props. You're like, wow, you killed him? All right. Yeah. I, I yeah. You, you get That's those cojones. Uh, storytelling choice. Uh, but they can't commit, and they don't want to commit, and you don't get any no. points for that. You get negative points. Yeah, yeah yep. it's you get negative absolutely points. negative points. You yeah. retroactively lose yourself points by undoing something. Yep. Yeah, it's like one step yeah, forward, no. then three steps back. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And yeah, also, exactly. by the I actually way, got pretty... I got oh, sorry, pretty go excited it. when I thought, oh my god, they might actually kill him. I was like, yeah. I it won me over so much because it's not a good yeah. movie at all up until that point. But I was like, holy shit, they actually killed him. Wow, and then I actually got kind of excited thinking about, oh, what could they do if they if they did get a next this movie? Oh, what even could less they do chance of Shazam three, thank God. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, like, there's there's a lot you could do, and then 
of all the ways to of undoing because what, what they could have done all the ways something where back, like yeah. if all the ways to bring them back they picked the most cringe like diana ex machina way mm -hmm. possible it's it's awful it's yeah horrendous. yeah like I didn't meet. I didn't bother to show up for the well, she is actual literal threat, like, she's but I'm here now. Ex Machina. <laughs> yeah, no, you, it's true. Literal. She's an actual god. Yeah. 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 So, and and also, by the way, this raises a question. You can use the staff to fix the garden. What was the point of the apple? That's a good. I question, don't actually yeah. know what we're supposed to gather exactly. I thought it's something. I thought something weird was happening, like because he died with the tree, the the tree's energy. Oh, got, what's like, that? Oh, come on, what? Oh, I, I literally have no because what you just said. <laughs> no, if that's we what, wouldn't write it, but it's what would they do? Yeah, if, if it was just the say, staff, yeah. then yeah, what the fuck? Because that just saves the realm by hitting the floor. Are you kidding me? Like everything yeah, in the movie was pointless. Yeah. Wow, it really does connect to everything it touches. And, also, and then also, by the way, tonally, oh, zombie! What was fucking? What was that? Oh my god! Yeah. It's funny. You guys like zombies? Funny. It's the first joke. It's the first draft, and also inappropriate. Very inappropriate. Yeah. Most of the jokes are inappropriate, given exactly like the context it. of what's actually oh, happening. God. Yeah. Someone said in chat, David said they had intended to show someone like Batman or Superman trying to get into the dome on a news report or something, but couldn't. That yeah, would make it worse. Could never the, that to. would make it worse. Because then the second the dome is down, we'd be like, where the fuck were they? And then they can obviously get in through the uh, Rock of Eternity doors that anyone could just talk to them about. Right. And then where were they up to that point? It's like, don't. Just don't, David. Just stop. <laughs> stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Leave Leave else that, um, That's why, it... you know, after going through the whole movie and thinking about all this stuff, the fact that he's like, yeah, I kind of knew it would flop. And it's like, well, why didn't you try to make it good? <laughs> Well, like, I, guess, I, don't... I, I guess he would have the perspective of, well, I made something that I think was good, but the studio more or less sort of sent it out to die. Uh, to which I would respond, yeah, they kind of did. But, like, if your film was incredible, mm. I don't think they would have. Yeah. We're, we're, oh, I want to mention, by the way, Anthena gets her powers back, too. That's just, it just happened. Yeah, it's because like, of this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, that was... That was no like... lasting consequences at all for anything. Yeah, exactly. I just can't. I can't help but compare this because, um, you know, Ra um, Wrath of Khan and Search for Spock. You know, that's an example of a character dies but then comes back. And but I, I just think about that and the, you know, firstly he doesn't come back two minutes later. Secondly, um, it's an entire film of sacrifice, of consequences, of ma you know, major shit happening before they finally get to a point where they've both like mechanically and um uh you know thematically um earned this this restoration and it's just you know there there I, I just can't help but feel like you know there might have been an opportunity here even if it would have been nowhere near as good as that but like you have him remain dead for this film and if you really fucking need to bring him back you need to have a whole film that is filled with top to bottom sacrifice consequences a journey you and need arc. consequences yeah well, and, yeah, the, exactly. uh, you know, there there are examples of stories where a character dies and then comes back and then that's meaningfully dealt with. Don't say what it is, if you know what it is. That it meaningfully deal with, uh, you know, like th th that. Like somebody yeah. having to sort of grapple with the effect that that would mm -hmm. have on their sense of self and mortality and life in general. But I mean, it's just back to cracking jokes. It's just back to normal. Like, it's like nothing bad happened, except you got all of the juicy, juicy emotions that you could extract. By having yeah. that heroic sacrifice. My brain really glazed over after this. I, I don't know how much I really absorbed about I, anything it's just that kind of right To me, it's part of the course like, of the rest no, of the movie. We have seen countless examples of the shittiest writing tactics to avoid having to deal with problems throughout. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's just... And yeah, of course they sucks. kill someone and bring them back instantly. That's like one of the classic, you do not do this as a writer. Cardinal sin type yeah. writing stuff. Pretty yeah. bad. I think, yeah, your your general standard writing advice would advise not to do that. Yeah, any of these things. There are so yeah. many really awful tropes that I thought we were all aware. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that really you just don't bad. do. Yeah. Yes. Did you not learn in all of your Fast and Furious movies that you don't do this? <laughs> I mean, this is maybe the most egregious product. Well, wait, didn't Fast and Furious bring movie, back a character example. who died? Wasn't there that guy in Tokyo Drift? I think so. Yeah. They brought him back. Yeah. Yeah. How did? How does that happen in that world, though? I could have sworn even I the actor know. in an interview said, like, he thought he was dead, <laughs> and they brought him back, and he was like, okay. 
Uh, they use the car to, the like, rev so a battery. Like and it sort of thing. I think what happened was that the, the film, it was initially they brought him back in a story that was set before then, but then it just kept going, and then they brought him back anyway in a story right. that is definitely after that happened. Oh, yeah, okay. I think Han was his name. That was the guy, and he, he just came back, even though he, he died. Yeah. They don't uh, even explain it. That's really funny. <laughs> he respawned. Galgadot yeah. died in Fast and Furious. They're bringing her back. Yeah, I heard about that too. Yeah. Um, look, uh, and I'm just thinking about the fact that it's Wonder Woman and they're talking about gods and it's just a spark just lit up in my brain where it's like the term deus ex machina, you know. Oh, goes, were you? It's you literally you missing. I think you, you, missed, you missed the conversation. Oh, did I mean? Oh, yeah, capital I, I think, I mean, said a... like a literal, a literal Deus Ex Machina. He, oh, the memes had a Biden that. moment. But it's okay. Yes, you were having a Biden <laughs> moment. That's okay, though. But yes, you're yeah, right. It is a Deus Ex Machina. He's actually a god who comes in at the end to save the day. <laughs> oh, my God. I know it's not one to one, but you know how she does that? And yep. then she starts like walking off Wonder Woman. And there's a conversation that happens, we'll talk about it in a sec, but she's, she's walking away. And it felt to be like such a, even though some with facial expressions, like the fucking. Simpsons thing with like, well, my work here is done, and I just want Body to be like, you didn't do anything, <laughs> like, you, didn't, <laughs> you didn't do anything that cost you anything. You just turned up, pressed a thing, and then yeah, like, you left it to the, you left it to the seventeen year old kid to save the world while you were off doing I don't know nothing at all. And then she's like coming in, being like, ah, see, look at how kind she's doing the kind God meme. It's like this cost you nothing, asshole. Yeah. yeah. It's like the Flash in the Snyder Cut. He presses the Save the World button. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'd hope you would. Hate this shit. Yeah, because <laughs> you can tell she's just like, man, I'm pretty cool. And you're like, yeah, okay, mm, whatever. Yeah, like, yeah you know, oh, Wonder Woman doesn't strike out, like me. Wonder Woman really does not strike me as somebody who should be played as arrogant. Um, um, if anything, she is incredibly graceful and humble, she, but, you know, yeah. Nah. I, I will say, like, I find it fascinating when people say, oh, yeah, Gal Gadot embodies Wonder Woman. She really oh, no. doesn't. Oh, she no. really, really, really doesn't. No. I don't know why people say that. She well, looks you remember like, little, you know, she doesn't really look woman. like Wonder Woman, though. Wonder Woman's more muscular than she is. Yeah, right? that's the... It's a superficial resemblance at most, um, but there are better choices, to be sure. Um... And like that little smirk in BVS, where it's like, "Oh yeah, you know, the world's ending, but I'm I'm loving it." Uh, that was actually an improvisation by Gal Gadot, so that kind of shows that she doesn't really get it um, as far as, as far as it's concerned. And of course, Zach doesn't get it because he left it in. Um, yeah, it's why we need new Wonder Woman stories to like sort of reset what people's expectations and understanding of that character is, because you start right. to see it seep into like the perception of that character. It's really lame. It is really lame. Um, did just immense to... damage to DC. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. it's so colossal. Um, I'm just reminded of an old of the second episode of the old Justice League cartoon where uh, there was the question of, oh, where's Superman? Where's Batman? Where are these members that we don't want to deal with this episode? And it's just like, oh, Superman's dealing with an earthquake. Batman is busy doing something something else. And so they actually account for it. And then the funniest part of that is Superman does actually show up and saying, oh, it was just a, it was just a minor aftershock. We didn't, uh, it was a false alarm. But the thing is that cartoon, it dealt with the whole Justice League problem better than the fucking live action thing that's meant to be more mature. I, I don't get it. I don't get how you don't at least have a throwaway in there to try. Uh, fuck it all. Fuck it all. Um, oh, they do, they do the, uh, they do the really cringe joke again. Um, joke about the age difference as well. Well, oh, yeah, and no. so the difference this time is that the first time around, the parents both said, like, no, weird, but the kids were like, hey, hey. this time, the mum says it's weird, and the kids and the dad are all like, hey, because the joke being, of course, well, even the dad is like, well, come on, it's Gal Gadot, she's so hot. Mm. I was just like, wow, you would not get away with this if they were flipped, I'm just saying. No. Why, <laughs> why, would, you, why would you make that kind of joke? I don't get it. <laughs> they think it's funny. I thought that everybody agreed with the whole what's it, Edward or whatever in Twilight? Like, I thought everybody agreed that that was weird. Yeah. It's, it's difficult I, to do in a way that doesn't come across very weird, especially with, like... Like, I, like again, the relationship started, the first one, with manipulation. This one... Yep. I mean, he doesn't even know her. <laughs> like, no, he doesn't know anything about her. I don't know, yeah. It's all just like, what are we doing? What's happening? Help me out here. I don't... Oh, I don't know what we're doing anymore. 
So, uh, before she leaves, she says, it was an amazing thing you did, the sacrifice you made, <laughs> and you brought this world back to life. Perhaps God and man can live in peace. She's the only God left. <laughs> I was gonna say, you're speaking for yourself, lady. What do you mean? Like, if they ever remade the room, I feel like they should cast Cal Gadot. They need to do a <laughs> You are tearing me apart, Lisa. I'm fed up with this world. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be perfect. <laughs> we will feed up this world together. <laughs> oh my god, I need to get into every deep fake program right now and make this happen. Get deep in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay, now. Yeah, I don't know. Um, this, so this, this, oh, this shit. I just wanted to end. So here we go. Uh, he no, says, "Hey, who wants their powers back?" And then he looks at the wizard and he goes, "We can do that, right?" And the wizard says, "Yeah." And so they give the kids all the power. And it's like, well the done. Just, you yeah, broke the only thing yeah. protecting you as a narrative being that the kids ended up with the power through recklessness. You know. And now you're just doing it because fuck it. Yeah, because you guys did such a great job this time around. I don't understand it. All, um, you, you know, all like, all of power. those people who got killed by the Cyclopses and everything like that, that no, was... No, 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 we didn't talk about them. That was avoidable. Yeah, it was. Uh, a lot of this It was, was avoidable by the avoidable. wizard telling him to not break the staff at any cost. And moreover, well, just... there's really... A, a, a pretty, I'm pretty sure only Billy has any level of, like, damn, that's kind of on us. Nobody else seems to really care. I want to sit the wizard down and be like, so these lads here, these are all... By the way, you didn't choose the rest of them. You chose Billy because he was pure of heart, right? Even though you said it was the wiseness of his heart or whatever the fuck. But anyway, yeah. these kids, you didn't choose them, but you've given it all to them now. It's like, yeah. It's like, how about, how about we take it off Dala because she's like nine and we give it to, let's say, Jackie Chan. What about that? And then if he says, well, Jackie Chan's <laughs> not pure of heart, I'd be like, oh. Oh, isn't he? He's pure of fists. Okay. Well, you know, um, who are you Maybe again, to, Mr. Wizard, oh, to wait, judge who's pure of not, heart? Not Superman. I was going to say give it to Superman, anything. but you can't. Not in this world. You can't trust him with that kind of power. <laughs> He'll kill <laughs> everything. <laughs> Maybe you give it to Hal Jordan if he's out there somewhere. Yeah. Well, what about Keanu Reeves? Out. Can we give it to him? He's like, nope, not pure of heart. You're like, oh, <laughs> not pure of heart. Okay. All right. No, it's okay. Okay. Really? All right. You know okay, best, geez. Mr. Wizard. You gave it to the yeah, fucking I mean, child over sure. there. <laughs> I'm sure if Keanu Reeves saw two bullies like punching and beating up a crippled person, he wouldn't ever intervene with that. He just isn't yeah, I think to the level I think he'd go up to him and say, hey, stop it. And then they would. Holy oh, shit, it's John Wick. <laughs> and then he'd oh sit God. down and, and like work out their and problems. Why do you feel the need yeah, to bully exactly, other people? Exactly. Like, why are you doing he'd this? They, they, they the school they counts for problems. John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I hate it, but run along. <laughs> they ask Anthena, what are her plans now? And uh, she's like, well, I guess you, you, so they say, are you going to take care of the realm? And she says, no, I'm going to let that realm heal. For now, I'm going to take some time off with the common folk and see what there is to learn. Mm. And then she holds Freddy's hand and it's like, oh. No. No, it's no. No, no, no. No, she is hmm. 6,000 years old. You can do better. <laughs> <laughs> there are younger women it's, out there, dude. It sounds like yeah. a fun, fun sentence to say. Like it sounds like a meme, but no, she is actually six thousand years old. Yeah. <laughs> she She's but older than the pyramids. She's <laughs> made the same mistake the Stonehenge made. They don't actually. She doesn't act like she's six thousand years old. Nope. She acts like <laughs> kind of like a stilted twenty-year-old. Oh God, yeah, she's fifteen hundred years old, older than the pyramids. Mm. <laughs> and hilarious. comes back to take the staff and basically just says I'm going on holiday I'm tired of prison <laughs> I'm getting out of this movie as quickly as I can pretty much yeah mm -hmm. oh my <laughs> god guys she's literally older than human civilization hey. yeah. uh, it says it says uh, that the earliest uh, the earliest civilizations developed between 4000 and 3000 uh, BC I, are you yeah. sure about that that's what National sure. Geographic Society says how old is how old is Soma? Uh, let's see. It's Soma, and it came out um, twenty sixteen. Wait, what? it's roughly six thousand years ago. Yeah, that would be probably what they're referring to. That was Sumer. one of the earliest civilizations. Um, because I well, thought it was I think like that it's not yeah, just people about... cohabitating; it's like civilization proper. Uh, how old is Jericho? 
Um, How old? The book? Probably not that old. Uh, yeah, but let me see. Are you talking about it Clive is. Barker's Jericho by Clive Barker? No, no, and I'm not talking about the TV show Jericho either. I'm talking oh, about the city of Jericho. Okay. Uh, how old is Jericho? First walled city in history, the oldest city in the world. Uh, um, I, I assume we're not counting stuff like the first um, ag agricultural revolution or the. I Neolithic. presume that that's not what Rags is counting. But the point I, being I, is that she is old. She's she is like old. as old as yeah. yeah, basically as old as human civilization. When the first humans finally got together to create civilization and agriculture and like a hierarchy of leadership and like started to build buildings and settle down and create civilization she was born then as well and she i mean and she was probably an adult you know by then as well so she watched all yeah. of humanity throughout the years progress and grow and uh this is this is the one yep this is the one it wasn't even you know like the great men um of history it wasn't like a a caesar augustus or a you know, and Abraham Lincoln or, or Carrot Top. It was it was this guy. It was Zach or Zachy or Jake or whatever his name is. This is the one. <laughs> Freddy, you racist. <laughs> Freddy, Freddy. His name's Freddy. This is the one, Freddy. Finally, someone worthy of my, I don't know, divinity or whatever. So literal last note says, what's my superhero name? And the wizard goes, your name is Shazam. And then he goes, of course. And then Freddy goes, I still think we can beat it. And then the credits happen. Yay, that's when I left. Fuck. <laughs> we do. We do have two after credits scenes, make this but they yeah, are the, the, inconsequential. The, they fuck. lead nowhere. Yeah. The yeah. first one is the Peacemaker. It's Harcourt and the fat guy. Yeah, uh, genuinely, it looks like just trying to bait society. or promote yeah, like they'll be just kind of using the Justice Society in Peacemaker season two. I imagine that's all that is. I don't know. Do you think that they have the money to do that? I don't know what James Gunn's plans are, but what else is that scene supposed to? Is it just be memes? Do you think it wasn't actually leading to anything? Uh, but, but, it probably was it, leading it, to something originally. It's not happening anymore. Was it just is it not? Memes? Well, and so if, I, not. if I can, right the the after credits because we'll go through the other one quick because this one's a dead end. Um, in the first film. Mark Strong's in prison, and he gets visited by a caterpillar with a robotic device on him, saying basically that they have plans, they're going to do things, and it's going to be amazing. And it ends with them being like, "Hey, hey, hey, hey." This one, Mark Strong's got a big beard, and the caterpillar turns up, and he's like, "Where have you been? It's been two years." And the caterpillar's like, "It takes ages for me to get around, okay? But you know, the plans—they're real coming together." And then Mark Strong says, "Tell me everything," and he says, "I will. I just got to go do one thing," and then leaves. And then Mark Strong's like, "What the hell?" And then it ends. And that was going to be Shazam 3, but not anymore. No Mr. Mind. Yeah. But instead, you got these characters who aren't in, like, the comics, as far as I'm aware. No, I, I looked it up. They're not. Yeah, that seems odd. Uh, but especially considering how lame they were. And the idea of a supervillain caterpillar sounds, like, way more interesting to me, inherently. Yeah. yeah. We got here. But, yep, yeah, that's, that's, that's the Shazam end. Oh, and they had a little uh, Avengers joke as well. Where he said Avengers Society, I kind of like that. Then it's, it's uh, uh, yep, all right, we're done. Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Terrible, 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 oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Really bad. Yeah. Bad. One, of the, one of the worst, I would say. Which I think is this one is actually crazy one of for the, the DC universe. Yeah. You're really competing for like that bottom. Sp <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, you find out it's like, ooh, it's not, it's not, it's suffering at the box office. You're like, yeah, okay. Yep. Good. Good. <laughs> Where does this, this one needs to be an think? example to the rest? Yeah. <laughs> what this, to be like a, a, this a, is a what happens hanging from the gallows in the courtyard. <laughs> well, Ant Man was really happens. awful too. So it's yeah, crown. I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it took us what like five hours, forty minutes to break this one down. It's still very long. I know it's not as long as the recent Marvel things, but still, it's very long. Saying it's yeah. Well, yeah. riddled. Uh. Yeah, but some of the most noticeably shitty writing tactics. Like I said, this thing was rushed. This makes you wonder, Maybe. like, what? How was it rushed when it's four years after the first film? How does that happen? Well, you, this is what I mean. Like, sometimes I wonder about writers, where it's like, did the same writer that did the first one do this one? Uh, I don't think so. 
One mm. of the two writers worked on the first one. The other oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Stuff like that makes me wonder. Fast and furious. It's like if you're a part of, let's say, you know, I wrote Shazam one, and then I talked to Samberg, and he's like, "Yeah, not looking like we're going to be able to make this for another three years or something." So I'd be like, "Well, I'm probably going to tool away at a sequel script, you know, a little bit here and there, maybe build it up, redraft it over time, small amounts of effort, and then when they go right, you you have to write that." I'd be like, "Oh, gee, okay, I guess I'll start from scratch." Wink, wink, and then get a <laughs> lot of stuff that I, you know what I mean. Does any of them ever do yeah. that? You should. They what should is, at least dot point it. You know. What does take pride in your work mean? I don't know. When's Mario out? Uh, that's out on the 5th of May, I believe. So it's real close. Oh boy. Uh, Mario. that's... I, the more that... I'm, I'm interested in that. Um, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, there's no way... It, 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 compared to all these films, there's no way. There's no way that it could be as bad as these movies. No way, indeed. No way. You know, my gripes are probably going to be on the voice acting side, but I don't imagine the film itself is going to well, be. Well, who even knows? We've seen a few more clips of Chris Pratt actually trying to do the Mario voice. Yeah, mm. that... <laughs> everyone's. I think the sentiment is turning hardcore right before this thing comes out. And if it turns out to be good, that's going to be a crazy little journey it's had. Uh, that'll be real interesting if it turns out to be good, because even where I'm at now, I don't really expect it to be good. I expect it to be fine. I think mm. that's where yeah. I'm at. I expect it to be a totally fine animated film but like it ain't gonna be up there with like the best of the best uh which maybe that's not a terrible thing um well i mean it's not right it could be worse probably but we'll see is there anything like i'm so ready to eject this out of my head uh, uh i'm ready to um... eject the film but maybe there's something to talk about in terms of the meta of like because i mean it's in the title right the state of dc oh we talked about it a couple times yeah. in the stream but this is doing yeah. bad what does it mean going forward? It just means that they already knew this was a, a, a Titanic equivalent of a film. They're moving on already. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's yeah, already they were probably just oh let's let's. They've get already it got out, some crews talking about how the Flash is going to be really great. Yeah, the Flash. I think uh. they hope can at least bring back some money. This one, I think they abandoned. Like whatever. When does the Flash come out? The Flash yeah. is out in June. Um, yeah, no. that that really is the most interesting DC film like for now yeah. until the reset because it's. It's just like, oh, well, I guess we're going to get a glimpse into what their plans were before they changed everything, and, like, yeah. what even this film is going to be, and whether it's going to be quality, and, like, whether it's going to make money, um, because all I think you can gauge from, like, the, 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 um, box office of this film, and just the general response to it is, like, man, DC is, like, not, it just ain't worth much, like, in the eyes of the public. Not really, um, no. It's not really a draw. And no. I feel like this says a lot about how little anybody actually cared about Shazam. All the people saying it was good, but nobody has anything to say about it, the first film. Yeah, that's the thing. And nobody really cared about this one either. People said, yeah, it's good, it's fun, but you couldn't say anything, you couldn't tell anybody anything about it, and this film was even more so got that problem than that one. In a week, nobody will be talking about it. It'll be done. It'll be over. Gotta get this episode out on Mulder yeah. quickly before people are like, wait, you covered it? <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. Just I don't care about Shazam anymore. John Wick's coming out and Resident Evil 4 and Mario. Yeah. Yay, yeah. Resident Evil. This film's like those Doctor Who aliens um, who, you know, you look at them and then you turn away and you forget that they exist. The um, silence. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's the silence. This is the silence of films. It's really bad. Yeah. It suffers from, it's like you said, Muller, it's, it's uh, pretty much all of the pretty standard problems that something can suffer from, it has them in multiple different ways as well. It's kind of fascinating. Mm -hmm. What, I think you've said a few times, Rags, as well, like, what, what does the script even look like? Like, what is, what is it, what, what is the process that results in this kind of script? I, I, I legitimately don't know. You would think that somebody would give a shit. Like somebody would check in. Some like if you were dropping like a hundred million dollars or whatever on a movie, you think that you'd be watching over it like a hawk. Mm. You'd be you'd be you'd have your eyes on the script and all the production elements and everything like that. I mean, especially the script. You think you'd have guys there every day in the writer's room making sure that it all you know worked together, but. They just didn't give a fuck. It's like they just said, "Oh, just oh crap, we need we you got to write the script well, in an afternoon." Let's make a Shazam movie, you know, and we'll get some people to write the Shazam movie. 
um, yeah. Okay, cool. We got a script. Writing doesn't sell. Superheroes and CGI sells. But that, uh, I mean, it it doesn't sell is the lesson that's being learned right now uh, by Hollywood is, oh, shit. Mm. Like, this isn't just a sure thing, making superhero films. It's going to reach the point where, you know, when we're talking about, like, the films that are coming out this year, it wouldn't surprise me if the Mario movie makes a billion dollars. Um... And that'll be, like, the most successful film of the year up to this point, bidding out, like, big Marvel films and, I guess, a relatively biggish DC film. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise um, me either. And following as well, the likes of Black Panther not crossing a billion dollars, the continually uh, deteriorating viewership of, like, Star Wars right now, where, what, Mando Season 3 had a premiere numbers, like, lower than Book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like, damn, man. I what's still what's going on, guys? Yeah, well, it's, it's not very worthwhile. So, yeah. yeah. This is, uh, Gotham Knights, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Gotham Knights. It, it does feel like they're just, um, dumb, they're just trying to get out, like, everything they had, like, pre-gun, pre-buyout sort of thing, just kind of trying to get it out as fast yeah. as possible, just so they can... It's too much money, like, in yeah. these projects. You know, Aquaman probably costs, like, 200 250 million dollars. You, you've got to release it gotta yeah. try and make some money back uh, what's weird is like... so if mm -hmm. do you think that the flash will do the reset in the movie itself no nope. like, nah you don't think so i don't think so i think that i think that they're kind of being very coy about what the reset actually looks like for this yeah. year i think that i don't think it will have anything to do with anything that they've set up before it'll just be like from okay we start here you know like just sort of uh mentally i guess or almost on a yeah mental level. i think you're probably right because you would think from a writing perspective you'd probably want to use the magical bullshit powers that the flash has to do the reset in the story itself but then but then you would undermine aquaman at the box you undermine office. that and i guess blue beetle as well but more for me it would be like i don't want any attachments to this universe like not in any way shape yeah, or form get whatsoever. rid of it that, this is completely new excise it like a tumor just get rid of it. <laughs> but what's there? What's there to save? Like, is there? Are there three good characters in this entire cinematic universe that are worth even holding on to? Dude, most people don't I talk about. We can transplant them into actors. the new thing. That's what people talk about. Yeah, because there's no yeah. fucking characters that we're trying to save. <laughs> like it's... Margot Robbie and stuff. Yeah. 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 No, no, get rid of her too, too please. <laughs> get rid of her too, please. First on the chopping block. Right, I think that James Gunn really likes working with Margot Robbie, right? So. That's the thing, though. I don't think he can pick or choose. I think he has to get rid of everything. I, I think it would yeah. actually be kind of unfair to a lot of actors to just pick the ones that you want to, you know, the individual ones you want to keep while getting rid of others. Yeah. I, think I mean, if, really if you lame. can't get um, Henry Cavill, Superman, if, you're yeah, Henry, out, if you like, can't get Cavill yeah. to come back when he's like the people, the one that people want to come back the most, it seems. Exactly then... from the beginning. Yeah, I don't think it's yeah. fair. You got rid of start over again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, anyway. Anyway. See, I, yeah. I've also heard people saying, "Oh, they're going to keep Ezra Miller." I really don't think they would admit nah, that they're not going to keep nah, Ezra Miller no or way. the movie. Exactly. The only source on that is literally a source that says, "Trust me, bro." Along with a bunch of unrelated information, it is the clickbaitiest of clickbaity mm. titles. But people are treating it as fact because no one fucking clicks the articles that they're reacting to anymore. No, you just look at the headline. Oh, well, that's got to be true. Yeah. I think that they're just going to be very vague. It's the reason why we haven't heard about any, like, actual Wonder Woman film as part of, you know, Chapter 1, which just seems like... If you're doing a reset, you're doing Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Like, obviously. But, you, yeah. like, maybe maybe there is a Wonder Woman film, but you, you don't feel like you can talk about it until Flash is out. And same with, like, yeah. Aquaman. You know, what are the plans with Aquaman or Flash or whatever? It's like, well, you don't want to talk about that before the film that costs, like, $300 million comes out. Well, that's the awkward thing, right? They have to still sell these films before yep. they can get to the new stuff. So they have to kind of toe the line before they can but, finally be completely honest with it. For as much as that's the case, they still want these new films out by 2025, which is not very yeah. far away. We need, we're going to be finding out about people getting cast for these roles this year, or yeah. like production timelines this year, while all of these films are coming out. Because it, to some extent, you don't want to wait. You want to get these films done. Um, you want to get new DC films out there, but hopefully they're not in too much of a rush and then screw everything up again. Yeah. Well, the good thing is, I think um, after The Flash, there's only two more that were already... Yeah, Blue Beetle in... and Aquaman. That's it. Yeah. And then that's so, over. Well, 
Yeah, then it's over, thank God. Um, and then the, the first project of DC Studios is Creature Superman Commandos. Legacy. Oh, is it Com Creature Commanders? Okay. That comes out first, and then Waller, I think, and then Superman, which, by the way, nah, Superman's first. I don't know yeah. why you would do it like that. Sorry, this is just turning into rambling about a thing that doesn't even exist yet. The point <laughs> yeah. is, DC, it's it's like the Twilight of DCEU, and what a shitty yeah. Twilight it's been turning out yeah. to be. Yeah. <laughs> just it's a bad. slow, painful death. <laughs> like, ah. Uh. Yeah, the, the future of DC is very uncertain at the moment, so it's the but best hey, shape it's been in in years. Marvel's been looking pretty bad, so, you know, they've got good company. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, get, we got some good eating ready, boys. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to really be feasting on all these amazing superhero hey, at films. Least, at least we got Guardians yeah, 3, you know, at least yeah. there's that. That's right. And then right yeah. back. Cross. Well, I mean, yeah, the fingers crossed. Big thing that's on the way that I'm excited for re4 remake it's getting all the kind yeah. of ratings you would want yeah baby all signs yeah, point to good right now critic. a really great demo Indeed. and everyone's scores are really high so it's like ooh. yeah gip, gip, gip. yeah that's exciting be soon enough. um what i was gonna say that kind of wraps the stream so what we'll do first is uh give uh give cap metal and meme a chance to talk a little bit about what they're up to whatever that may be cap mm. why don't you go first uh, devs episode four it's coming it's almost done look forward to that uh oh that's that's all i have for now well you also did a it's stream be, in good. case people didn't hear about it the last time it was oh uh, yeah we talked with we myself four streams yes and and, and the mm. pringled about banshees of an sharon ah uh, and elvis Wanted correct to... and it was a swell time go check that out also we did a stream Oh, my dog's barking like crazy because someone's shooting fireworks off, even though it's just a Why? random day. I don't know. <laughs> because it's Saturday. Saturday. But I'm going to be crazy. Um, no, tradition. we also did a stream talking about All Quiet on the Western Front and uh, what's the other one? Top, Top Gun. Gun Maverick with Top the Gun other Maverick. two guests on this panel. Whoa. Metal and Meme. Go check that out. What a, what a coincidence. You know. Wow, you. we. Wow, we. Yeah, good times. Go check those out. Metal, what are you doing? Hello, I am. I am. I'm. I'm. I'm working on a on a thing, a scripted thing. Yes, <gasps> I am actually doing a scripted video again, and it's. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm redrafting right now. I'm gonna start recording soon. I'm not gonna say what it is yet. I thought I might today, but I. I think I need some some more redrafts. So, not yet. But there's gonna be another a Metal's Forge again next week on John Wick Four on sunday uh Sweet. and that's what i'm up to on resident evil force trumbles the 404 error for the metal channel i linked in description i will sort that out Boat, i guess don't know why that's happening metals cancelled yeah um, i think um mine is one as well because i think it's the at thing because it's not actually linking to uh, i think i don't know yeah those links l like to break at some point uh, sometimes it's weird Mine works because yeah. I'm great <laughs> and amazing. Meme, what are you up to? <laughs> so I've been uh, so so. There's a stream that I've been trying to get out since November. That's been like very research heavy and very clip heavy. Uh, it's a tribute to Kevin Conroy. Um, it's 98% done. I'm just trying to find. I got COVID on vacation, unfortunately. So I've been rebuilding every part. Like I got really sick, so I had to rebuild my energy, and now I'm rebuilding my voice and routine. So, um. I just got to find the energy and the the, the spoons to to put in to uh, to put the final pieces together, um, and then uh, I'll do a little dress rehearsal for that one to make sure everything gets passed, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll be good to go on that. So in no no there is a t there is a countdown timer on my channel. Ignore that. I have to keep pushing that forward because um, I can't be fucked to delete it and then put it up again. So <laughs> um, yeah, so that will be out when it's out. I'll probably change the title to No For Realsies when it finally <laughs> when it finally comes. But uh, yeah, so that's what I'm working on at the moment. So that'll come when when it comes. Very well. Exciting come. stuff. Um, bring yeah. in rags. Anything you guys want? Um, I am probably tomorrow going to be finished with a script for a video. So that's exciting. Uh, after the script is finished, of course, the video proper will begin to assemble itself. Uh, I'm not sure how long that will be. I am probably going to be putting a decent amount of work into this. 
And uh, I think that certainly the EFAP audiences will really like it. And I think uh, that my own uh, will as well on my own channel. But um, I'm just working away. Things are getting done. And I'm, uh, yeah, look out for more updates potentially. I'm just in the dungeon working. I'm working on episode three, Mando, working on the video. Uh, yeah, so Mando episode three is next up. Coming to you this week, probably. Yeah, general EFAP update. As you guys know, The Last of Us is finished. Um, all nine of those have been edited up into a supercut, and that'll be uh, premiering next week. We're going to try and do that with every TV show we end up finishing. But of course, at the same time, Mando is running, and uh, we have the hopes of Gotham Knights running at the same time. And the funniest part of it all is that Batwoman is still actually running as well. So technically, three, four TV shows. One of them's just about to end, and the rest still continuing. And then, of course, uh, minis being dropped out for Super Chat catch-up. And um, I still want to try and organize us recording a meme fab when we can. And uh, yeah, plenty of things on the way. So we're still ahead episodes-wise. So next week, there won't be an EFAP. There will instead be that Last of Us supercut. And me and Rags and Frank will probably spend the day doing catch-up instead. You know, use the opportunity of being too far ahead to catch up with stuff that's falling behind. Mathematics or something. And then um, that means John Wick and RE4 come out. And so we'll do John Wick the following week. Uh, we'll talk all about it, I imagine. But, in, you know, if you wanted to hear us earlier than that, it was very well likely that we'll be on the forge with metal on it. But I don't know who or what or why exactly who was going to be there. Who knows? Uh, uh, I'm just saying that's probably a good place to get opinions for earlier. And then uh, the week after that would be RE4. So that gives two weeks of space for everybody to play the fuck out of that game because that's going to be okay, one we're going to want to talk about the details of extensively. Very excited. Oh, yes. <laughs> Which also means you'll be seeing streams from myself, presumably Springy and Metal, not 100% sure. Barring any technical problems, yeah. Um, and I know the plenty in like, uh, you know, like Az and Drinker stuff, they're all going to be streaming it. So that's going to be a game that just everybody streams because Resident Evil 4? Well, yeah, it's of, like kind of a well known game, you know. People will not know where to watch first. It's going to be probably like five streams at the same time at some point. Awesome. <laughs> one. Paralysis. Mark will yeah. be streaming it too, I imagine. Yeah, that's probably true. And John? I, I, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. He might be, All of yeah. them. Um, so, yeah, another gaming fap on the way. And once all of those things are out and done, I mean, it's kind of been insane lately. There's been like an average of one video per two to three days on EFAP, the Moolah channel. Yeah, there has, guys. In a rush. Yeah. Still I, hope, I hope that it's not that you're like, ah, yes, this is normal. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, it's not normal. <laughs> I think a lot of stuff's been coming out. And try to work on mainline stuff as well. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know how it is. But yes. Yeah, um, exactly. Oh, we passed 100 days worth of EFAP. Oh, too. boy. Oh, no, EFAP. <laughs> well, well. Oh, my God. My Wonderful. God. Good golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> Celebratory. Burp, burp, burp. Um, but yeah, that's that, I suppose. Where's my clown horn? Thank you all oh, so much for Taking watching. I'm proud of you guys for actually being able to maybe remember the film while we and were now here. now it's getting flushed from my brain. And now I'm going to... Off go. Uh, Welcome to forget. Up some space. I will release it into the ether. Bye, Shazam, yeah. Bye. Fury of the Gods. Goodbye. And uh, goodbye. You are something. And goodbye to you, Chad Rainers. Yeah. Chad, yeah. Chad. Thank you Chad. so much for bye the bye. kind bye. of Goodbye messages. to you all. Yeah, we will <laughs> see you next time. Beep up, I'm a bye bye. 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 I'm all over the place.